Bills will take contender season zero. And Logan Smith might have done it. They will fly high. San Francisco is shot against Sheer Pierce. Whoever said lightning doesn't strike twice has never met San Francisco's shock. Shanghai Dragons are your champions. Dallas Fuel takes their place amongst the stars. Florida Mayhem are your keys for all time. baby what's up everybody owcs knockout day two we are back we're so back yeah, we're so back are we gonna keep saying we're back is that is that still why like not a, i mean it's technically correct we are back we are back we've back been today. back baby we, we're here is that, is that still we're the, showing up is that still the phrase that zoomers say or is that i don't know bro we are Dude, way I'm 28, behind don't know. The zoomers. <laughs> hey we got we got some important matches we got a lot of great things to, for for people to be excited about what are you excited about today I want drops, bro. You better get <laughs> them linked. I got my, I'm AFK on my, go. on my PC at home to get these things. I yeah. need them. Hold Link up. your accounts, guys. Get these amazing <laughs> drops. Because we got sprays, icons, Diva Winter name card that says Hotak, which is Korean uh, dessert. Yes, there you go. And also Kiriko skins as well. It's going to be great. Link your accounts. Not only that, please follow us on o OWCS uh, social media as well. There are a lot of matches going on, a lot of regions as well. You have to follow them if you really want to watch every single one of these matches yeah tons of social so also join the discord join yeah, the discord. discord yeah jake always says you can go look for a team yeah. you can find scrims there's a community it's a yeah. community of people yeah Get a lot, of fun, out. Go a lot of fun stuff another fun thing we had some uh, great meme submissions meme uh, submissions memes. yeah we love memes we love uh memes. are we are we gonna be looking at some of the memes do we have memes? There you go. <laughs> this, this is, is literally Jake. just your tweet. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just a format. There's no meme here. No, I mean, no, no, this, this is just me. Okay. Yeah, We're, no. Here, this, here, here, here. Is, this is this is fine. Right. You see doubters in chat. That's, see, this is the thing that we like. We, you guys could use these kind of you know photos and make memes and put it up on Twitter or social media, and we'll show it, we'll show it to um, everyone on broadcast maybe. Best captions wins our love and support. Well, what did you say? What, what? Best captions. Like best captions? Best tweets. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the one important thing, if you're putting in the submission, you have to put hashtag OWCS. So Unless we can't find on. it. Yeah. We got to Put that YouTube. on and then make it good. If it's really good, we'll show it. It's got to right? be funny, though. It's got to be funny. Yeah. Anything with Johnny is funny. That's true. You're funny looking. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was me. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Let there be. All right. All right. The, the most important thing, prizing. What is prizing? What, what's happening with this? We, I mean, there's 75k on the line for these eight well, for the for the people uh, for the teams that are competing. Uh, what else is important? We get points, points as points. well, right? These points, these points are gonna send you or send the winning teams mm -hmm. to to Dallas to Stockholm eventually. Right. There's more points to be earned uh, mm -hmm. in the next knockout phase, but these points matter, right? Even though there's right. gonna be more points in the in the qualifier number two, there'll be more points available, but. You got to get every single point locked in. You don't know if you're going to get the next time. So come on to Dallas. Come on to Stockholm. You got to sign up. You got to sign, sign, sign up, though. Because sign up for the qualifier, too. You can still compete. You could still make it, even if you didn't even compete yep. here. I think we'll see a lot of the teams that did compete here. Some of them will go on and, and just keep the same team, maybe adding a piece or two. Other some teams are will be completely disbanded. new. They're already disbanded. Exactly. <laughs> no, some of them are, are getting re ready for stage two already. And yep. that's important because, you know, if you, you get double points yep. for stage two and as double well. Double points. Death is a part of life, Johnny. It's a cycle of life. Some teams must die for other teams to be born. It's, yep. it's, it's <laughs> that's the way the world of life. Goes. Yep. <laughs> of life. And this is all, we're all doing this for what? For DreamHack, right? And mm. the first one is at where, Johnny? Dallas, Texas. Right, of course. And you're, if you're not competing, Tejas, baby, let's you can go. still get there. I mean, you don't have to compete. Just buy the ticket. You know, it's online. Get your passes. Uh, you know, uh, use your hard-earned money on something good like this. Come it's to DreamHack. It's a great Come time. to Dallas. Come it's to Dallas. You're a gaming fan. You're yes. going to love it there. Watch Overwatch. But also, other esports at True. DreamHack. DreamHack events are incredible. Got to get your tickets. And I also heard that um, if you see Johnny at DreamHack uh, Dallas, uh, the, for, for the first 10 people, Johnny's got to buy them uh, a coffee. First thousand, I think, is. Was a thousand or a thousand or ten? That's not true. I'm not. No, that's, 
Okay. Just some false coffee. We'll cook. We'll cook. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Sean Miller, maybe maybe we'll get people coffee. I don't know. Hit me up. I would love to see Johnny out on the floor with like a little coffee stand. That'd be content. Yeah. A little, little espresso machine on the floor. Content production. Johnny's just content right there. Debate. Please right sit there. down with me. Have a coffee. You can debate. Yes. Watch topics. You know. Wait, should, should May get nerfed? Is, should Doomfist go back Podcast. to get damage? We'll figure it out. Should we'll Mava be buffed again? Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. Mavis in a good spot. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, we're about to kick off the right, NBA matches. So, guys, I think it's fair to check in with one of our European friends, and it's none other than Moxie, everybody. Hi, Moxie. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. How is it over in America? Because it's sunny here, so I hope you guys have the sun as well. It's sunny in the UK? Oh, uh, we... What? What kind of black magic is this? <laughs> That's crazy. It could get sunny in the <laughs> UK, no? Yeah, it's, well, it's not really. Okay, no? Maybe we don't get free Overwatch today. All right, all right. Let's let's maybe. let's talk about some Overwatch. I mean, you're you're the the EMEA expert, uh, Moxie. So, I mean, I just want to ask you about, you know, how are the things? That, like, what's your thought on the the EMEA region currently uh, for the OWCS? EMEA has always been a very strong region. I feel like we're probably the worst kept secret in all of uh, Overwatch esports because if you watch the contenders region, you were like, yeah, okay, these teams are pretty good. And then if you watch World Cup, you were like, oh, okay, these teams are really, really good. So it's really good to see that uh, EMEA is continuing to be an absolute powerhouse. We've got teams like Twisted Minds who really looked like they were going to dominate, but we also have teams like XO who, if you saw yesterday, like they took a map off of XO, that control point was pretty rough for Twisted Points, so you can definitely still see that there are some of these underdog stories that are still waiting to be able to rise to the top. Yeah, who, who would you say are the favorites in the region? Because I think, you know, NC Sports, Space Station Gaming, they come to mind. Are there anyone kind of like knocking on the door there? A Twisted Minds, of course, might be the, the, the favorite in the mm. entire region. What's like your read yeah. on like the top three, top four in the region? Okay, top three. I think Twisted Minds for me is number one, just because any meta that is a Sojourn meta, Quartz is always going to be at the very, very top of that one. His hit scan is, is absolutely insane. Then I have to agree, and yeah, 100%. They're a very uh, <laughs> engineering team. They always come up with really fun strategies uh, to see, and I really hope that they continue to have that, right? When we had SRP check and then Bubba Spray check, they were always coming up with some really cool strategies with things like the Symmetra and the May. Then I think EXO as well, because of how close that matchup yesterday was against Twisted Minds, definitely one of the favorites to be able to get through the group stages. I am going to challenge you because I need some pred help with this Whoa. Ents versus <laughs> SSG. I, I don't know who's going to win. I see, I see those teams as very equally matched. Who would you take in that series later today? The Ents versus SSG. Both teams, I think serious contenders, I, I started leaning towards ends, but I, I think it's going to be tight. What, where, who you got? Who you got? Heads ahead. I kind of want to go ends just because we're still seeing a lot of teams trying to run the MAGA composition. And I think if ends do decide to try and veer towards that MAGA, they're still going to make that tank look stronger than a lot of people realize. Even though we are playing on live, even though MAGA has been nerfed. Because of how fast the patch was, because of a lot of these teams still having scrimmed, a lot of compositions that they were working on last week and sticking to that game plan as we saw from yesterday. I think it's going to be whether or not these teams do decide to stick with what they practiced or if they do adapt and manage to find some way to circumvent that mega strategy. I can't believe Jake is trying to just make Moxie Copy do his friends. homework. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> How can you do that? And you call yourself an analyst? Hey guys, you know my disdain <laughs> for Preds. You know I, I don't like Preds. I hear, I'm here for the content. I'm here for the memes. And Moxie has the person to ask, so... Exactly, sure. right? Like, I gotta get the... I'm not gonna... I can't just... It's, it's input, you know? It's all input to my to my process, which <laughs> involves taking everyone else's opinions, amalgamating them, and then regurgitating that. All right, I mean... You, I guess, no, I don't have original thoughts. Amalgamating them? Malga? Oh, no. Oh. Amalgamating? Ooh. All right, that was good. That's the first pun I've enjoyed I... in this broadcast. You didn't like the uh, uh, an amazing play oh. from yesterday? Danny. Danny. Hey, that's not me. That was production. Danny, wrap it you up. Just, just wrap wrong. it up. All right. Moxie, I know you're, uh, you're going to be co-streaming uh, today. Where can we check you out? Where, you know, where can your fans go see you? You know, Overwatch fans, where can they join you for your co-stream? Uh, we'll be co-streaming live from twitch.tv slash dot moxie. That's with two T's. Really looking forward to it because we're also, I believe, going to be uh, co-streaming hosting after NAN. So come on over. We're going to be just powering through a lot of the Korean VODs. If you want to know how Korea has been handling 
absolutely insanely speedy meta shifts, that's the place to be. All right, Moxie, one more time, louder. Twitch.com <laughs> slash no, what was it? Twitch.tv. 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 What was it? Twitch.tv slash got Moxie. <laughs> All right, that's it, everybody. Go uh, check out Moxie's stream. Moxie, thank you so much for the interview. Good luck on your co-stream. <laughs> thank that's you a so long... much for having me. Enjoy the cast. <laughs> thank long you. Long broadcast. Godspeed. <laughs> Seriously. All, all of this and then going to Korea votes, that's a, that's a grind yeah, right I there. Yeah, I mean, that's she's going to have some great content. All right, everybody. Just like Moxie, you can also be a co-streamer for the OWCS uh, I mean, broadcast as well. You guys could send in your op applications. They are now open. There's the, uh, the URL right there. Go there and uh, apply to become a co-streamer. I feel like co-streaming has been one of the coolest things that we've had in the OWCS, just getting like so many people in the community into the esports scene involved, because you know a lot of these like big streamers, they love Overwatch, they're into the esport, and, and until now they haven't been able to be as directly involved. So some of the co-streams have been some of the best content we've seen. And you know, even as, even in, on, on the desk here, I, I enjoy a lot of the co-streamers, catching other regions, catching up on them. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, more of like a casual atmosphere, but I think that's really special. And for all the small streamers out there, I think it's really good for more and more people to get involved on that. It doesn't just have to be the biggest streamers. Um, even though sometimes the smaller, more more intimate community conversations can be really fun too for, for these esports. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply. Do it, Danny. Go Let's it. go. Yeah. I want to see the Danny. I will start, watch the Danny yeah. coaster. That sounds like a vibe, actually. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be a co-streamer. That'd be next, good. Uh, next actually. stage. Content, guys. Yeah, I I don't really stream, but I'm gonna try it. You, you think? You won't be on my OWCS team. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, dude? All right. Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws. It's coming. Outlaws. It's coming. Now right. I have to make it real. All right, uh, let's get into today's games. Uh, let's look at the lower bracket. Uh, two eliminations on the horizon, of course. Uh, Peps versus EOBL. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, we're, we're looking at the lower bracket. Anything, any takeaways from this? I mean, Peps, Ex Oblivione is gonna be a real close match. I feel like Peps, you know, they have some good showings yesterday. They have some bad showings yesterday. I don't think it's gonna be close. I think you don't think it's gonna be close? I think that's a I'm hyping up this dunk. match, Jake. That's a slam dunk for Exo. Look, I know NA is that's really competitive. That's a slam dunk. No, come on. I, I, I'm leaving the door open for both teams here. I do think it's gonna be a great matchup. So, a bunch of those teams punching towards this, like, really established top three we have here in the league. Yeah, that is fair. Those are the teams that are that are really outside knocking on the door, aggressively knocking on the door, we might say. And the, the, the upper upper the bracket is going to be pretty close as well. I think it's going to be exciting as well. Yeah, I think ends SSG. For me, that's really, that's too close to call. These teams are very evenly matched. It's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on the meta, who's got the better read, as Monty was saying, right? Like the quick meta shift. It's all about who's got the better adaptability, the better flexibility. All the, I mean, pretty much all the players on both of these teams have been around a long time. They have played every meta you can play in Overwatch, and so it's a matter of finding what fits best here and now, who's quicker to get there, but as flexibility goes, I mean, even if one team has a better read, I will see the other team, like, follow their lead, adapt throughout the series. So I think even if one team comes out strong, I don't think this is gonna be a quick 3-0 series. And that, that would be the biggest surprise of all for me, um, with how experienced and veteran all the players are. Yeah. Do, you, do you agree, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, I think both of these teams are really exciting to watch. I think that uh, NC Sports especially, you know, because of the damage lineup of Kai and Kevster. Where's um, Kevster? Where's he from again? He's from Sweden. He's from <laughs> Sweden. Yeah. National Yeah, treasure. of course. But I think Sweden. the potential of this roster is like really high. And it's yeah, really interesting, yeah. especially now too, when, when, when Crimson is seeing playtime in this back line and we're seeing Crimson and Masa uh, play with each other. Ghost Knight the one, of course, we talked about him yesterday. Uh, the Batista's uh, waiting in the wings there as well. So I think this is a really interesting team. I think this matchup is really interesting because I do think we have a couple of difference in styles yesterday. I actually went home after the broadcast yesterday. I watched some VODs of Space Station Gaming because we didn't get to watch them on the main mm -hmm. broadcast. And so while we're, we're looking here at NC Sports, you know, they're, they're playing a lot of Orisa, they're playing a lot of Sojourn, they're playing Genji. Uh, they want Kevster on the trace or the Genji where, where they can, right? Um, whereas Space Station Gaming, they actually played a lot of Mauga. They played a lot of Mauga on Legion Tower. Mm. And then they swapped over on Blizzard World and we saw Psycho come into the mix. They actually played Winston with the Echo and Tracer. So this tells me that we got two kind of like different styles here where we can see NC Sports, maybe they go towards like the double flex support kind of compositions. And we also here have, you know, Space Station Gaming who are really strong when it comes to like playing May compositions, Backbone, obviously like one of the best May players in the world. 
And I feel like NC Esports, I'm just analyzing, Jake. I'm just analyzing. I'm just, I'm just going away. Go ahead, go ahead. But I, I, I feel like NC Esports, they probably want to avoid these May maps and maybe force uh, Space Station Gaming to play these dive compositions. They're happy if they're seeing Psycho in game playing Echo because that means that they can see Kai and Kevster try to win that like kind of damage duel instead. And so I'm actually quite surprised that we're seeing Legion Tower going to be played because I, I was maybe proposing we'll see it banned. We see NC Sports banning Ilios instead. I think this is going to be interesting because maybe Space Station Gaming, they're allowed to play May here on Legion Tower on Control Center, for example. But then we also have Blizzard World. That opens things up a bit more. Space Station Gaming actually picks that. So that's you're, where the dive comps going to come in, Jake. You're cooking, but I wow. actually have a very different take than you, okay. I, I see, for me, what I saw from, from one of our series when, when Ents played yesterday was Kepster constantly rolling out on Echo and then going back to spawn to switch Tracer for the mirror. I think that Echo is a specific tech counter for Malga. The Sojourn, Echo, Orisa, they are ready for the Malga matchup. They know it's in the meta and they're always ready for that matchup. I'm pretty confident that they'll win if, if Malga does come out. I think Ents have the right response for it. I think they've got it planned. They didn't, I didn't see that matchup before, but I feel like that's why Kepster was always rolling out on Echo, going back to spawn at the back of the Yeah, Tracer. I guess Night Market and Garden. He's ready for the Soja Echo. Yeah. I mean, I think Soldier and Echo is going to be such a strong setup for Ents. I think that's going to allow them to really battle back against the Malga. Um, and I think, honestly, May, I don't think May is good this meta. I think with Lucio Kiri being so powerful, these are the best supports in the game against May. Lucio Speed Amp is the best response in the game to, to Blizzard. Uh, it gets you out of walls, gets you out of trouble, and Lucio himself is so slippery. And then you've got Cleanse as well if somebody does get caught. Um, so a lot of options to deal with the May. Thanks, Danny. I really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> But of course we gotta get to our friends. So I digress. I digress. No, I mean, I mean, this is this is good things. You guys are sort of disagreeing, you know. So let's let's take a look at our preds, or, or we, let's take a look at our viewer pre uh, preds. It was, uh, I think, it was they most of them went with. Uh, We're taking a look ends. at some preds. I think it was. I sorry, I, we missed the, the uh, viewer oh, preds. No, 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 it was ends. It was slight ends. Like it was six, slight ends, right? Six right? Ends yeah. Or something like. And this is our preds. Yeah. Uh, yes. Who'd you guys go for? I mean, you gotta kick us off, Danny. Yeah, look at you. It's me? You're you on the left. Off. Left to right, right, baby. For me, of course, as you're seeing, I went with uh, SSG 3-0. Wow. You know, wow. this is my first time in OWCS, but at the same time, I like, looked at the roster. Those guys looked familiar, and you know, I used your, to be a fan of, hottie. you know, yeah, yeah. I used to be a big hottie fan, and I think, uh, you know, I think they got it. You stopped being a big hottie fan. You used no, to I be am a big still. hottie fan. I was about to say, I don't think. I feel like you. Never <laughs> I, lost still, the I still am. I still never am. Lost so I'm just going for. You know, I'm going for the vibe. Me, me, I'm a believer in um, in Kester. I think I think I went ants here, but I, I truly think this match is too close to call. I think this is going to be a 3-2. Uh, this is why I don't like Preds, because for me, this is a pretty much a coin flip. This is about who's got the better read on the meta, who's got better execution in these little moments in the team fights. But I do think Kevster has going to have so much impact in this matchup. Um, I think when it comes to the tank, Hadi, if like Arissa ends up being really strong, I don't think that's Hadi's best hero. I think he's better on the more core main tank style heroes versus just the raw death matching heroes. I think that's going to lead Ents to have a little bit of an edge. I think that's where their strength lies is in this death. All match. right. Johnny. I got NC Esports 3-1. Pretty much for the same reason okay. that Jake said. Okay. I think Kevster is going to be a difference maker here. We got the Swedish matchup. Kevster against Sparker on the trade. Sparker is also a goat, I will say. The hit game is nasty. To that. But I also think that Vastola might have some tank picks here that might make it more difficult for Hadi to play his game. All right, well, those are our preds. Uh, let's jump right into the game. SSG versus Enz. And let's bring in our casters for this match. It is Lemon and Necra. Ladies, what do you guys think? Who, who, do, you, who do you guys got? I had ends. I gotta agree. I'm sorry, Danny. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, yeah, remember, remember you. finals last year? No one believed in London Spitfire, and you guys remember what happened? They, they beat, uh, <laughs> you know, they beat one of the best teams there. That's true. That yeah, true. they put some dubs up on the board. Danny's kind of like their good luck charm. If, ha and if I'm Hottie back. has one fan, yeah. he's sitting me. right here. That is me, Hottie. He's sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess we're going to see if the hashtag do it for Danny work out today. I think SSG are going to need all the help they can get. Not saying they are like big underdogs here because they brought that synergy. They bring that firepower from, you know, the previous iteration in the Overwatch League. But you can't deny how good Ents look in this meta. They do look super good and they look like a team that can play basically anything. So I feel like 
where we're going to have to see this match go is Space Station just trying to continue to find whatever edge they can in terms of that synergy. That's why when we actually take a look at the group stages, we did see them find a lot of success with the Tracer, Reaper, Winston, Lucio, Kiriko composition. Uh, it's because you have to have good synergy on a team like that in order to make those dives clean and concise. I, I'm worried... <sighs> I've always been worried about Hadi though. He likes to play these off-meta heroes, you know, when the Reinhardt, we doubted the Reinhardt. What did London prove? They, the meta can't shake them. They will not be slaves to the meta. And then they go to Winston, which I feel Winston is, can be weak in the meta, especially when a lot of people, including Ents, like the Orisa, Winston can be blown up, but Hadi always finds a way to play his life well, and he gets the best support from his team. He really does. And that's why you look at just this back line of Landon, funny Astro. It's so good to be able to see them continue to support this main tank. Funny Astro, and a, a, a newer inclusion into the old London Spitfire roster, but the best Lucio in the world. I feel like you can't deny that as just even the top five I mean, is so easy to say for a player like Funny Astro. But we have also seen Space Station play this Mauga composition, and maybe this just fits their play style a little bit better looking at the reinhardt that plays super brawl that is where this mauga can kind of to go toe to toe with that yeah that's ssg's uh special comp just for control and on Li Zhang, there's lots of places to hide including in dojo where you ideally want to avoid that poke but ssg taking a page maybe out of twisted mind's book about how to move this mauga around using the symmetra as hadi emerges from that slumber and he is getting dangerously low SSG stay at their half, but now they feel like they may be in danger. They try to retreat to White Room. Thankfully, Backbone does join the flock in that regard, and Ents gonna take space. The point is unlocked, and I don't think SSG, maybe they could try and teleport in to deny the cap, and we see Funny Astra at least lead that charge. SSG are ready to fight. That is such an early Kitsune rush from Landon, and great teleportation from Backbone to get Hottie in position where he can put the pressure down on ends the cap goes for ssg but kai best sparker but the trade goes back and forth and jake alluded to kevster having this echo especially prepared for the mauga but the kills go ends way and they'll take it back over that was just some great sight lines there for Kai to work with when they were all huddled into White Room. You could see that Kai was able to just take those shots straight down the middle and then just some good snipes onto the rest of Space Station Squishies made it so that Ents was able to get a good team fight win. That early Kitsune rush was great, but no capitalization. So Ents now in the driver's seat for this ultimate economy. Yeah, Ents come into this fight with five ults. They've already used two. Two Maugas too, by the way, and SSG just can't hide in Dojo for much longer. Backbone tried to teleport out. Now SSG are all split up, and Kai is wrecking this lobby. Kai is wrecking this lobby. Kevster gets to play so aggressive as well, and you can really see the power of this Echo pick. That Mauga has the just just beefiness sometimes to be able to sit in the front line, but that Echo has the firepower with that focusing beam to really burst down that target when that Mauga is below half health. We do see Space Station coming back into this one with Sparker's overclock and it's gonna have to contend with Kai's. Ooh, okay, Sparker, mad respect, is not gonna pop his overclock in response to Kai's, but Backbone, Photon Barrier to protect SSG. Now that that's gone, just focusing on the cap, a terror Surge on an off angle. Vestola was below half health. That doesn't work out. Small dent into Ents as Crimson tries to bring them back up. Kitsune rush. A lot of heals happening for Ents. And SSG retaliate. Big retaliation, and like that's also netted them some good positive charge here onto this point. Sparker was able to hold onto the overclock. You can use it on this bridge. You can use it in the off angle around Dojo. And you also have Hottie with this cage fight. There isn't a whole lot to be able to layer with it, but I think you're still super happy about locking down any small targets you can. He's already going in. Oh, Hottie's in a lot of trouble, but maybe he wants to be. He's got the cage match, and no, uh, maybe not wanting to pop it when everyone's got sound bear and way more health than him. SSG got the one kill they wanted, and as they retreat, they're losing bodies in the process, and Hottie wants to throw down against Kepster, and the Echo Dupe comes out on top. 
but Ents don't have uh, a Kiriko, so the heals are struggling. And man, speaking of heals, that's what's keeping SSG up against the focusing beam of Kevster, looking for assassinations. And speaking of that, Ents are surrounding this dojo side and it's coming down to the last few members and Kevster will be exploring. It's coming down to those last two v2 and Kevster wins the 1v1 against Backbone. Kiriko of Crimson TPs in and Ents have a few more seconds to go to take the round. Which has a better beam, the Echo or the Symmetra? <laughs> uh, I guess oh. it depends on how long one of those has been alive. But this is final fight and Spacey should have to just rush into this. That's exactly what the Katsune Rush is for, for Landon and Entz. Disengaged nicely, but Vestola needs to be in range of his supports, and Masa manages to reach him in time. Entz could build up a response, and it's Kai! They overclock the 3k, and the Terra Surge from Vestola as Kai hunts down his ace to give Entz the win on round number one. Well, there it is. <laughs> the ace comes through, and it is a clean, cut and dry round number one. A lot of the percentage that we ended up even seeing get given over to Space Station was just and saying, hey, we'd rather have positioning here. We'll give you the point, but we're going to take the round. It was so clean. I, I want to give just some major credit to the DPS lineup there. Kevster, Kai, they've done a phenomenal job so far. Yeah, I was low-key worried about sparker but I, maybe i'm just part of that group a silly group of people that underrate him a lot but kai continues to prove how important a good sojourn is and he really is one of the best at it so maybe if they can find if ssg can find a way to teleport onto him to access him in any way they may have that mobility advantage having two options of speed in that regard but man uh, sojourn has a jump so she can leave pretty easily See how SSG will defend themselves now. It's early pressure from Ents. Vestola protects the team. Ents takes shelter in the hallway. And Kai gets to fire back as SSG approach. But it hasn't been an easy time for Vestola and friends of Ents that got all split up. And Sparker gets to shine for the first time in this map. And maybe giving a chance for SSG to get a leg up, a leg up early. Yeah, it should be a point capture here for SSG, and now that you get a chance to play around the walls on this point, I feel like you have a little bit more space for your Malga to work with. Any sort of overrun into a wall, you've got great AoE effect as the team moves in here. Ents is going to try to get the retake. Trying their best, but at a distance, this may, this fight may just end early if Sparker or Kai get an early pick, so SSG are allowing Ents to get on the point so they can hope to surround them, or I guess kick their teeth in. Hottie tried to do the just that, expose himself to poke, but this was a, a distraction as Kevster went behind and started shredding SSG from multiple angles, and it's Kai that hopes to make a miracle run going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sparker. And it comes down to the remnants of Ents to cap this point and take it back. 37% for SSG. Yeah, you see just kind of the symbols of old here from Space Station, where they do have the Symmetra Teleporter to help rotate the team faster, but you're missing the Reinhardt shield, so it's a little bit more vulnerable in those positions. Oh, now you gotta dupe Malgum slams and get the early CC, hoping to set up this team. Ends have the sound mirror, they have extra time to work with. And it's a 1-1 one -one trade, but Bunny Asher's not here to provide the barrier. And that layer of protection from the Photon Barrier is now gone. SSG are fully exposed, but Sparker needs to go big. And so he has already one exposed person of Ants on the point. Crimson tries to climb out, and SSG are happy to take back the point. Really good there, too, that they were able to survive the duplicate as well as the sound barrier, because those are two high-value ultimates from Ents that you'd love to see come out of that pocket, especially not using the sound barrier of your own. The Vestola does have the Terra Surge, but Terra Surge has historically not been the most pop-off worthy of ultimates, and it's tough to lock down a target before they're able to, like, power slide away or Swiss Step or something. Oh, almost got a javelin on that Malga off the map, and Malga ult right on the point. And don't want to mess with that. So they could just rely on Kai to get even more picks. He's already picked off uh, someone from SSG. The sound barrier goes through, and Festola has to quick, quickly get rid of the Terra Surge because SSG's health was out of control. And 
Now 20 more percent before SSG sent us to round three. Good isolation of Vestolo and he was movement locked due to the Terra Surge. Just kind of surround him and be able to take him out. So now you've got this Kasuna rush. Kepser does have the duplicate again. We've seen him time and time now go for the Malga dupe and that cage fight could make a difference here if you want to lay over the overclock or something too. SSG need to converge on a target and Landon is at the front. Manages to win all thanks to Funny Astro assisting him. Now Kitsune Rush, last fight for SSG to send us to round three. They've already pushed Ents off the point. Overtime dwindles away. Ents go for the retake and they begin that with the Kitsune Rush and Kepster copying the Sojourn. It's all about the pigs, but Ents, it's not happening for them. They have no space to work with. Vestola hopes to regain that real estate and he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the front line of SSG. And it's a scrappy fight. Got to keep an eye on that teleporter from Backbone, but he's gone too, and that photon barrier maybe could have helped SSG, but it seems to be okay now that Hottie is still kicking, and Vestola is in here to protect Enz. So it's Enz just buying time for reinforcements to get back, and it's too little too late. We go to round three. That was a great round for Space Station 2. Like, such a back and forth here in terms of this first map of the series. But Space Station, they finally figured it out. Felt like they found their groove in market and just utilizing the terrain that they had to their advantage. Good isolation on the targets, good teleporter usage to wrap around the enemy team, and even taking some fights a little aggressively to shut down the pop-up potential of something like Kai's overclock. Do you remember when they were kind of fighting in the courtyard? Kai had popped the overclock and immediately got taken <laughs> out. Like it, it just was so risky to use it in that situation, but I want to give credit to Space Station for recognizing that spot. Wow. This is a close match. I mean, our desk was divided. Chad, maybe not so much, but stomping on in is Hottie. Looking to cause an earthquake, but he's already exposed to so much poke. He's half health, but so is Vestola. As everyone from Ents were hoping to surround Hottie in that moment, SSG have to give up space, but what's important is that they preserve their life. They haven't gotten picked, so they can heal back up and get that early land in Kitsune rush that they got on the very first round. SSG can also set up, set up for a teleport play. They spot Kai at the very back, and Ents are wrapping around, and that is the advantage of having server control to power position on control center to access the back line. SSG are aware of this. They play the dance. And Vestola in very big trouble. And as they were focusing on him, Kai finds the shot into Sparker. One of the first picks of the fight, it feels like. And as SSG try to access Kai, he stands tall. And it's Ents that take the first fight. That was way better positioning there from Ents. You saw the power slide from Kai to go a little bit deeper into the server room just to stay away from the big thick of the fight. And now they're all coming up with ults. That's four ults on the board here for Ents to work with as they start to lock down the rest of this point. They can take some great angles here as well. Kitsune rushes, exchange, everyone is yelling. There's walls, actually only Kevster's wall and backbone 10% away, but a huge barrier for Funny Astro, but it didn't save Landon. And I thought that would have given an opportunity for backbone to use the photon barrier, but ends, they kill so quickly. Yeah, there was a huge cardiac overdrive there, too. That's one of the things that I think we'll have to keep an eye on when it comes down to the Malga versus Malga and how these team fights go, because that cardiac overdrive is so crazy powerful. Like, you're still getting all of the benefits of cardiac overdrive, even if the changes got reverted to where you actually have, like, a little bit of less of a frequency. So use it to full advantage to try to initiate on some of these fights. Yeah, more downtime for that, which is important and why he seems so much weaker in the meta, but no downtime for SSG. They were hoping to get on the point, but Sparker keeps getting dipped from the soldier department, and that is what could make all of the difference as the cage fight does not go the way of Vestola, hoping to make the most out of Kai's first blood. And these fights seem to come down to the last few members, three versus two in favor of Enz, and Kai is just built differently. Enz coming out ahead again. Oh, Kai gets to, gets to play this aggressive too, because now that you've taken back control of the point, you're just hoping to get it to a last fight territory or even just win the map outright here. Uh, there's still a photon barrier here for Backbone, but you're just trying to cut off sight lines now when you use that ult. Oh, the right clicks of Symmetry, you cannot underestimate how much that hurts. 
SSG just poking and prodding away. Maybe if you can get someone low enough with the smudge right click, Sparker doesn't have to worry about headshots so much, but Sparker has to be able to keep up with Kai in this moment. Now reaching 90% plus. Crimzo has the Kitsune rush, pulls the trigger. Landon about to get it, pops it immediately. Backbone tries to protect the backline with the photon barrier, and Vestola heads back to his camp, but could not run fast enough. And Crimzo couldn't heal him. SSG run them over, laser them to death, especially off of Backbone. But SSG got so much work ahead of them. They do, and like, what a, what in the pocket? Like, the bank's a little empty. Uh, Hottie needs to get this cage fight online as well as Sparker. Any quick pick here would be great, but these teleporters are making these fights so much faster. And, and she take back the point for free just by teleport, photon barrier. SSG have to wait for this to be done. They're relying on someone to keep the overtime wick burning, and it's Kai's overclock. That could be the end all be all. Four ends, and SSG could not stop it in time. What a fun map that was. That was so fun. I think that the Malga change from Vestola really helped out the team, and this is something that Des called out. Like, even if you go Malga for Space Station, I think there's so many tools that we can see and rely upon to still get the better of that Malga composition, one of which I guess is just run the mirror match and simply be better. Uh, yeah, I like that Kevster um, is exploring so much of this meta, and really because he is just one of the most flexible players in the game, he play he tries to play counters and he tries to adapt. He is just very intelligent in that way. He had the Echo prepared on the first couple of rounds to deal with the Malga, and then decided, well, I'm tired of SSG having these teleport advantages, so I'm gonna use it as well, and it kind of gave Ents a leg up to get immediate control of space and force SSG back a lot of the time. And here's, I mean, Kai popping off as <laughs> usual. Yeah, I mean, that was the 5K there for Kai. He followed that up with so many other, like two, three player picks with overclocks in this map and you hit the nail on the head there jen we saw the space creation firsthand in even this is first fight in control center where control of server was able to net and a ton of percentage right off the bat and immediate control so i think that you were you're so right to call out the, the teleporter usage these fights ended up going so fast and when we already saw ends have that ultimate economy advantage they kept it because they were not able to let space station live long enough to get up ults of their own and try to even the score I feel like these fights were really close, like came down to just mm -hmm. the last few members of either team. And just when I thought like Hottie, oh man, he's playing aggressive and everyone's shooting at him. Vestola was also suffering by the same amount of damage. I think a big difference, of course, was in the Sojourn department between Kai, um, Kai and Sparker. But I think there was some moments where Backbone was able to be aggressive on his own with the Symmetra. And you saw even in a couple of fights in Control Center, once the Symmetra has time to build up that energy, if she can be protected for long enough, she becomes the ultimate threat on the field. I think this is some of the closest KD ratios we've actually seen so far in our matches in the OWCS main event. And I think that goes to your point where these fights were close, but it comes down to the, the pop-offs from these DPS. Kai getting our extra headshot, just another player advantage for these team fights is one way you can swing the tide so heavily in your favor. So you end up being able to kind of follow the dominoes there and make something work with that but jen we've got a substitute coming through here on space station i'm excited for this psycho is going to be playing alongside sparker which is interesting um psycho usually comes in to play pretty much tracer but he has such an interesting story when it comes to this matchup and i got to talk to him yesterday first just what a wild life this guy lives first he's in the military in the mountains and he only gets computer on weekends and he's still able to perform at the level that he does. In addition, he was actually supposed to be on ENDS and Kai took that spot. So he really wants to prove that they made the wrong decision and he's gonna be stepping up for SSG. I think this tells us, yeah, like come in to play the Tracer, come in to maybe play alongside a hitscan there from Sparker, but 
That's such an amazing story. And I love that OWCS is becoming one of those ecosystems that can allow for things like that to happen. Even talking to some of the players on Ents, like, you know, we talked to Masa, who has a job alongside actually playing in the OWCS. And these players are still finding time to make it work without having to commit their full lives and all of their energy towards playing this game. And it's still delivering fantastic matches. SSG picked our next map, which it goes beautifully with uh, the dive with the Winston that they do love to play. True. And it was funny that you said, wow, he has a job, which kind of made me laugh of like <laughs> gamers have jobs, they have lives, they touch grass. But a lot of the results that you look at in the group stage where you're like, oh, these names should be able to beat these names. But a lot of the time it comes down to how much scrim time are you committing to your teams? And things like a nine to five job do impact things like that, especially when teams may scrim during the day. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, that, that's that's kind of what I was alluding to. But also, yeah. it's so weird to see these Overwatch League players actually talk about having a different job outside of being a full-time Overwatch League player. Because that was that was your job. Like, like, that's what you committed all of your time to. And so now, like, you get a little bit more flexibility. Maybe we can see these players have a little bit of a more interesting work-life balance i guess is how i put that and it's fun when o overwatch can still be fun for you to play and it's not so heavy invested <laughs> into like getting those match wins and you could see some of that frustration come through for the players that we actually had on ends that were playing for like los angeles gladiators for example Mm -hmm. And I think both these teams need to think about their strategies. Yes, I said the Winston for SSG, but we even saw some Malga Symmetra from Twisted Minds yesterday. We have a lot to think about. So we're going to throw it to a quick break. We'll be back from map two. So SSG have experienced their first loss since groups, but this next map may give them an edge. We're still going to Blizzard World, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we still got Blizzard World. We still got these two teams. Uh, we still got a great match on our hands. And when we comes to Blizzard World, we did talk a little bit about what Space Station Gaming might want to run here. They can bring out the Winston. They have looked good on the Malga, but I think that's where Ents can start to play around a little bit with their flexibility. Kevster could play the Echo, like could play anything else, like could play the 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 Symmetra again, like we saw from the teleporters, but he has such a deep hero pool that we don't always get a chance to explore because we consider him such a dominant tracer with great map awareness that it feels like we don't get uh, all of Kevster sometimes. 
I think I'd love to see more Kev's here on Tracer, especially on an attacking side like this. If you have ends push one side, the Tracer can pinch through the, the opposite, and you can have a crunch on the point. Um, there's a lot of options. A Kevster can really play it all. But SSG is sticking to the Winston comp. That's all they've been playing outside of control. But Psycho's going to try to match on the Echo, which is cool to see. Ooh, okay. I mean, that gives a really good intel over to Ents that if you see the Echo, maybe it is just time to try to run back this Tracer. And you've got Kai on the Sojourn as well that can help to mark down that Echo in the sky. So it leaves Kepster to play a little bit more bully duty in the back line. Oh, Vestoli is, Vestoli is doing a lot of bullying himself. Now he gets to command that space, but SSG are on the high ground. They don't have a good initiator now that Hadi is missing. But SSG are all types of split up, and that's kind of the flank in nature of someone like Sparker or Landon that can join him. And they're doing good damage to Ents, but no kills are breaking that offense down. They'll get the second tick. Hottie's around the corner. He's ready to jump in and maybe contest this. He got Javelin, but someone from SSG contested in time. So SSG have bought themselves another fight. Psycho above finds the first pick. Ents don't have the speed, but they may have the firepower to finish this off in style. 10% away. Hottie hides, jumps towards the pack, but right into the loving arms of a Kitsune rush. But all of that focus has been on getting Vestola back up on his feet. And while all of that attention is on Vestola, Kai takes an off angle and frags out. But a sound barrier re-engage re happens in the SSG camp thanks to Funny Astro, but it's not netting them a fight win. Oh, that's so rough there, because you invest like the that's the sound barrier. Ants are still coming up with picks. You can't contest this payload for just a little bit longer before it unlocks, and it's going to be all she wrote there for that first point. It's tough because I think the Space Station Gaming were already in a position where they were going to lose that fight, so investing the sound barrier just didn't feel right in that situation, even though it looked good on paper. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's tough. You would love to have that sound barrier for something now, like the Terror Surge, even to have a response as that defensive ult. Wow, what defense though, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> like, ends just capped. They've already taken the next high ground. Hadi, I love the way he jumps in at angles that you don't really know where he's coming from. So he has that surprise advantage, but Winston is more of that setup character. He doesn't do as much damage as a, like an Orisa, for example. But it, it's the synergy of a composition like the dive that SG are running that could be what tears Ents apart. And Ents, well, they didn't misuse their ultimates on the point, so they got a lot banked up. Crimzo could be ready to unleash a Katsune rush if Hadi lands in, and he'll have the primal. So this could be a true skirmish for the payload, but SSG are just poking and prodding away, waiting for that call from Hadi, but he keeps disengaging. Has to keep disengaging too, because otherwise he's gonna get chunked down, maybe by Kai. There's also a pulse bomb on the table. He can't be susceptible to that. Oh, well, as the sheep built up a lot of ultimate, but Hadi got stunned by something and couldn't use the primal. So uncharacteristic and a well-timed terror surge from Festola as uh, SSG members were low. Ants take a clean fight and pretty economical too. Yeah, they didn't have to use very much at all in that fight. And Crimson has been charging up these Katsina rushes so fast. There have been so many moments where members on Team Ents have been like, what, like 20% HP, 15%, all of a sudden, all the way back up to full. You can definitely thank Crimson for all of the burst healing that's come out in this composition so far. Uh, really saving like Vestola Kai's lives uh, time and time again to stop these dives. I'm so glad that Crimzo unretired. I mean, we already heard it yeah. about it in the interview, but maybe Team Canada has a chance with him still kicking. And oh, okay, the pulse bomb from Kepster forces the primal out of Hottie, which is a very good trade. And now he's just hopping about, kind of scouting if anyone is in that building. But Ents have made good progress, but being stopped at this point is pretty painful, especially with the type of composition that they're running. Ents have control of the high ground, they're ready to force Hottie back. The sound there from Funny Astro actually doesn't hit Hottie, and Psycho gets taken out before he can use the dupe, and that's just the nature of the burst of Sojourn. Now, uh, less than a meter to go, Vestola keeps living despite the pulse bomb of Sparker. 
and SSG don't look very stable right now. They have closer respawns, but Ence's focus bar is just too good. Oh my goodness, Kai's on fire again, which is something we should get very used to in a matchup like this. Pushing forward, knowing that the overclock is ready, that could just give and a half of this third and final point right off the bat. They're able to take a quick pick. A little bit of stalling from SSG on point B, but ends have a good time bank coming into point C. Got the overclock from Kai using Vestola as a meat shield there at the front. Now hallway for cover. SSG, great disengage to not be in line of sight. You do not want to test Kai's aim because you're going to find out the hard way. But now that that's gone, SSG re-emerged. They'll have the dupe. Kitsune rush land and teleports in and almost kills Crimson in the process. He holds his own, uses his own Kitsune rush and ends have stronger firepower and a pulse from Kepster kills Sparker. So what a great fight out of Ents. Now kill Sparker gets the duplicate out of Psycho and now you are just back to square one if you're space station and running out of time. And so are able to push this card even just a little bit further as they wait for their reinforcements to come back. But that's another full 5v5 team fight and there's not a whole lot that Space Station have right now uh, in order to kind of stop this progress, especially if Kai's gonna get another pick like that. Oh, this is the ghost sign for Ents. That Kiriko is missing. Take the fight as quick as you can. And that slow, oh, really hurt funny Astra at that back hallway. And that's the sheer getting staggered. You got a hottie primal just tossing Ents up, maybe being a distraction for reinforcements for Vesashi to come out of spawn. But the sound bear from Ents is alive and well. Masa and friends have a lot of health. And then that Suzu's been used out of Crimzo. So resources are starting to get pretty thin on the end side and SSG are very confident in this fight now that everyone is alive. Soundbear gonna be used now that Sparker is dead. See if they can access someone like Kai. That's why Psycho's on tracer duty. Kai is forced back, has used his jump. Now Kitsune rush the retake out of Vents. They only have three meters to go and SSG are fighting tooth and nail. They're trying to shave every second they can from this time bank but it's just gone. Ents will pull cap. The captain with a, about a minute left remaining too, so a pretty reasonable amount of time in the bank, but it does give Space Station a chance, right? It is sub one minute, so as long as Space Station finish the map, they're good, they're golden. They gotta get there though. Uh, not bad from SSG at the end. Definitely were able to take some of these ult fights and neutralize it. You kind of, like kind of the Landon versus Crimzo Kitsune rush fights. They really went back and forth. Um, Kai, I think, started that snowball though, getting the pick onto Landon at the end and ends started that avalanche towards the end of the SSG spawn. I still think, you know, Hottie did a good job of killing time. Killing the clock, as you will, the penalty kill killer from, uh, you know, in hockey. And that bought enough time for everyone from SSG to respawn back up, forcing Ents to just use every ultimate that they could. And uh, I like that Psycho's on the tracer. This is really going to force Kai to play a bit more aware of his surroundings. Not that he isn't, but you get to just focus on killing people. Now you got to watch your back. You do have to watch your back, but I think that's something that Kevster's really good at is just identifying when he needs to sort of peel for the back line and also when he can go play a little bit deeper into enemy territory. And Kai is still opening up so many of these fights with early picks. And that has allowed Ents to snowball so much momentum throughout this map. And especially if you're going to put Kai on a defense and you continue to get picks like that, that could full stop engagements from Space Station. Kevster's going to mirror that tracer. I think even Sparker and Psycho had traded Tracer rules, unless I'm crazy. Either way, SSG have already started pressuring that high ground. They forced Ents to contest the point, and Landon, as he's teleporting in, puts himself in a lot of danger. And I think Ents are realizing Landon is positioning, and they're starting to punish that a lot more. I've seen a lot of fights where Landon, uh, maybe not a lot, but a few, where Landon is the first to fall, and that is a critical loss to SSG.
Well, it's tough too because I think like a support player is almost always going to be the focus of a team fight because as soon as you eliminate that main source of healing, it is way easier for you to out damage the opposing team. And Kiriko has some of the best burst healing in the entire meta right now, which is why she is such a critical pick when it comes to these team fights. So if get her out of the way, uh, pretty smooth sailing there to finish up that team fight. Yeah, when oh, everyone's social eight. distancing like that, yeah, the, eventually a sojourn is gonna crack that egg, and this time it's Sparker. Huge opening, maybe a first pick. No, Ents are gonna contest it just temporarily. All of those Arisa cooldowns are out. Masa too, no sound barrier re-engage potential. And SSG are about the full cap. Maybe Ents can just focus on holding the main choke. It may be okay to just give up this point, but now they've made the decision to contest the point, no choke will be held, and the uh, SSG are actually looking for staggers. Oh, they might get it too. There's a big Susu that comes in to be able to save Kai's life, but they are able to get away at what cost, though. This is going to be a good bit of car progress for Space Station to work with through the second point, and they critically keep Ents from being able to have a close hold here. So you feel really good about that if you're Space Station, and now they also have an opportunity to try to take away some of this high ground. SSG owned by Blizzard, apparently. Watch this. Kepster is going to go for this. Know that might be copyrighted. <laughs> Kitsune Rush plus Primal tried to get matched there by Crimson, but Masa died early, couldn't trade barriers, and that is the edge that SSG got in the end. Perfect. Yeah, uh, I, I think like too, this Winston bubble timing has been really good from Hottie. And when you play the dive, it's way easier to play it on the attack than on the defense because sometimes you can mistime things, the jumps and, and whatever else that you have at your disposal. So Space Station really this looking in peak form now. here as they continue their slow roll through the second point. Oh, overclock up for Sparker. Mm, forces ends to take shelter. And that's fine. You get free progress on the card, forcing this to be the end all be all of point this B. Bot ults out of ends and Landon's first pick again. How does this happen? This could be a fight killer. So Funny Astro has to decide on the sound beer carefully. And Hottie is playing uh, point C already. He's still got a cap point B, <laughs> but he could jump off the map or he could try to plan a crunch uh, by playing from the back and then coordinating with team through the front. So uh, Kepster is marking Psycho though. Yeah, I mean, Kepster's just so annoying right now. It is able to uh, walk away with his life so far. Psycho is trying to get that pick. But he still have this big health pack to play around. That is such an early sound barrier though for Funny Astro. It only hits three because Psycho and Hottie are still stuck in the back line. Yeah, I think those three were gonna have a hard time pushing forward without Hadi, so I like that there was an attempt to try and reunite with the ducklings that have been left at point C. Nessa she tried to time that crunch, but Ents kept those two apart, and that's where they divided and conquered. Uh, that it just feels it feels so tough in that situation because like yeah you would love to be able to coordinate that type of pincer but you've just stalled so much time off of your own bank and you use a sound barrier once again that was just not enough impact in order to take that team fight now it's also not there as a defensive tool against that terror surge or that kitsune rush uh, so i don't know uh, space station they feel a little lost trying to figure out how to contest this high ground especially getting stuck like that yeah like you can't dive kai because they'll slide away and uh well maybe Vestal likes if you're grouped up especially with the terra surge like that every time ssg start a dive they're just poking and prodding at ends who have great support out of crimson and masa and ends are okay just bunkering down around vestola and Kai has all these angles locked down as well. Playing around Pylon means that you can take control of that mini pack room that you see him spraying some damage to every now and then. You also see sights onto the main point of point B, and you also get the rest of this high low ground too if he needs to power slide. Minute 12 for SSG. You don't have Hottie, who again dies with Primal the second time. The, the stuns are, and the burst is catching him off guard. I don't know if there's like a ping issue. That could be a factor too. Either way, SSG, this is looking tough. They haven't really won a fight in a long time. 
They are forcing out ultimates though from Ents, which is good. Taking a couple of eco pushes now and then, but you're up against the back wall now. Space Station have one final attempt to get this payload over at that second point finish line so that they even have a chance of completing this map. All right, Hani jumps in, tries to pressure back to take some space on the high ground to get Sparker in a better position to get a line of sight on Kai. And this overclock is all for Hani, who's going to primal rage. He's getting frustrated. SSG need to deliver the kills that Hani is setting him up with. SSG have 16 seconds left. And as Ents were on the flank, they hope to punish Kepster in that moment. And man, both teams are dropping bodies and funny Astro getting pulsed before he could use barriers, not ideal. And Kepster is shrieking like he's insane. And they just have held them at bay. It's a two on one. And Psycho is the last one standing now no longer. Maybe a last minute re-engage there from Funny Astro with the beat. Keeps the overtime wick burning. And then the Terra search to stop any stalling is just it. What a win out of Ents. I would say in dominating fashion too. Against a different composition. We alluded how the Arisa comp may have bested the Winston. And that we, are, we were proven exactly right. Match point for Ents. Those bubbles just got burst so quickly every time they got laid down. And ideally, you're looking at that Winston bubble as good just shielding for the team, able to shut off some healing onto an isolated target, and uh, sadly, just not working out this time around. And so they're now up 2-0 in the series, looking at Coliseo to be able to close this out, move on to the winner's finals, and they look really set up for success here with how cleanly coordinated all of those target focuses are and just usage of ultimates. And Kevster proves that he can really play it all too. His tracer was outstanding. Sparker versus Kai looked a bit more even. I think the presence of Psycho putting pressure on Kai kind of helped alleviate that stress on Sparker um, with Kevster always behind him. So it, it was a cool um, mirror at that point once we got to the once we got to the tracer sojourn mirror there. But cool addition of Psycho for SSG, but just failing to have the Kevster like like performance of course it is his warm-up map so he's got one more <laughs> he, he does have another one but i don't know if he needs it right like i think he's playing phenomenally again and a lot of that too is just understanding where some of these pathways and Posing Tracer might want to take and who is in a vulnerable position be able to help finish up the picks and just the big damage burst that Vestola is able to do on the Sarissa. And I think the thing about running the Winston into the Arissa comp that makes it so much more difficult for the Winston is that you do have the Spear, you have a Lucio Boop, it gives you stun, it gives you movement lockout for enough of a split second that it forces the Winston to have to jump away rather than trying to finish off a lot of that extra damage coming in from the DPS and staggering when you look at stuff like this. Yeah, I think Ents got a lot of first bloods, especially in moments where I felt like SSG... Kai, for sure. Yeah, Kai getting first bloods, but also hot, like SSG, really critical people dying first. Uh, Hottie, I think, died twice when he had Primal Rage, but it, it's not even like a, a micro diff. It, sometimes when you get stunned, you can't pop Primal. If you have a burst and you don't judge your HP super correctly, uh, you fall from that. I don't know if ping's a thing. Landon got picked first uh, in two or three fights, which when you teleport in, you have to teleport in with the dive to support Hottie, or maybe you're teleporting in with Psycho to go on the flank and take an alternate angle or maybe you're with sparker either way landon is being found it's it's so tough like again like kiriko is going to almost always just be the brunt of a lot of that focus fire because of how much individual impact she can have on a game not only just from the burst healing we were talking about but also from suzu's there have been some really good suzu timings on both sides in order to save a low health target try to save from a pulse bomb uh, so kiriko just offers so much in a match you can't ignore that type of impact we have a maybe substitution from SSG once again, since they have three DPS, they can slot them in and out. So Psycho is out and Backbone in. Backbone coming in here, okay. So maybe going back to what we ended up seeing on our first map of Li Shang, we could see the Mauga as well as like the 
as the Symmetra and all of those uh, funny things that come with the <laughs> Mauka composition. And that makes sense if you're looking at a map like Coliseo that plays similarly in terms of just the scrappiness of what these fights need to have in order to find the value. Uh, so yeah, could totally see that. It's interesting because Backbone, you know, known for his May, and I know Jake yeah. um, was hating on that, but the Reaper is a different look that it was not not on my Backbone um, bingo card for him this year, but I know some, somehow Reaper is synergizing with that dive, but I'm actually surprised they took out their Tracer player, at least the one that they're more confident in of Psycho, because Tracer is very good on Coliseo. Everyone thinks it's this rush map and it's so linear, but sometimes you want that tracer to get around and try to access those supports but maybe realizing that psycho uh, just isn't having that impact maybe not um from his own fault but just due to the protection and the peel that they have or the kiriko is teleporting out or the orissa is too hard to kill it, it's tough for psycho to find value in these you can't really tear them apart uh, have we seen in a couple of different Mauka compositions the use of like Tracer and Sojourn as the DPS in the Mauka comp? But I like I think it's so difficult to actually run the Tracer when you are trying to brawl together as a unified five-player team. Uh, I kind of want to see Reaper May with the Mauga, if we do see the Mauga again from Hadi, because we have actually seen that come out from our teams before with like a May Blizzard on top of a cage fight. And <laughs> if we know what Backbone's May is capable of, that might just be a secret to success. Yes, there's a lot of conspiring that we have to do. So you know what time it is. It's time for break. We'll see you after this. Victory is at hand. Ashes to ashes. Interesting. Very interesting. A cupid I shall play. What are you looking at? Keep moving forward. Best of luck to you all. It's match point for Ents, and we move on to Push. This was chosen by someone with the yellow logo. I cannot read that. I need to zoom in. We're good. 
Zooming. I need my eyes Zooming. checked for some of the. I have uh, glasses. I shouldn't be this debuffed, but somebody chose this map, I assure you. <laughs> Someone did. We don't know, but we'll, you guys will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so what are SSG gonna do to adapt? I don't see this Winston ever leaving. I've never seen London uh, ever swap off a comp that wasn't working out. But hey, I would be really stoked to see a Malga get teleported around and Twisted Minds, I mean, showed us just the peak potential of that yesterday. So this could be new meta. Uh, I still I still wish we could potentially see the backbone mate. Bring it back. Like it's one of my favorite heroes to watch him play. He always feels like he has a lot of fun with it and he's so good. Plus May got buffed a little bit. I'm I'm a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but I understand why Sparker needs to play the Sojourn in this matchup. If you don't play the Sojourn, you're giving so much free real estate over to Kai that's also playing it. So you have to match on that hero. But Space Station's up to some funny business as they wrap around Ents to try to get a little bit of a different angle on them. Yeah, I guess swapping sides is interesting. Was not able to catch them off guard. They were, SSG were caught rotating and Asbestol was caught lacking. Great headshot out of Sparker and he needs to have a dominating performance. This could, this is a very heavy sojourn uh, part of the map and Kai just slides in hoping to die as quick as possible and SSG will get some early meterage. I mean, hey, this is one of the earliest teamfight victories we've seen on Coliseo, I think in a long time. Just despite the finagling around the point to switch sides and uh, feels good for Space Station to try to get that early lead. Uh, they're also almost to a sound barrier. Hats off to Funny Astro for continuing to find these early barriers because that could be a huge difference maker in this fight to just give Space Station extra sustain. Landon too, doing a lot of healing, doing a lot of damage, able to get that Kitsune Rush up and running very soon too. This is a lot of pressure on Masa. He doesn't have a Symmetra to kind of help these rotations. And there's two ways that SSG can attack you. So Masa has to be ready to escort the team out to help them disengage. If there's a very aggressive teleport out of Backbone that comes out. But so far we're at a poke phase and these slows out of the, uh, or really the Sojourns are trying to get in lines of sight to get that first pick. And Kai is like so aggressively trying to find those sight lines and SSG almost had a chance to punish him but during this poke phase now the ults have been picked up he got the dupe from Kepster immediately sent back and Landon's Katsune rush is exchanged with Crimzo's Kai is back to his supreme form and he headshots backbone and this is not a good start out of SSG even with the sound barrier advantage that they had that's a disappointing too because that's double support ultimates now off the board just so much overwhelming dps coming out from ents and it now we see ents probably taking the lead here when kai's gonna just go ahead and play the bridge oh man uh he got the careful. arisa to help you too i think that's something else that's really powerful about the arisa is the spear spin does soak up quite a bit of damage and so it does help to just give Kai a little bit of extra breathing room when you know you're not going to be taking another shot. That cage fight is stuck to the wall. Hmm, new decoration on Coliseo, I see. Is this what the rework was all about? But, but yeah, the Javelin's been here, right? That is great damage mitigation, but it's also a great bully tool. And that's the reason why Hottie messed up his ultimate and Hottie's trying to escape. And gonna throw out the Terra Surge and the teleporter from Backbone almost got put down so Pestola pulled the trigger early enough and it resulted in a team wipe in favor of Ents. Even if you're just locking down those heroes for just a couple of seconds there, it delays the mobility to escape and allows for some easy cleanup there by Kevster and Kai. You're able to get back to this bridge. You can contest for just a couple of seconds, but I don't think you can even get there when you've got Mestola holding down the front line. That is a checkpoint given over to Ents to kick off this map and Backbone has the barrier. Can it be a difference maker though? I love that photon barrier, especially when you heard Kai overclocking. Oh, that's great protection. Kai wouldn't have a really great angle. Even on the low ground, it's a tough shot to hit, and he's on the high ground, and Ents crunch from the front. Funny Astro tries to rally the troops with the sound barrier, and they're trying to escape. I mean, Hottie was already leaving, and Ents 
will continue to push the bot 80 plus meters and match point for ends ssg need to put a stop to this uh, it's got to be off the back of sparker's overclock there's nothing else that space station can work with at the moment except for getting a raw pick this could be a full capture here too if it doesn't pay off as has been able to get the better of those dps duels for now and there's another one sticky bombs onto backbone Okay, that's not good. SSG has it stop. Let's stop your own hearts. What's going on now? Overclock from Sparker. This needs to be big. Hottie trying to make as much space as possible. Soak up the damage for Sparker, who takes an alternate angle and forces Ents into shelter. But 119 meters, like Ents don't have to go full full cap. They can now just fight to retake the bot and do nothing with it if they want. Yeah, you do, you do play from a very strong defensive position, knowing that there is half of the map left. It's still a little bit of time to work with here for Space Station to get the ball rolling again, but that's a lot of differential they're going to have to make up in these next couple of minutes. And they still have to play pretty flawlessly here if they want to give themselves the best shot. you got to win all of these team fights in a row. Oh, you gotta toss the photon barrier, and there's Masa activating the speed cage fight from SSG. I think maybe it was a teleport play or something, but wasn't able to lock anyone in, and Hottie's had issues uh, maximizing the value on an ultimate like that. And uh, the stolen friends of Ends, they retaliate with their own ultimates, and they will regain bot control. And the further they push this, the more meterage SSG has to make up for to try and match the score. Oh boy, Kevster too, like just uh, continuing to uh, play so dominantly on this Echo. Uh, it's gonna make a quick swap back and forth, so you are charged list for now, but Landon, gotta use his Kitsune Rush on the point with a Cardiac Overdrive, and Mob is so low already. Wow, everyone Kitsune just went for a so giant low. group hug, and I think Enz just squeezed a little too tight. <laughs> like Kitsune Rush and Terra Surge, SSG tried with the Kitsune Rush, but then Funny Astro didn't pop barrier. Masa didn't even have to, but it was more on Funny Astro to maybe save the team, but maybe that's too much to expect out of just a guy in skates. Either way, SSG got to prevent the full cap at this point. Three minutes and 15, and don't even want to push their luck. They could play this distance fight. SSG are, are weaker to poke than the other side, and Ents know this. And you don't have to pull full push. You can disengage just a little bit to get yourself a positional advantage, but there you go. Sound barrier is invested. And a photon barrier just to allow SSG to have a more confident, maybe a stable poke phase, but there's lots of places to break LOS in this part of the map, so Ents easily just mitigate both a barrier and a, a, a sound barrier and a photon barrier, so didn't get much from that either. But now this is now two and a half minutes remaining, and Space Station still has yet to start to whittle away at this huge gap in meter ridge that has accumulated during Coliseo. Backbone is switched to the Sombra, though. Okay, uh, maybe some hacks can help it out. Going back to some old loves from the past, and Kevster is gonna dupe, and now him and Kai can go for a high score. As says she have only been able to win one fight, and I like the Mauga teleport idea. It's just been tough for them to execute, and Backbone realizes that is gonna swap to something else, and Sparker's been able to do an okay job against Kai, but Kai is the best Sojourn in Overwatch currently. Hottie gonna slam in, it's good to CC, Backbone can't get the hack, and Sparker jumps up to add to the pressure, and in a lot of trouble, they use the Katsune Rush, and without Crimson, this is Ents falling apart right at the finish line, but 133 meters, it's pretty good. Yeah, you're, st you're still so okay with that if you're Ents, because you know that with a minute and a half now, Space Station, they've got their work cut out for them. Still no progress in their territory with this push bot beyond what they were able to get at the beginning of this map. 
Uh, so this cage fight, it's got to hit. It can't get stuck to the wall this time. Backbone needs to work up to this EMP, and they have to cycle through these ultimates effectively in order to capitalize and, and have a shot. It's still not over, but it's going to be a behemoth of a task. Oh, the cage fight to finish off that kill on the Crimson, and Masa couldn't save them with the sound barrier. A fantastic job out of Hottie when Crimson was stepped up to try and heal someone instead of, you know, trying to escape from Hottie. So, uncharacteristic fumble by Ents and SSG, and they accumulate more meters. Well, there you go. That's that's one team fight down. 30 seconds left. You're still looking at two, potentially three team fights. They're going to have to win. So, early trigger here for the EMP. Oh, you love that early initiative out of SSG. They could snowball this if they continue to take these early fights when Ents are still getting into position, and that is the advantage that Backbone gives this team. Really is, though. I, and even with the Sombra reversion of the additional, like, 8% less for the ultimate, you're still going to get that EMP online relatively quickly, especially if you can just hack a target, help just shut down any amount of cooldown there for that hero. But we're going back into things. Vestola is hacked. Got to finish up these kills. And this is going to be it. Overtime. Yes, and there's no Mega Pack in that room. Pretty critical for the defense here of Ents. And Hadi gets supplemented by the Sound Bear and the Kitsune Rush, so he's ready to go burn. He just keeps donk walking at ends. SSG could make the run of a lifetime from 0 to 100. They haven't stopped winning fights yet. And have to be careful to not fumble the bag. Oh, so does Space Station, though. They could just get off of the cart. The overtime wick has been going for so long, but the Kitsune Rush over top here could spell disaster. Oh, the stun on the hottie. He's dead. The Ents re-engage from the top rope to body slam SSG once and for all. It's a clean sweep, and Ents move on to our upper bracket final. That was such a good push, though, by Space Station at the end of the day. It was looking so dire. Just having that 100-meter ridge gap in between both teams. They won those two team fights in a row. And I thought it was looking really good for them as well to be able to close the distance. But with those extra ultimates and the extra pressure, Space Station uh, sadly not able to get it done. And so Ents, amazing stuff. I cannot wait to hear what the desk has to say about this one. I'm sorry, Danny. Not this time around but the hashtag is gonna have the power a little bit later i feel it it's fine it's fine i think <laughs> i was supposed to go with ends i think i made a mistake i think it was production's mistake whoa you whoa, made a mistake whoa. <laughs> you made a mistake three, believing three, in three, hot i got i got half of it right i said three zero um oh but it was my you know, god was, but hey this is hey. this is live I <laughs> they boys. know huh Space Station not your boys? Not anymore! Oh, not anymore! Ents is Ents are my boys! Wait, this is bigger <laughs> than the match! <laughs> Anyways, Besides? I mean, I'm just... Uh, like all that. jokes aside, you know, Space Station Gaming, they tried their best, but just Ents was just too powerful. And yeah. they, of course, at the end, ultimately, get to win 3-0 against Space Station Gaming. I'll give you I credit, mean, Jake. I'll give you credit. Who could have called exactly <laughs> what comp? Ants would play and how the series would go. That's crazy. Like, they're coming out on the Echo. Yeah, man. Why do you, because it's because they, they showed it. They showed it yesterday. They showed it always starting um, Echo. And then they swapped Tracer for the mirror because they don't want Echo and the rest of mirror. Tracer no, it was a good guess. You just got lucky. Oh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. 50 50 percent. I'm yes, yeah. an analyst. <laughs> All right. Walk us, through the, the walk us through this match, guys. <laughs> I mean, honestly, top to bottom, I think this Malga Comp does have potential. I think it can work. However, some of these, I mean, even on, on Control Center, right? Even Ents plays the Mountain Comp, they feel like it's too strong. However, I think that was a bit of a scary moment for Space Station when this map right here, in the full mirror match, Ents win relatively dominantly, not, not a complete stomp, but, but they looked really solid on the comp. Then it was like, okay, where's the edge for SSG? Because if at any point the Mountain Comp starts taking over, well, it'll be a mirror match, and then Ents maybe will still win it. So I think, honestly, compositionally, the, the flexibility here was the advantage um, for Ants, and that's kind of what we expect out of them, right? With somebody like Vistola, so much impact on these aim-heavy tanks. And then when it comes to the DPS matchup, I mean, Sparker, Psycho, and Backbone are all solid players, but Kevster Kai in their comfort zone on some of their best heroes, that's a duo that I don't really think you can match in this region, at least on the DPS. Yeah, I think you pretty much sum up exactly um, how, how this match unfolded here. I think it's going to be a tough uphill battle now for Space Station because you kind of like, 
have to find something that could work for you in this meta, I think, after this match. Like, you're not gonna come back with this composition and be like, well, if we just play better, like, no, it's you, you actually have to kind of, like, pick up the Orisa yourself or figure out, like, a different map plan, perhaps. Maybe there are DPS map, swaps, like the Sombra at the end here looked like potential, look okay. maybe a it Tracer. Better. It I better. think a Tracer in the comp could be good. Something to shut down Echo or put pressure on the Echo, but letting the Echo Sojourn go unpunished is just, I mean, it's devastating. Yeah. I think, crucially, though, what we hit on before the match as well is Vistola playing the Orisa. So as we kind of, like, wrap this match up, it did look like a bit of a compositional difference, but one player who really stood out was, of course, Kai, Kai yes. on the side of Enz. I mean, his Sojourn was so impactful, and you can see it in the stats yourself. Uh, although it might be quite, quite difficult. Uh, Kai, you know, the, the amount of first picks he found in these fights, uh, you know, his effectiveness with the overclock, uh, it was a bit of a damage difference when it came to this Sojourn. And I mean, you know, this has been his entire career pretty much. You know, he's been so solid when it comes to these hitscan picks, whether it be on the Atlanta Reign in the Overwatch League or the LA Gladiators, uh, LA Valiant back when he was the KSP, of course. Uh, Kai is just so consistent with these hitscan picks, Jake. And, you know, when you're playing these compositions and you just let him cook, he's going to have enormous impact. Yeah, I, I will say, like, for Kai as a player, I see him as one of the few remaining hitscan players who is, like, pretty locked in on the hitscan, you know? He does bring out the Tracer and, and Sombra when they're really needed, but you, you don't want to see Kai on those things, right? You want to see him on the hitscan because these are the picks where he's really explosive. And so with Sojourn in the game now, I feel like that has unlocked a new style for Kai where his core hitscan mechanics are almost unmatched in the game. I mean, like, on the elite level, but on a hero like Sojourn, he can be much more mobile, much more versatile. Historically, I feel like his dominant picks were these like long range backline hit scans, which yes, they're incredibly powerful, but they all have that weakness. They're, they're glass cannons. You can get on top of them, you can catch them. And that's when he would struggle. But with Sojourn, that's so much more difficult to execute. You know, it's funny with Kai, like one of the things, whenever I'm coaching players, I, I, I advise them to go the opposite route. Kai is this player who's like insanely good hit scan, insanely good individual fragger not like a team caller or like super flexible player but just so he's just a generational talent but that's what you have to do if you're this style of player right the only way you can really succeed being a core hit scan specialist is you are like such a like pushing the limit of what is possible on the hero and so i mean for kai i'm just continually impressed that he is staying on top with that with that play style with that that uh, nature of a player like to still be on this level it's pretty stunning for me I mean, he was definitely the difference maker for this series. I think we're going to have spend some time uh, hearing from uh, and one more time. Uh, we're going to have a quick interview with Masa, who is on the line to have a quick chat with us. Masa, can you hear us? Yes. Hey, Masa, uh, big congratulations on getting the win. You guys are looking scary. I mean, I just want to say, I mean, you guys were going up against uh, Space Station Gaming. They're also, they were dominant as well. Was there, was there any, uh, what was the game plan, I guess, uh, going into today's match for you guys? Um, our game plan is a pocket guy, he go kill, and we just hope it works pretty much. <laughs> go kill, yeah. <laughs> Kai, it worked. Kill. Kai go kill. It, it definitely worked. We saw that. Yeah, we saw that turn out real good. Look, Masa, uh, you, it's so great to have you back in OWCS, of course. You took a bit of a break after your stint with the Vancouver <laughs> Titans and the Overwatch League, you know, came back in the World Cup, had a lot of success in the World Cup. So now back here in 2024 with OWCS, talk a little bit about your decision to kind of move away from the scene a bit and now back here competing for NC Sports. Yeah, like Vancouver was like a kind of rough place mentally to be. We had like a rough season, so it's like I decided to take a year off, see like what I want to do with life. And then Cloudy like just pulls me back. He's like, bro, I got this project. It's so insane. It's going to be World Cup. And I played World Cup. I like, oh my God, this game's actually fun to play when you have like a really good group of friends that you play with. And like then we started to build ends. I'm like, mm, I'll give it a go, see how it goes. And yes, we are here now. Yeah, so I'm curious about more of that team synergy on Ents, how how the vibes and the, and the, the roles are within the team. Um, playing with Vestola from, you know, you guys played together on the World Cup, taking that synergy into like the traditional pro scene and then playing with players like Kevster and Kai. Uh, you know, I just talk me through like the players on the team, the personalities, who's like leading the team or, or is, is that you or, you know, who are the players? Like, what are the personalities of these players? I'm sort of curious to get, the, get your, your perspective on what it's like to really play with them. Well, I mean, Kevster is pretty much our professional yapper. He just yaps the most in games. <laughs> And like in certain comps, it has to be Vestola too. Like in Mago comps, he calls more stuff he wants to do, cool dance. And I think uh, it comes down to everyone just needs to listen to each other. And like in different comps, different people need to call. Like for example, dive. Like I can't call stuff. Like I'm in the back line. So 
Um, I did actually listen to one of the interviews you did with Commander X over on his YouTube. Now you advance, you're gonna play Twisted Minds next. And I believe in that interview you said that Twisted Minds is a bit of like a roadblock for you guys, and you guys like had to figure out how to beat them. Can you kind of reiterate your feelings on Twisted Minds and how are you actually going to beat them in the next match? Well, like, I mean, they're good players. They've beaten us like twice, first in like World Cup, now like uh, before. It is obvious, yes, and it, we have a little bit of mental blockage against them, but we've been preparing against them a lot. Like today, we showed a really good gaming, easy for instance, as they would say, and we are trying to just like get a normal game going. If we play a normal game against TM, we I think we should be able to beat them. All right, I got, I got one more question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm go just ahead. I'm just hijacking this interview. Go but ahead. Last time I spoke to Masa, it was 2022, and you were on Vancouver Titans, and at that point, you actually you won the match because I was speaking to you doing an interview, but you said that you were gonna go out into the Vancouver rivers and go salmon fishing <laughs> so now i did see on cloudy stream a couple of months ago that if there was like a sub goal and if you got enough subs you'd go out and you'd go fish with cloudy or something like that i think are you going like yep. ice ice fishing with cloudy or something what's what's the plan what what are the fishing plans in finland uh, the ice is too skinny right now we're gamers like we are on the hefty side so the ice is just too thin <laughs> right now so we have to wait till spring the Weather warms up, we have a boat already, we're gonna go to my cap, uh, what is it, cottage place, we get a boat, we go in the sea, and we just start fishing there. <laughs> and hopefully the internet's good for the stream. You gotta, you gotta get some content. Yeah, that. that's you content. Gotta get some content of that. Please, please, Vasa, we people. gotta see that. We gotta see that. All right, that is it for the interview, Vasa. Thank you so much for your time, man. I'm gonna be looking for that Thank fishing, you. uh, <laughs> fishing content. <laughs> Better get that ready. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you so you, much. Masa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, everybody, that was Masa from and Scott. That that's great content. I'm already excited. Yeah. I'm not uh, even. It's not not about the match anymore. <laughs> I just wanna I wanna see that fishing fishing content like right now. Yeah, I've told you guys that's that's <laughs> you know I'm from a fishing village. You know I'm done with the fishing. When you okay. ice fish, aren't you just like sitting down in a tent on the ice drinking beers for six hours? Is that because I'm in? If that's the case. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean it's a great time. You know that that'd be a good Twitch stream. I tune into that. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're getting our first elimination match of the day ready. Our players are getting uh, ready to set up. Uh, in the meantime, we got to hear from the Overwatch dev, Aaron Keller, about the future of the game. Check it out. Oh, wait, wait a second. Beautiful. Looks good. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Good, yeah, ready for this. Can I just go? Right, oh. everybody. One, one, Mark. Action. Hello, everyone. This is Aaron from the Overwatch team, and welcome to our first developer update of 2024. We have some news that we're excited to share with all of you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we release heroes, a new way of unlocking mythic skins, as well as some gameplay updates. So let's start with heroes. Last year at BlizzCon, we gave you a look at our next hero venture. They're an eccentric and daring adventurer with a unique kit that includes the ability to dig underground. We can't wait for them to join the lineup in season 10, and we want all of you to have the opportunity to play Venture as soon as they are released. Heroes are one of the most exciting additions to the game, and we want all of our players to have immediate access to them when they launch which is why I'm thrilled to share that venture and all future heroes will be free for all players when they launch. Starting with venture, heroes will no longer be unlocked through the battle pass. This includes all previous Overwatch 2 heroes. In addition to this, we're introducing a new way to unlock mythic skins in Overwatch. We'd like to give everyone more choice in how they unlock and upgrade mythic skins. Our goal is to give you more power over which mythic skin you would like to work towards. And starting in season 10, we will debut our mythic shop. This will enable you to acquire mythic skins from previous seasons you may have missed. So if you've been eyeing that cyber demon Genji skin, this is your chance to get it. We'll have more details to share about the mythic shop and how it works as we get a little closer to season 10. Alongside these changes, we will also continue to evolve and add to the core of the game to keep things fresh. The changes we made to our competitive system and some of the core mechanics of Overwatch Combat in Season 9 are all great examples of this, and it's something we want to continue doing. Part of our vision for these big updates to competitive is to give the game a regular heartbeat. Newer updated systems, shaking up PvP, rank resets, 
and new rewards are all examples of the sorts of updates we'd like to continue doing. How often this happens is something that we're still looking at as well as listening to all of you about. Additionally, we've already made several sets of balance changes in Season 9 and are committed to continuing to make the game as fair, fun, and competitive as we can. Let's talk about maps. We're going to be releasing several maps in the next few seasons. We have a new push map, Runasapi, coming in Season 11. Uh, Runasapi is set in Peru and it gives players a glimpse at the Solar Warriors as well as Alari. And it's also gorgeous and a blast to play. We also have a new mode, Clash, with two new maps releasing later this year. And we're excited to announce that we're going to be running a limited time Clash playtest on Hanaoka at the start of Season 10. When we first launched Overwatch 2, we set out to create at least three new maps every year, with the intention of releasing one every other season. But as we've added more and more maps to the game, we heard from you that you'd like us to put as much time into our live maps as we do into making new ones. Based on this feedback, we'd like to continue to make existing maps as fun as possible. We're going to be reworking Coliseo in Season 11, and even more exciting, sometime after Season 12, we're looking at creating a season that will be focused on map reworks rather than a new map. This final map list is still being discussed, but you have given us a lot of feedback about Dorado, Circuit Royale, Havana, and Numbani, so we're closely looking at those maps. The most important part of these plans is you. The Overwatch community is on track to reach 100 million players next season, and our team is dedicated to developing this game alongside you. We've been listening closely to your feedback, and ahead of Season 10, we'll be back with another developer update to share even more upcoming changes. You'll hear from different developers at Blizzard and Team 4 to share how we're addressing disruptive player behavior, grouping restrictions in competitive, and player anonymity. So keep an eye out and make sure to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for upcoming announcements. Thank you so much for watching and let's make a great game. If you want yep. to say the Twitter again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was just the tail of the airplane. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, here we go. The final ma map list is still being discussed. We've been listening, listening. Cool. Oh man, that's a, we have a bright future ahead of us for Overwatch. There's so many great things. I think what he talked about, we're getting new maps, new mode, reworks of the older maps. And I think the biggest, biggest thing for me is uh, all the new heroes and all the past heroes being free. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me happy. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot there, Jake. You know, if you're competitively minded, you think about, oh, reworking maps. Uh, maps is gonna be, this is gonna be so great for us. But I missed out on the Hanzo Mythic skin, and I'm like, I need that Hanzo Mythic skin. So I'm looking forward to the, to the Mythic shop. My my most excited, or what I'm most excited about, like from watching that, is what he said about the heartbeat of the game, about having this constant rate of change. I think that's a philosophy that. I think it's just critical to a live service competitive game where in the end, it's not about there being a perfect state of the game. It's not about there being some ideal goal. And once we get there, we're done. And like, we just play the same game forever. It, it's about that rate of change. There's always something new where it's the most exciting thing in the game is figuring out new strategies, new tactics, new ways to play. And so that pace of improvement and change and that vision for the dev team, for me, that's that's what I'm really excited. Yeah, you know, if Mao gets a bit too strong, you, you tune him back. You hope fix it. <laughs> exactly. And what's fuck. what's no, beautiful is that Mao is still okay. Yeah. Like and he's not bad. You know, I think the greatest thing from this is that they are actually listening to us. The player feedback is there. So Overwatch, Wait, that, thank us, you. But no, I meant like oh, we're part of them too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't listen. Hi guys, I still play the game. <laughs> I'm still playing the game an average of like four hours a day, so I'm pretty sure I count. Yeah, we all game. count. All right. Uh, another thing that counts. Hey, so, uh, sign up for uh, stage two, everybody. Uh, you know, you, you know, you, if you missed out on stage one, double point. Yes, there you go, and you could, uh, you know, get in there. And also, this, if you do well, you could make it to uh, DreamHack Dallas. Everybody, get everybody. In yes. And if you want to, you know, make some memories in Dallas, but don't think you can compete, it's fine because you can get tickets and hang with us. We're washed and won't be playing, but hey, we'll still be there. Except no matter what. For right. yourself, bro. Right. We're washed. Accept it. We're washed. I'm not washed. We're I retired. Keep, what's your rank, bro? <laughs>
I won't make you say that. Are you, you competing? Come on, get on our team, Jay. Let's go 1v1. 1v1. Next segment. 1v1. 1v1. The next segment, let's 1v1. Oh, well, I'm more washed than you. That's not fair. Exactly. I'm relying on this. It's a relative thing. All right. Uh, we saw first uh, uh, first match. Uh, let's take a look at our quick quick look at our brackets. Give me the rundown. That's gonna be a good one. Twisted, Twisted Minds. Oh, yeah, that's baby. tough to that's call. That's gonna be a good one. Sounds like Ence is a little worried though from that mouse interview. Sounds like Twisted Minds. Maybe they should be the favorite. Uh, you know, I think that's that's exciting for for the how stacked Ence looks. If you think about Overwatch League, I mean, for Twisted Minds to be the 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 expected winner is crazy. SSG did take a tough L. I have a feeling though. This won't be the last we see of them. I feel like over quick esports, I still would take SSG. Exo versus Peps as well, could be close. It's hard to say who's gonna come out of that lower bracket. I mean, yeah. talking about SSG and quick esports, that is going to be our next match. Of course, uh, we're looking at Space Station first. We did just see these we guys. Just see them. Yeah, I mean, they're coming off from a tough loss, but you know. It was a tough loss, but, but there's big tier differences in the EMEA, True. right? So Space Station may be taking a tough L though. However, I still think we did see moments of greatness. Team fight wise, they were still able to take some decent fights to ends. I do feel like compositionally ends had the better read um, in this series, which could be scary for SSG. Like, do you rework things? Do you go back to the drawing board? Honestly, given this team's history, I think they're gonna stick with their strengths and, and stick with what they practiced. And you know, they have a history of making those work even if they're not necessarily the meta. Um, and honestly, for Quick Esports, it's going to be a tough task to replicate the individual prowess that Ents used uh, to win that series. Yeah, let's be real. Space Station, they're probably the third best team in EMEA here. So even though you got the motor to the lower bracket, now you're playing Quick Esports. They should be favored against Quick Esports. But then again, you know, Quick Esports, they, they're also been running through this lower bracket. They beat out Rock Esports, which many people were surprised by. You look at this team, you got you got some veterans in there. You recognize Don, for example, on the tank role. Uh, Danit, who was part of the British Hurricane for the longest time as well, been fighting here in Tier 2 and now finally gets a chance here in the EMEA main event to maybe compete with some of the former Overwatch League players, right? So this is a hungry quick esports team that now against Space Station, who took a loss earlier today. Maybe this is the perfect time for quick esports to come out there, take down a, a, like a, a team like Space Station, earn yourself mm. more circuit points, right? Um, and also establish your name a little bit here. So this is a great opportunity for these guys to really make an impression um, on us here. There's definitely blood in the water. And I also want to highlight V, who I think, or V or Phi, I'm not exactly sure the pronunciation, it's but like the Greek. very Greek solid letter, Phi. Okay. Uh, great, great flex player, flanker player, which I think will be crucial to beating down on Space Station, right? To, with these, you know, slow mobility Malga comps. It was Kevster's Echo that was really uncontested in the back line, finding these picks that I don't think he should be able to get. So individual play is going to be critical. SSG, though, going to take us to Ilios. Interesting. Maybe that suggests they want to lean on the Winston as they did on Blizzard World. That was one of the closer maps in the series, I would say. So uh, still going to be interesting to see what SSG decided to do and, and what look we see from Quick. We haven't seen it on the main broadcast yet. All right. Well, we're going to jump right into the game. Second match of the day, SSG versus Quick. Let's jump right in. Uh, Casters, take it away. Thank you so much. I'm excited for this next match, but I hope it's anything but Quick Esports, <laughs> Necra. And I don't know if SSG are going to make this or not. I don't know. I think that Space Asian, they're warmed up. I, as the desk was saying, it's very difficult to compare like Space Station gaming DPS to the DPS that we see on Ents. And I think overall, Ents has set themselves up to be easily top two in the region alongside Twisted Minds. And then that third, that fourth spot, talking to some players during the group stages, they think that like play six, second through sixth is really close. So it's very hard to tell, but I think in this situation, I would give Space Station Gaming a leg up here over Quick Esports, just maybe a little bit of recency bias, but I do think that they have a lot of play time together, which can really help out to be able to get the better of a team. And just knowing the personalities on SSG, I don't think they're going to take that loss too hard. I mean, the desk alluded to the compositional difference, and SSG will always stick to their game, minus maybe backbone swapping to a Sombra. Um, maybe that'll help out a lot more against a team like Quick Esports, who may run a similar style to Ents around the Orisa of Don, but, um, or maybe he wants to run some Maga, not sure. He used to be the, like the Orisa Ryan guy back in the day. Um, <laughs> but it will be a Malga off, you would think, on control, but SSG now opting for the Winston instead. I remember that. I remember Don's Orisa being super impactful when we got a chance to see him in EMEA contender. So I love that maybe we get a chance to see 
get at a little bit later. But wow, is this Mauk composition something else. We are seeing a Torbjorn alongside a Reaper. This is not a drill. And I think the Psycho dealing with this teleporter is going to make this job way easier for Space Station Gaming. Yeah, there's a lot of veteran names. Uh, if you paid attention to Contenders EU for many years, you'd recognize the hit scan deadliness of someone like Fi. Danid, who was known for his Doomfist, now a flex DPS on the Torbjorn of all things, hoping to mark that Echo well, but Psycho and Spark are dealing with that turret well, and SSG taking all the space they can as a hottie stomps somebody like a Goomba. That's how you can really make this Winston team work. We did end up seeing this Winston team into like uh, Roadhog. <laughs> if you were paying attention to the, some of the co-streams that happened during the group stages, it was maybe one of the funniest matches to tune into Funny Astro's POV. Just the comms that sounded like Space Station Gamer were having so much fun. And in that type of scenario, like you're still went running Winston into such a difficult team to actually get a dive on. And that's exactly what Quick Esports have right now. But make quick work of Dawn in the front line. Wow, <laughs> like, they're almost mm. about to touch those spawn room doors. I said I didn't want this to be quick esports, okay? But SSG, I like that they're staying aggressive. They clearly haven't given up hope, even though they're in the lower bracket. And Jake talked about Echo being that kind of tank buster as something that you run against Mauga uh, players. And so far, Don is taking a lot of hits. SSG finally forced to jump out. No cycles is still hovering over the hills, lasering people as when they think that they're safe, when they think they have time to heal. Now Danid is staggered too. This is 70% for SSG, and they haven't been challenged enough to even use a single ultimate. I don't even think Psycho has died. I don't know if anybody has died yet on... <laughs> Space Station Gaming, they still have five ults to play with. Fi is actually going to switch over to the Widowmaker, hoping to push back Space Station. If you do get an early pick there, at the very least, you're able to get out of the spawn doors. It's going to be the Cassidy, though, that Fi does lock in to make this next engagement. But this next one is the last one, if Quick Esports can't get anything done with these ults. And if you're quick esports, you don't even have all your ults. And SSG gonna use the dupe. Psycho just wanted to preserve his life and prevent the flip from going through, but it's too late. Great focus out of quick esports. Primal, Hottie, just having a bit of fun. I think so. SSG now using the rest of their ultimate sound barrier. Kitsune Rush, Overclock, Dala, and Abik doing their best to keep quick esports up who had to swap to a few different heroes and they'll have even more time to uh crunch down on what the right solution will be against ssg uh okay we're doing <laughs> squats now too buddy astro oh my god that's just the typical leg workout for Lucio, you know gotta have the strong thighs for the wall riding yeah yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> just seeing how SSG are using their ults tells me that they they are they're very confident. underestimating, they're confident, they're underestimating their opponent, they're having some fun. They know they can get away with stuff like that. Like you've already SSG like got first picked and they would still like primal in, invest all of their ultimates, because they, they know they're gonna win every single fight. Fi is still trying to find like where he's slotting in in this composition. We saw him on Cassidy and different things, the Echo. And we'll see if the Sojourn sticks. Sojourn works out nicely, as we've seen for some of these Malgo compositions, because even if you're not playing together as a team, Fi can then take an off angle and be self-sufficient to try to get the mark on Sparker's Sojourn, or even Psycho in the skies, as long as you can hit those headshots too. Okay, quick esports, saw somebody on the flank. Oh, that's a guy with skates. And uh, SSG dove in right after when quick esports were distracted. And there's so much space on the side of this dive. And they get to jump out as soon as quick esports want to engage. Uh, Hottie and friends just leave. And quick esports may be fine with that. They may get a chance to cap. SSG are very split from each other once again. And SSG were kind of like that on Blizzard World in their previous series, but this time it's working out. Landon is able and has time to frag out two people. So at the end, SSG take the point.
A little scrappy there for the first fight, but with Space Station now taking control, they get to play a little more aggressive, and they still don't have any ultimates to work with, but they've been winning all of these frag wars that it doesn't really matter. This teleporter, though, from Danit is going to help them close the gap, but Fi is in a huge world of hurt. Yeah, I'm not even going to blame Fi for that one. I remember how goaded he was when I cast good Yeah, me too. I knew if he had space and a team to protect him and things were a little bit more even he could look just as good but when there's a winston constantly on top of you and a quick east push don't how to deal with flankers it's a tough road ahead a beak is missing not a lot of heals for quick esports they can't even grab mega without dying and ssg is looking like a 200 angle <laughs> and this might be a bloodbath this has been so dominant from Space Station so far. Just so predictive of the teleporter placement, ready to get the jump whenever Quick Esports start to take and engage. Like, watch this. Teleporter gets used, they go up to the high ground. It's a little bit further away now, so it's not gonna be an immediate engagement here by Space Station, but it was still, like, you saw the Disruptor shot get popped down right on top of it. And that's the best way to counter a Symmetra teleport setup is to initiate. Do not let them have time to set up. And Hottie realizes this, and this is the strength of Winston against this quick esports we're trying to set up. Got primaled off. SSG only had to use one ultimate. You got a cage fight from Psycho that was built up during the Echo Doom, but quick esports have fights at the front, fights at the back. The threats are surrounding them. Quick esports use a sound barrier, but that's getting shredded. And Fi has the overclock and yet forces Psycho out of his uh, dupe form, but it did not result in any following kills. Overtime is gonna dwindle away and Space Station, I guess aim for the stars on that one. Shoot for the moon and land among the stars. Yeah, wow. I Like they're just going the distance right now when it comes down to that first map. And I'm a little worried at the moment about Quick Esports finding a solution to this super coordinated dive. It's why we've been able to see Space Station find success with this is the synergy, the great utility of their cooldowns to make those engagements so difficult for Quick Esports, whether it was being predictive of that teleporter or just Echo beaming a Lucio wall riding around the map. Yeah just a psycho is a pain in their butt <laughs> literally i think don um maybe it's possible to swap to either rissa to have uh, more tankiness try to absorb some of that damage a bit better uh, javelins allow you to maybe get a stun onto someone but that maybe was just a compositional difference we don't get to see the true potential of players on quick esports who have been around the scene for so long never got their roses i would say didn't get the same spotlight as uh, other players in the scene did and this is their opportunity I, unfortunately it is the lower bracket for them but this year this could be their moment to to prove that they belong at the top I agree with that. Every single one of these players I'm remembering from EMEA contenders like three, four years ago, and they were always so impressive when looking at some of the finishes that they had in contenders. I know some of them have gone on to play in the Overwatch League and have also gone on to play in some of the Flash Ops tournaments and other opportunities that Blizzard has provided, but it's great to see them continue to work hard to find that success and it's still a huge accomplishment making it to this top eight stage uh, yeah maybe just some swaps and it depends just how okay even the chat agrees that this match could go this way but there's still some belief in the quick esports camp uh, i'm thinking maybe a tracer could have helped to uh, just chase down this echo of psycho a bit better and arissa we know how good don's arissa can be we saw in the overwatch league last year and that seems to match up uh, a bit better against the winston to say the least but we'll see how much thinking uh they'll get to do because uh, we're going to go into map two very, very soon. But before that, we're going to go to a break. I think it's time to blow this scene, get everybody in the stuff together. 
Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. Well, Space Station uh, did a lot of work on that first map. We got to show y'all the stats because how good they were broke our system. <laughs> Take a look at this KD <laughs> because SSG didn't die at all. Not once. Yeah, wait, what you're seeing is uh, they didn't die. Quickie Sports didn't get a kill. Um. <clears throat> Wow, I don't think we're going to see that very often in OWCS, so take a screenshot of that <laughs> and keep it for the memory books or a meme format later. I don't know. We've got some creative people oh, yeah. in the community. Yeah, we had that um, segment on the pre-show, too, about meme formats, <laughs> but I, I don't think we eSports think this is funny. This could also be a warm-up div. SSG did just play against Ents, and... Uh, you know the desk said and we all agree they did a fantastic job it was a sweep against them but this is a match that ssg are expected to win and quick esports didn't have a match that they just played they've been waiting for ssg to hurry up and they did but now now uh ssg brought the fire uh, playing ents was kind of like the training weights I feel like because you have such a tough opponent, you are totally sweating in a matchup like that. You know, was, uh, I can't even imagine how locked in you have to be to have to play Sojourn against Kai of all people. And even looking at Psycho subbing in for Blizzard World, it still looked good. Like he's still playing in this roster, not because he lost a map, but because he is competent right and and so i'm super excited to see that this loss has not broken their spirits yet and hopefully the adrenaline still pumps so that they are still feeling locked in and focused for the task ahead now this dive from ssg will begin establishing on that high ground at least there's a Reaper there from Fi, so this could be used to blow up Hadi. Shax may have a hard time kind of running after Psycho there and doesn't want to go in too deep either, how different Sombra is in Overwatch 2. And Don's sticking to the Mauga, and now he's isolated himself, and that's the danger of going up against the Nako, the focusing beam, all the sticky nades. It's a lot of damage, and this can bring down a tank very quickly. And if Don isolates himself even for a second, like, and a beak doesn't teleport in, Don's going to be shredded instantly, and this is a very easy take for a space station. Oh, well, even if a peak actually does swift step into the Malga, you're making yourself an easier target, too, because of the DPS passive stunting a little bit of that healing by 15%. Like, it's still an it's palpable impact with how much healing you're actually able to do in a situation like that you're not out healing the damage being done to you at the very least though quick esports they get a chance to get a close hold here under the archway so maybe this is the start of the defense here Oof. Really good shots out of Shaxx, and I'm excited for him to be on the Tracer. This was a swap that I 
that I suggested before this map started. If Psycho continues on the Echo, Tracer becomes a really good counter to that to have more mobility to chase that Echo down once she does come back to Earth. But Shax has also a Lucio chasing them around, forcing out blinks, forcing out recalls, is now in the middle of the team and didn't have enough blinks to get back. And that's where Abik, maybe using a Suzu, could have salvaged that moment, but Shax needs the team to step up in those moments so that the Tracer isn't the only target in those fights. Katsune rushes are going to be exchanged and quick East. First he lives. Uh, let's go. They're trying to defend this choke, and wow, they sent SSG back to spawn. First he lives. Let's go. Hype for quick esports. They get the defense too in such an advantageous position for having that defensive side. Right under the archway can be a little bit difficult to breach because you're coming through a window, you're going under the archway, just very telegraph positions here to try to get the uptake. Ooh. Sparker is feeling it, needs to be careful, but Dawn is so low, the Selvir is trying to keep him up during the cage fight. And he's going up against Psycho, who just duped him, and Shaq throws a pulse bomb through all of that. It's so chaotic. Hottie will even have Primal, so they can, SSG can continue to be aggressive, and oh my god, as Dollar was trying to escape, he got the cage fight, got brought out by Psycho. A lot of ults invested there from SSG, but ends up working out, they can get some progress going. There's a bit of a stall there by Shax, and now moving forward. It's good though, like Quick Esports, they, they did get a big team fight win. They are starting to stall off time from this bank, and we were able to get out some pretty critical ultimates here from Space Station, so that now you get a chance to come in with the Kitsune Rush. You do have Pulse Bomb. Space Station doesn't have an overwhelming amount of pressure to put onto this final point, when sometimes we see the second point end. You gotta have like maybe three or four ultimates sometimes to get it over the line. It can be tough to break. Don trying to reposition. Potty jumps after him. And he can continue to harass him. He still has the primal force to pop it now. And quick esports. A little bit of trouble now that they've chased down some kills. SSG's punish is just that much better. Don realizing that the card is being pushed. Um has been left behind and SSG are about to cap and this is a bit of a fumble out of quick esports. That is a cap. That that is cap that came through. Those are staggers. Uh, and now it's space station moving into this third point. That's yeah. That is that is a fumble. Like you wanted to go in there with the rush with the pulse bomb. The pulse bomb is also going to be a whiff and a miss here. And it feels like quick esports are panicking, trying to get out of these spawn room doors when Hottie is just deposing in their faces. Yeah. I mean that's a G. They're winning their front-to-back fight, and Don tried to go on, like, a flank, and it just didn't pan out. Then he brought a beak with him, so then a beak wasn't healing the rest of the people getting uh, steamrolled by SSG. So, three minutes and a few more meters before the end of C, and Buddy Asher dies. I mean, he's still trying to get organized with the team to use the sound barrier, and Shax knows this. So he hunts down everybody trying to set up these ultimates. Now Landon uses the Kitsune Rush. And this is starting to give Space Station an edge. Sparker can continue to get picks, maybe punish Dala. Yeah, he's out of position. A beak is not in line of sight of Dawn until now. He puts himself in danger. SSG have leftover ultimates now, including a dupe and an overclocked dupe at that. And SSG are getting tested here and there. This and Quick Esports now. need to quickly think of a plan or else this time bank is gonna get ugly. That is two and a half minutes that Space Station are able to complete this map with. And it felt like a consistent snowball throughout the map where you're right, like a couple of tests came through. There was that good defensive fight under the archway of second point. And then there were some good picks that happened towards the end of second and into the third, but Space Station have a lot of time to work with, like not a full steamroll, but Quick Esports, I, I just, I worry about them even being able to finish the map with how Space Station have played even defensive dive on control. I think there's flashes in the pan to Quick Esports, Shaxx is Tracer, this is what he was known for forever and always. In Overwatch and Overwatch League 2. 
yeah and his mechanics still there he's still a threat but space station can just turn and deal with that flanker quite easily like when Shax was trying to get work done at this main archway when Shax was uh, going after everyone on point c and quick esports just need to be coordinated that if their tracer is going in on a flank they need to push from the front but quick esports are pushing from all over the place don i don't think malga is really a flank type of tank so just don has to be careful on how these charges are being used in a Winston Ooh. mirror. I'm excited for this. I am too. What day and age is this to see a divey dive in EMEA of all places? I love to see it. I'm excited to see how Dan can coordinate with the rest of the team playing around this Sojourn, playing around this Tracer. Disruptor shots, though, do make this pivot a little interesting. Fai's <laughs> skin is so funny. She's got a helmet on. <laughs> it keep, keeps throwing me off that people can just play whatever skin. <laughs> well, this bike herself is going to be uh, in trouble. Space Station are just winning all these fights. And they're chasing down Quick Esports, who are now stuck in this tiny room, ready to get staggered. Don is by himself, and SSG are going to dwindle him down. Respawns are closer though for Quick Esports and they are taking bodies with them. So while Space Station is able to clean up these picks, maybe Quick Esports can get out of the gates fast enough that they are able to take advantage of that. But oh my god, I was, I was so close. worried. Shaq's got worried. deleted too though. Uh, so this is going to be a standstill. That advantage is now gone. The window has closed. Yeah, but everyone's catching strays. <laughs> Dan's made some good engagements though. I, I was really impressed. Like immediate jump in, getting a member of Space Station down, did get another pick as well. So he is playing this Winston very aggressively and making it harder for Psycho. Oh, Hottie has already got the pounce on Fi, and Don was still trying to find a good target. So the quicker initi initiative out of SSG nets them an early advantage and great pulls. Psycho has been consistently able to generate ultimates in that Echo Dupe form, which tells me that he is not getting pressured whatsoever. I mean, he's still on fire. I don't even know if he's died. Either way, quick esports need to deal with that dupe because the ultimates that Psycho is choosing to use are scary. He's charging them up so quickly, too, and I feel like that's been really rare sight in OWCS so far, is seeing those Echoes actually get the ult online and using it, so... Uh, yeah, very deadly, very scary. Wow, quick esports are going deep. They just want to access that back line of SSG. They know that if they focus Hottie, he's just going to jump away and he's going to continue to do so. He's got Primal, but quick esports didn't assassinate the back line of SSG as intended. And SSG are going back and forth with them. Quick Esports, you know, seen that in the first tick, but all thanks to Shax, but that, that's all they're going to get this fight. One minute left, too, by the time the Quick Esports are able to make a re engage. It's just the overclock left. Quick Esports have thrown so many ultimates at these fights and to no avail. So Fi is going to have to have the overclock of his life here. The Space Station still have a way to fight back with the sound barrier as well as this pulse bomb from Sparker. And it makes you wonder, like, what is Shax's priority? Is it to help peel 4 5 when Hottie this dives him? Now. If this overclock is used, Hottie may want to pressure that and bubble that off. But no, the bubble's already been used. So Psycho is on kill duty. And he flies towards the back. He has Funny Astro by his side. He's got the speed and the firepower and what it takes to keep SSG kicking. 30 seconds left, one more attempt here for Quick Esports. Fi is going to switch over to the Widowmaker to see if he can get a quick pick out of the spawn, but goes back over, uh, it goes over to the Echo, actually. Uh, so a little bit of a change up here that I maybe maybe will be able to help just deal with Psycho, but Psycho is just waiting in the wings here with the duplicate to play aggressive. You gotta look both sides of the road before you cross, or you got sticky grenades to the face, and Two seconds. at least... Psycho dupes the Tracer, best shacks in that moment. Quick Esports are down one, and they got overtime to worry about. Don gets shredded by Psycho on the Tracer, and Quick Esports get full held on King's Row. <sighs> little bit of a, little bit of a stop right now. 
but hey, that means maybe the glass half full SSG are back, baby. They're not going anywhere, it seems like. <laughs> they are so back. So back. They're so back. We kind of expected that, though, out of SSG. It would be a red flag if Space Station were not able to execute and live up to the expectations that people have put on this match. If it was some fumbles, maybe we would have some questions about whether Space Station Gaming does belong in the top four of this region. So I think they're here to continue to prove that like, yeah, they've got it. They are dominating and they still have a dog in this fight, even though that Ents match was a 0-3 loss for them. And I don't want to harp on the compositional choices. I'll let Jake be bad cop on the desk about this. Um, sometimes this just comes down to what you're scrimming and how much time you are spending scrimming, because obviously the more time you invest it into practice, the more compositions that you get to try out, the more the flexible your players become and more confident in what to swap to. Because I'm very surprised that Don wouldn't want to try something like the Orisa. He did at least go to the Winston thinking that mirror was gonna work out but hottie i know was like known as that ryan quote one trick in the overwatch league but before he made the overwatch league hottie was the best winston in europe so that's a, still a tough task i know times have changed it's been many years since then <laughs> but that is still a tough mirror for don to play into but at least he doesn't have to stand by he's a bit more control of his destiny having more mobility Shax obviously looks better on the tracer uh Fi is still getting into it you know still warming up um, it's hard to see without the stats in front of me comparing, but there is a lot of potential in the quick esports side, but this could be an early exit for them. It could. And I think like, even though we did see the Malga for a little while, the Winston from Dawn did look better. As you said, a little bit more agency for Dawn to be able to make those initiations. And he did walk away with picks. Like, yes, it was a full hold. Maybe they didn't get a chance to show off the Winston on the defense that they had, but Winston didn't look bad. It, it gave them a little bit more pressure onto Space Station. So I, I would love to see if the Winston is something that they could continue to run heading into this third map. There's still bright spots here for Quick Esports, but I think it's just the onus on Space Station Gaming to continue to live up to the hype that people are putting on them in this bracket. Maybe, like, if I were to suggest, like, that compositional difference and why I think Orisa is stronger for Quick Esports is that they could just focus by playing front to back. I think SSG's weaknesses is when Hottie is forced out early. You saw exactly that against Ents and how powerful they were at focusing down Hottie as soon as he jumps in because you have a small window, a five, six second window to get inside of Winston's bubble, to pressure him out, to take the armor down and Hottie isn't getting that same attention, but uh, maybe Quick Esports can make some changes in the roster department to help out. Okay, well, Danit is going to be taking up a DPS role here. Shax is going to take a back seat. So uh, I'm interested in this choice here. I feel like the last time we ended up getting a chance to see, see Danit, it was on a tank role, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and he played Torb on first map, I think. Is that him? Yeah, I I I can't remember that. <laughs> it was a that really quick map, map. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that map passed in a blink of an eye. Jen, I, I'm not sure that I stored that one in my memory bank. Uh, Somebody <laughs> played Torb, and I hope I don't see the Torb. But I don't could know be if we'll see the Torb. But yeah, like uh, so, it's it's cool to see see Janet step into this roster. Maybe it is just a little bit of a fresh perspective that'll help to get this team back on track. I'm trying to get all their subs to have play time and just change things up. I thought Shax did an amazing job. Now we salute him. He can rest easy. This could be potentially the final map of Quick Esports because this is SSG's choice. And what a great dive map this is. A lot of high grounds. This can be very open. A lot of space that you got to take quickly. But maybe Quick Esports can fall back to some rush. Maybe the Mauga they're feeling. If they've scrimmed that, if they scrim that comp the most, go back to what you're confident in. You might as well lose playing your own game, uh, then lose uh, panicking and going to comps you don't know. It's a great point. 
if Malgo's gonna be the the sauce, then gotta go with comfort. It's just tough because the reason why we ended up seeing so much Malga in the first place was because of that patch that came through. The 8% ultimate decrease there for Sombra to be able to get the EMP. That was very powerful to see the Reaper and the Sombra combo together. And then we end up seeing the Malga that has the more impactful cardiac overdrive as well as just being able to get a bit more of that overrun charge damage when he does slam down at the end of that cooldown and there were just a lot of pieces of the puzzle that came together to make Malga and the rest of the supports and dps in those different comps just like ultra ultra powerful there is staying power for the Malga, but i i just don't know if that's gonna be that's gonna be enough, and I, I'm with you. Arissa feels better <laughs> to me. I'm actually super surprised, maybe not to see Danit try the Doom Fist into the Winston. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, YOLO at that point, I guess, but I'd rather see Rush or just, I wonder what Fi is gonna do. Because like you alluded to, like he used the Reaper on King's Row to act as a sort of counter and i'm seeing five try his best all these different hit scans you know we saw cassidy reaper sojo and whatever and i don't think there's anything he can do because it's just when your team is getting gapped that way it's there's only so much you could do as an indiv individual but if they do resort to the rush i think reaper could be nice the only issue is when you face a sojourn reaper lacks the range and teleporting in pro play it, it you don't get away with that like you do in your ranked games we saw it even yesterday when reapers teleport around on ishbranza sojourn can just watch where the teleport goes and have the headshot lined up and sparkers that guy so uh, i would be worried about fight trying to pull that off against a team as good as ssg I'm with you there. It's like <laughs> Reaper, it's the Symmetra Teleporter 2 that Space Station Gaming have always sniffed out. Even going back to our very first map where we had Ilios on Ruins, you saw the Teleporter come out and instant jumps in from the Winston, instant disruptor shots to just get that little bit of damage there to soften up those targets, make them better for Winston to Tesla Cannon down and cleave. And so, uh, it's tough. I, I, I feel for quick esports in this moment. Uh, the writing feels like it's on the wall in some ways, but maybe they can surprise us. And just taking any maps at all will will help the map differential when it comes to crunching down uh, the standings and who qualifies and who moves forward. So I think there's it's still a good learning opportunity in quick esports should just give it their all and now that danit is in all the weight is on his shoulders if he was a tour player or not how is he gonna <laughs> help maybe rally the trips because danit does bring a lot of experience in that dps role in the flex department um so maybe he can help coordinate this maga teleport which quickie sports tried to do on ilios but just didn't have time to set up before ssg took initiative what? that is that is possible i i it <laughs> I'm still remembering him for the Doomfist, I think is why I'm like, oh yeah, yeah he was a tank player. I'm, I'm remembering that now, but if you're a Doomfist one trick, are you actually a tank player? Or are you just DPS <laughs> reincarnated as a, a beefy tank that punches people like a actual one punch man? But you know, uh, go get that skin. Oh. Actually, fantastic. Yeah, go get the skin. <laughs> Wait, I don't know yeah. if you can get it anymore, but that was one of my favorite oh. collabs. Anyway, um, Danny back better to have it, because... <laughs> He, and, and he should also beat the allegation. I don't think he's a one trick anymore, but sometimes when no. you're known as a one trick, you can't escape um, the banner that people put on <laughs> you. But, uh, so yeah, Quick Esports with a, a type of rush using the Symmetra Teleporter could be me. And even then, Danit can build up a lot of DPS off of, uh, off of the Winston bubble, but when, wow. Some of the shots are coming in, shutting that down, but Fi can pick things up and who's remaining is Quick Esports to start a lead. Fantastic! Early progress means that you get a chance to play up across this bridge. It gives you some good ground for Fi to cover. Danit as well, but the teleporter can also help to be able to close that gap. So uh, it already seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, although as I say that, where was Danit? Hmm, where was he? Why was he so far anymore, back? I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. Either way. Quick esports. 
it's not the worst thing in the world it's not like your main healer it's not like don is missing so they can just focus on taking their own bridge and having Fi um poke them down ideally before this dive comes in this will force them down ssg do not give up any real estate. Quick Esports stole the bot though, and that's sort of the most important thing. Danid has made his way back, but Quick Esports have had their forces dwindled down, and SSG are done playing with their food. Oh, and like, uh, Don had no support there. Like, he, he went in with the overrun, didn't have any backup to finish off the back line of Space Station, and so that's gonna be a fight win for Space Station, and maybe even taking the lead. If so many alts too, like they've they've got basically the full bag to throw at the next <laughs> one. Um, Better not fumble that bag. No, please don't. Uh, but you know, it, it, throw all five, and maybe that's what we call a fumble. <laughs> Depending on what value you get out of it. But I like that Psycho was on the flank, and he's got the pulse. And Quick Esports using the teleport just to establish themselves on bridge. And it's going well so far. Never mind. It is not going well anymore. Psycho didn't even need to use the pulse to kill ya. Danid is missing. And without that professional taxi, uh, Quick Esports uh, need to reset. They need to reset, but that is the point captured. So close spawns unlocked for Space Station. Still no alts used up to this moment. Psycho able to get a big pick onto Fi, and that continues to blow these doors open for Space Station to walk to. Sparker also has the overclock, but like where the quick esports, they, they were behind them. Now they have to walk all the way out in the open with no shield to cover them. They have to wait for Danny to get this teleporter online to just try to get through this choke. Okay, well, Dan, or Dan, Don. That's a lot of Ds. <laughs> but Don is trying to lead that, has the sound bear with the quick esports establish themselves, didn't really kill much. Now the re engage, called by Landon with the Kitsune rush. And oh, Hottie is just punching at double speed and beats Fi down. He doesn't have the jump to escape. And that's good on SG to realize the importance of these cooldowns. And as soon as you see the Sojourn uh, slide being used, that's the perfect moment to dive in. Cage fight seems like a tilter there. It had his team behind him, but SSG focused on down, so not going to work out there. I mean, the Winston bubble down too meant that there is no help available for Fi to get some railgun shots in. Danit was also blocked from being able to use the Symmetra beam, and it's been this bubble placement that's been a huge difference maker here for Hottie on the Winston. Shutting off all of those avenues for support for for Don. I can't. I don't think I can even blame Don there. But Dan is actually going to make make a switch up. You've got the Bastion. This card is getting so close to the end, and Fi is down again here as Sparker is able to get the better of him. Uh, Hottie will have more time to chew his gum, though. I was just thinking about like, man, it would be funny to do a listening because I bet there's just not much being said. And actually, I want to hear that gum being chewed. <laughs> so let's go and listen in with SSG. High grounds, okay? I can just touch the point I'm here below. Back, guys. I'm almost just back. park the bus in this area. I will touch point. Yeah. But they're not. Mauga point. Mauga under, Mauga under. Can we just come back to the Just come back to the One go over. Go, go, go. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm a Bastion. Bastion, Bastion, Bastion. Bastion, Bastion. I'm living. Come point. Here Okay, so it's man. I have carry all. Got him. I'm with you, don't worry, don't worry. I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, push me, push me, push me. Can, can we get this Let's go, let's go, let's go. 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 Let's go, let's Bastion forming. 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 Bastion Mauga. AK. Okay, okay. P1. Mauga 1, Mauga 1. P1. Mauga, 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 Mauga. 
Nu er vand. Mange, 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 mange. Ah! Mange. Nej. Okay, jeg dør også lige igen. What a game. Okay. Well, no gun. I still hear the what a game. What a game. Full sarcasm intended. I didn't get to hear the gun being chewed, but I heard somebody getting chewed, and uh, it was quick esports at the end. Uh, great comms, though. I love getting a chance to hear the insider information. <laughs> like you could hear them calling out different engage, like different disengage mechanisms, like Sojourn no slide, uh, Bastion on the right. Just calling out some different locations so that the team can formulate the game plan of how do we methodically and meticulously take out all of these pieces one by one with our dive. And Psycho even spraying, even Psycho just didn't have to say much. Didn't say anything at all when he put the spray up and just kept pointing at it. Said, I'm a very verified Overwatch League player. And they prove that they are just certified winners. Big congratulations to SSG. Let's go check in with the desk and see what they think. Thank you so much, ladies. Yeah, what a game. We made the bread. <laughs> we got it right. Yeah. Hey, never in doubt, SSG. I got you. I got you guys. Yeah. <laughs> always I mean, believe. <laughs> always believe. Never, never in doubt. 3 0 victory for SSG. They were looking a lot better there compared to the first game. You know, what, what did they do right for this game and how did they get the win, guys? I mean, I think they were just really comfortable playing. This is an enormous and skill gap. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. <laughs> this is an enormous skill okay, gap. Okay, you, yeah, you say it, Jake. I mean, you pop off, King. All right, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, but this, I mean, this is this, like you can yeah. tell even from the comms, right? Those are great comms, by the way. Like that's very clean. Like, it's not like the most exciting, fun thing to listen to. Other than that, the end. I love the funny Astros call. Ah, oh, it's cool. I died after the. It didn't count in the stats, guys. It's cool. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> like, they're, they're going for the the deathless games, but but those are clean comms. And there's you notice there's nobody like hard microing mm. the team there. Like back in the day, I think, and the way people think about team comps, a lot of people think, oh, I need, we all need to do exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. That's not realistic, especially not in dive. Everyone is just info calling for each other and trusting that each person can take the information they need, make the right call decision for themselves, and continue to fight effectively. And really, I think that's how Overwatch 2 is played, is, is all about those just like reactive, communicative calls. Um, and so really well played here. I think as a team, as individuals, the gap here was just pretty obvious, right, with how incredibly dominant the series was. Um, I think Quick Esports definitely gonna be back to the drawing board for them. And I think for Space Station, this is a nice, you know, opportunity to reassert yourself, build that confidence uh, going on into the future of the bracket. Yes, you took that tough loss to Ents, but you showed yourself that you can still do it. And here on the Winston comp, right, the more high skill comp that enables individuals, they look wonderful. Yeah, Psycho popping off on the Echo, just like Kevster did against them just a couple of hours ago. Yeah. Um, had enormous impact when it comes to downplaying, trying to play this Mauga composition, right? So it, it, was, it was kind of ironic that Space Station got this win uh, with these re really clean uh, Echo dives, especially here on King's Row. I mean, holding them on first point here, just repeatedly, I was in the back just like looking at these dives and they were flanking around on po King's Row point A and always finding picks where it was a sojourn, spotting out Lucio's and putting themselves at a positional advantage. So really clean dives from Space Station. And I mean, here was just like kind of clean up duty. Um, and I, I, I got some bullying going on later, I'll showcase. <laughs> but it, it, it really bullying. was just clean <laughs> dives from uh, Space Station throughout. And, uh, showcasing what they can do with Psycho in the lineup uh, instead of Backbone, right? Yeah. And, and of course, the player of the match is Psycho. And uh, Jake, we were talking uh, in the green room how you know having Psycho for SSG is a big uh, plus for them because one you know death? you know having uh, a player that could disgusting. you know that could that's really good at one. playing oh Tracer and you know also as Echo as well. You said that that was a big plus for them, right? Yeah. So I think for Psycho into this roster, you look at like for instance the London roster, the last season of the Overwatch League. You know, I think they were always missing like a really just high aim skill flanker player uh, backbone and sparker i think can both sort of fill the flanker role but i don't think it's exactly their comfort zone or their strongest heroes where for psycho that's exactly his wheelhouse and then on top of that i think you got funny astro on the lucio who brings some of the strongest individual mechanics on the hero so compared to the past iterations of this roster i mean i think this space station lineup is the strongest we've seen from them right uh, and i think a dominant a dominant result like this is exactly what they needed to, to set themselves up for a future here in the lower bracket all right, Johnny. Telestration time. Show me that. Show me that bullying thing the that bullying? you're talking about. <laughs> All right. What so happened? 
It's actually, it's, it's Space Station playing this Echo Dive, and they're doing it quite beautifully. And especially here on Esperanza, when, you know, Dan is trying to play the Mauga composition. So I'll just highlight the compositions for you one more time. We obviously have a pretty stacked composition from Quick here. We play the Mauga, we want to utilize the Cardiac Overdrive. And we, you know, we want to teleport around using the Symmetra to really play more of a brawly kind of style. Whereas on the side of uh, Space Station, we got the Divers. So we can go ahead and play this out. We're kind of like skirmishing, it's the first fight here. And we're gonna see a pause when these, these kill feed kills come out here. We can see how this fight ends up. So right around here, we can pause here. We can see that there's actually three kills in the kill feed right here. And Quick Esports, you know, they're doing a pretty good job here. You got, you traded effectively, you got two picks, whereas uh, Space Station only secured the one. So, all right, great for us. Now we can go ahead and push this bot through, right? We can go ahead and play it out. But actually, Space Station, very cognizant of the situation. Well, like, okay. We're not gonna fight you anymore, we'll back off. And because we have more mobility, we're playing the Winston and Tracer. Wait, wait, wait a minute. We, we, we got a pick, right? Yeah, we got a pick onto the Symmetra. So, uh, wh why let's not go, let, let's go hunting. Hadi <laughs> leaps back towards the spawn, unsuspecting Symmetra right here. And well, you got a pincer attack, a Tracer and a Winston, pick up the Symmetra once more. So now, while uh, Space Station, they got their two spawners coming back. And once more, this is a different fight. Dane being isolated on the Symmetra, a clean dive from Psycho and Hadi just isolating the Symmetra, caught off on guard, unnoticed. And you know, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough game. It's a tough game if you're the Symmetra here. Just so coordinated <laughs> dive from the side of Space Station yeah. and they go ahead and clean it up. So finding different dive scenarios to get the man advantage in these fights. Yeah, I will say that the yeah. Sim is just so hard to execute. I think it can work, right? The Sim Mauga, it's all about TPing your team around, but I mean, who better than these guys to understand the strengths and weaknesses of a hero like Sim? They're very experienced using it themselves, and so they know how to punish it. They know what its flaws are as a hero. And you see when the Winston comes out, those dives, I mean, they're just brutally punishing by Space Station. Yeah, I mean, we're talking a lot of comps and a lot of this five head moves you know that's why we have a special interview set up uh to hear more from ssg we got coach christopher on the line to uh talk to us about what happened for this game all right christopher thank you so much for joining us on the interview big congratulations on getting the win uh i'm just gonna start off first of course you know your first match didn't really go as planned but you guys did get the win uh for the second match as well so as a coach you know like what do you how do you sort of rally up your team after uh having a tough loss like when when I guess your your players could be sort of like be on the down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I guess hopefully everyone on the team's experienced enough to kind of realize that if we lose this next game, then we're probably going to be like jobless in a, in a few weeks. So probably best to <laughs> suck up the tilt and really try for this one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you make a good point, right? I think something something about being having your back against the wall, at least yeah. as a veteran player, you know, it can kind of get people to lock in. Uh, I'm sort of curious compositionally. We saw you guys really force the Winston um, in this series. Is that, do you think that's the best comp or do you guys just really feel like this allows you to have the biggest skill gap on, on an opponent like Quick Esports? Um, I don't know, I think the problem we've got is, to be honest with you, our scrim results have been overwhelmingly successful. So I guess we kind of figured that most comps that we're playing are working um it feels like the winston is really reasonable i think that like the mauga can win but i think you have to you have to play it like pretty london style to be able to make it work um and it definitely has its weaknesses um so i don't know i think it's fine like i feel like the meta it's i mean that to be honest with you, the big problem we've got unsurprisingly is that we've had like 48 hours to figure out like the the specifics of the meta so i think no one can really like say with hand on heart they know what's like super viable right now yeah so obviously a hot fix not optimal when it comes to you know preparing for these conditions what were your what was your mindset this week preparing for the matches themselves when it comes to compositions were you trying a bunch of stuff out in scrims or were you thinking hey these are the compositions we practice the most let's just try to rely on them because you know they're a known quantity in that regard yeah, I think exactly what you just said. Like, I think my mentality was very much um, I would rather play comps where we have some sort of system and some sort of like we know how to play it. Um, you know, when we were in Swiss stage, we were pretty much like a dive one trick team, ironically. Um, and then the MAGA patch came out and we got really good at the MAGA. I like, never lost a scrim for a week. Um, so when when they nerfed my boy because of you, Jake, um, <laughs> then that was a Sorry, that, bro. <laughs> that was a that was a shame. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had to kind of uh, figure out maybe go back to the dive, maybe keep trying the MAGA. 
Yeah, so I'm curious, and one thing, one more thing I want to ask is about, you know, rosters you've worked with before, you know, a lot of these guys, obviously, you've coached before, but having Psycho and Funny Astro in the team now, what did they bring to the squad, and, and what do you see as sort of that unlocking for the team and, and your potential to, to go further, potentially, uh, in this bracket? Yeah, I think I think Psycho specifically, I think complements like Jamie's hero pool pretty well. Like I think the heroes that Jamie really good at are like the opposite of the heroes that Psycho is really good at. So I feel like it allows us to maybe be like a little bit less one tricky than we might have been in the past, you may have noticed. Um so I think that that kind of works. I mean Astro obviously I think is just like one of if not the best Lucio in the world and you know, we've always been a Lucio based team. So I think for him, he doesn't necessarily add anything new, just maybe better mechanics maybe all right anything else guys are you guys good no thank you very much all right no yeah right. christopher thank you so much for the insight and good luck moving forward all right see you guys later thank you so much all right everybody that was christopher coach christopher from ssg i love that guy if only I had the power to buff and nerf heroes out. <laughs> <laughs> I would wield it with the don't utmost give respect him the power. and responsibility. No, don't give no, it to him. No. Just, I think Jake, I think Jake has enough power already. Junkrat will have three tires. <laughs> <laughs> three tires? That's kind of how I thought about Reinhardt. I was just like, well, you gave him two fire strikes. Why can't we have two charges? Pin out, pin in, pin out. Yeah, and just give him everything. You give know? him a shield on his give back. Him, yeah. When you put away your shield and swing the hammer, it goes on <laughs> you your back. You put the shield on your back? <laughs> or, or, you you can, or you can no. attack with the now shield too. Cooking. Just punch attack people. Like bash. You like Brig, you get the Brig yeah. bash on Ryan. That would be terrifying. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're cooking going. too hard. Cooking. You can't get I don't get know where, us where we're going with this, uh, but yeah, we have to take a look at the up, updated uh, lower bracket. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket one more time. I, yeah. I, I, felt, I felt like in, in Christopher's voice, he was just like, he was so ready for revenge. Like now they're just on a war path in yeah, the lower bracket. Like mm -hmm. They don't care. Ex Oblivione, Peps, they don't care. They just want like a rematch uh, and, and, and play uh, NC Sports again. Yeah, I think they absolutely are going to want revenge. It's a bit of a longer journey for them, but now they get a, get a little respite, get a little rest for today. You know, back to the back to the practice board, get a little bit more reps on this new meta. You know, I think that'll be good for them. Uh, and Who maybe the next time they face ends, they'll have something cooked up. Just out of curiosity, who do you think SSG would rather face between the two? I honestly th don't think they care. They I, care. I think those they, both they do their are, own thing. No, are no pretty, I mean, I don't imagine anyone else can, either of them can really fight Space Station. Honestly, I don't see anyone else coming out of the lower bracket besides them. Of the three teams remaining, I think that's a, whoever, honestly, I think it'll be another 3 0 for Space Station, whoever comes up to face them. But they are, those teams are still playing for, for like yeah. the outcomes here do change points and prizing. So there's still a lot to fight for. And maybe I'm just totally wrong. I mean, obviously, those teams will have to go to the match and give it their all. I thought Space I think Station you're never wrong. does look angry. Space Station does look angry. <laughs> And they, they look really fearsome. And as Christopher was mentioning, they're definitely unlocked as a team now. Yeah. I'm um, not forced to like play just one style, one composition, a lot more options. And even if they are a Lucio one trick team, guess what? So is everybody else this meta. That hero is bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all just speculating. All these answers, all these questions are gonna be answered mm. uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for tomorrow's matches. And we've got our last EMEA match of the day. Elimination up next with Peps versus Oblivione. Don't go anywhere.
this energy is interesting. Very interesting. Methinks a cupid I shall play. What are you looking at? Keep moving forward. Welcome back, everybody. We are on to our last match of the day. Pets versus Oblivione. We're gonna move fast because the game's ready. We want to go into the game as fast as we can. So let's take a look at the roster for Oblivione first. Yeah, a few of these guys have really impressed me. Shockwave, you probably already know him. Been a very strong performer in the Overwatch League. But I think Cookie had an impressive performance on the Sojourn. And this team, even though they struggled in their last match, they did look pretty solid on the Winston comp, which very high skill comp. And I think definitely the option to force that into Team Peps. And I sort of wonder, like, will all roads lead to Winston? I think a lot of times these chaotic metas do end up closing out with a Winston. It's arguably the highest skill tank in the game, especially in a team play situation. So a uh, lot of opportunities, I think, here for EXO to stick with their comfort zone and take Team Peps all the way and, you know, maybe get another chance continuing on in this lower bracket. But for Peps, they choose for a different animal. They prefer the horse over the gorilla, Jake. Mm. They're going with the Orisa composition. I suspect, anyway, this team is built for one of these compositions we've been seeing. Mm. A Ben Best on this Orisa hybrid playing his long range hit scan while Naga flexes over between the Genji and the Tracer. So now in this series right here, I do think that Ben Best, if he can execute on this Orisa, this is something you should be pretty comfortable against if you're forced to face these Winston compositions, perhaps. So now it's all about execution. Can Peps? Overwhelmed, it's Oblivion playing this Orisa so the composition. Yeah, it'll be tough. I wonder what they will end up going with as we take a look at the map set. See, it is going to be Li Zhang Tower. Pretty stock standard here for EXO. Bans on Nepal and Samoa. So both teams open to Ilios. Both teams willing to take a dive matchup. So what that says to me could be an interesting way for the series to go. Definitely. And also, Peps picking again Midtown, like we saw mm -hmm. against East and C Sport. So it could be a comfort map for Midtown. Their defense was okay. I mean, they did get full hold yeah. on the attack, which can happen not. on Midtown. But the defense was not was too bad. bad not too shabby. Not yeah, too bad. I, I like what uh, what you said. Horse versus monkey. Who's gonna come on top? <laughs> Different animal. You know, is gorilla, it gonna, right? Is it gonna? Oh. He's a scientist. Thank you very much. No, gorilla, monkey. Hey, is, who's it gonna be? Horse or monkey? Let's uh, let's see what our casters think. Uh, Necra and Lemon. Is it the the monkey that's gonna win or the horse? <laughs> Well, it's no. like Year of the Dragon, so <laughs> I don't think either really Dragon? comes out on top here, if you want to be honest. Horse! Go <laughs> oh, horse, please! I'm a bit of a Winston hater these days, but... Whoa! Whoa! No! <laughs> Why? You just made Johnny upset cut him out. with cut, that one, actually. Cut the, cut the phone. <laughs> cut, cut the desk out. <laughs> I get to stick with my opinion. I hate Winston unless uh, Hottie's playing it. How about that? I fixed that statement, okay? Hey, um, yeah. I think Chase gives it a run for its money. I'm not gonna lie, I'm with the desk on this one. That I think that Chase's Winston like looked pretty good. Maybe it'll change oh, your yeah. mind. I love Chase on Romatra. And I think That's they're you. just <laughs> ex Oblivione. Uh, both these teams are very flexible, but I think ex Oblivione, like the desk said, can stick to their comforts. It's team peps that are still trying to figure out the meta. And you heard from coach Christopher um, from another team that it is difficult for all coaches, all teams, to come fresh out of a patch to figure out what works for them. That's so real though, because when we saw the Malga reversion happen, that's where the panic started to ensue. It was like 48 hours before we started our very first day of the OWCS main stage. And there's a lot on the line for these teams. There's a prize pool, there's circuit points, there's glory and honor and whatever the rest Just of the 
Reinhardt line is, <laughs> because I can't remember it right now, but it's all there for these teams to take. And what I expect coming into this is going to be living up to your point, Jen, is that with the flexibility, we will potentially see a lot of hero roulette. If you know, like mystery <laughs> heroes may come back to fruition, both ex Oblivione and Team Peps have not been too shy to make those adaptations when they feel like something isn't working, and they're quick to pull the trigger on that. So expect to see that coming through here, is it's actually going to be Ben Best that's going to play the Winston and Chase on the Arisa. Yeah, Winston can be a little tough on this point because if you do want to take the fight on the point, Ex Oblivion could just play Dojo, rotate to the point, and it's a very small space. There's a ceiling. It's less Winston friendly, but if the fight takes out takes place out in the open, this could favor Team Peps, and this could be where Hybrid Naga can go for dives at different angles. It's all about how Team Peps coordinate, and that's what matters at the end of the day. That's not what you play; it's how you play it, and well. Team Peps are playing that damn well. They already picked up two kills and they're gonna cap the point. And they took out Cookie first, which I think is a really big key to success for this matchup. Cookie looked so good on the sojourn yesterday, being able to contend with the likes of Quartz for our team of Twisted Minds, waiting in the winner final already to be able to have that shot at moving on to the Grands. And I think that's really impressive for a sojourn to be able to get the better of a DPS that has had so much success on their shoulders so far. So Cookie here to slay the competition right now, see if he can do that. Yeah, he did. Cookie did so well against Quartz. Exactly so right. The shockwave not doing so well right now. <laughs> and Cookie ate a lot of nades from that echo. A team Peps have a pretty fire start so far. After a day yesterday that seemed like they struggled and they swapped to different things and no one looked comfortable, but they look confident right now. Team Peps look great playing able to play this dive. Naga as well, being able to play one of his signature heroes feels so comfortable and so nostalgic to be able to watch. The Echo is so fluid, has been able to get the better of even the hitscan hero that you generally see as a good counter to some of those more aerial-centric DPS. And that's what I mean, Arissa bullies Winston out of bubble, and that's why Arissa is so good. That wall had it coming, and Hybrid's gonna finish out Bunny started with the backhand, and Naga duplicated a Lucio, so double the speed, double the fun, question mark, and at least one sound barrier uh, goes off, but that's from the OG, that's from FD God. Terra's surge is big and crushes two in the dirt, and Axo will see signs of life. Okay, I mean, Terra Surge pop-off, we also like to see those. It's a horse moment here for the Arisa. <laughs> Team Horse. <laughs> hey, but you, you've got a lot of fights ahead of you if you want to be able to take this first round. Cookie does have the overclock. It's a little bit easier to play these angles when you are playing from this defensive position. You've got Dojo, you've got the bridge, you've got a lot of different places that you're able to take those angles if you are uh, from this capture point. So. Pay attention to where Naga goes and where Cookie tries to get the top to crumple. Ooh, maybe trying to force the the teleport out of that Kiriko. Doesn't work out, and Cookie is overclocking, and everyone from Team, Team Peps is looking at him, but Cookie turns them into dough, and Team Peps fall over. And with that fight win, Exo may be able to tie things up soon. Yeah, a quick reset there from Ben Best and Cronus means that the Team Peps does get a really quick re-engagement here, but it's a big switch up. Hybrid and Naga are actually going to go over to the Sojourn and the Tracer as well, so want to contend a little bit better with Cookie and Shockwave playing the same heroes, but they've got some ultimate disadvantage here that's going to make this a little bit tough outside of just going in with good mechanical skill. Team Peps just scouting for a good position to dive on. And while that setup goes through, Shockwave has a pulse, could go for the flank, and uh, misses it. That bubble, what? <laughs> it splashed onto Cronus and originally hit the Winston bubble, and Shockwave is on a tear. Team Peps know they can't reset, they gotta be in Dojo, they're fighting with everything they can, but they have nothing to work with, and nobody to work with. Man, Shockwave is like wall gliding, that's when you know Things are not looking good for Team Peps, but it was a strong start for them. But the retake and the defense from EXO was just that good. 100 to 70 ends in favor of EXO. 
was looking so good for Team Peps at the beginning, too. The dive was so clean. Being able to play from that power position around Dojo made it easier to be able to get the jump on the likes of Cookie playing that sojourn. But once it's Oblivione figured it out, if you take control of that point, Orisa, that's really where she gets to shine, you know? Yeah, Chase can be that reliable anchor that doesn't have to give up space. It's when you run a Winston, you play this dance of jumping in, depending on how much pressure, jumping out. And if you have primal, you keep going in. It's a lot more difficult macro-wise to coordinate around that. And what the comms are like when uh, there is an echo diving, Tracer getting people low, and Ben Best making calls. Team Peps have to be organized with these pushes, and things are going to be a lot easier now that you're on a Reinhardt with a May. Naga did such a good job of enabling <laughs> Ben Best on this the yesterday on Flashpoint, and the teleporter right on the point, the May wall! Oh, it's disgusting! Team Petzl got a heavy stun, so they lost their main tank in the process. So it's not unwinnable by EXO, but Chase has to go Giga Chat mode in order to save this, and uh, it's not looking likely. No, you do get a little bit of the lifesteal there as you hit the cardiac overdrive to at least escape. So it gives Exoplivione a really quick re-engage here as Ben Best is also able to make his way back to the point. But that was so funny seeing both of the teleporters hit the windows and then they drop on top of each other. <laughs> but Naga playing the May, what a great way to be able to give a little bit more space to this Reinhardt to get those fire strikes and those pins. And Ben Best is confident. He's comfortable on this hero. And this is shield's about to break and he's gonna kick them in the face and kneecapped right in front of the whole family. And he was getting so close too, and he had a coalescence behind him. Team Peps torn apart, and Exo gets to take the point. Reinhardt did get a little bit of a buff, so the hammer damage is going to do a little bit more when you swing, as well as just being able to get a little bit more fire strike damage. But where this hero is going to struggle is if you're forcing this Reinhardt to just have to hold the shield. And then you're not able to dish out that extra damage, and you also just leave your rest, kind of the rest of the team vulnerable when this Malga is just going to continue to mow you down. Ooh. Teleport Blizzard play? Teleport... Mess Go things up, Lee. Do it. Mess them up, not mess things up. That's not a negative, but oh, cage fight. Uh, team Peps needed to set up, but they're gonna use the photon bear to protect themselves during the brawl in the shutter. Catches the last bit of chase. Crispy saves him with the sound bear, but that was only temporary, because uh, yeah, Ben Best doing his Thomas the uh, the train Thomas engine. The tank, engine. <laughs> the tank engine. I was like, what kind of train was it again? I didn't have a childhood, clearly, but I'm yeah, not gonna lie great. though. Tank doesn't make any sense when we think about Thomas. It's like it's a train. He he is a train. I I don't I don't get it. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. But you saw the power of the Reinhardt there when he's able to just go in and cleave away with the hammer. So much damage with the fire strike as well. It's already going to be forty percent to another Earth Shatter. Oh, at least he charges back towards his team and Naga. Is such a good. May. It's giving it's giving backbone. This is giving London Spitfire <laughs> vibes a little bit. I don't want to insult anybody, but I'm getting good vibes out of this comp, but this could really only exist on this map. The desk talked about how much they hate Reinhardt. We all have our opinions on what heroes we hate, but Team Pets are actually surging forward to catch Ex Oblivione lacking, and they have to fire back with a Kutsune rush. It's 83 plus percent, but Shockwave is back capping, so he buys oh. even more time for Axo to come out of spawn. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it, please! Hey, look, you can't even like <laughs> continue to uh, stall at the point a little bit, but it's last fight, and Exoplivione, that back cap actually really helped there to be able to go in as a full team of five for this final engagement. They've got nothing, though. Benvis is gonna have another Earth Shatter here as long as he doesn't get taken out now. But the shield is getting depleted very quickly. May buying so much time. What a read from Ben Best. One swing away, has the shatter. No one can protect Exo, but a primal rage from Chase could throw Team Peps off the map. Cronus isn't there, but the sound bear from Team Peps bought enough health for the team to play off the blizzard from Naga and for Team Peps to finish the job. But Exo still have Chase rummaging around, forcing Naga out of ice block. And now all the attention is on Chase, Team Peps use their ults really well. Now they just have to go deal with the last three of Exo. But there's a sound here from Crispy. So this is going to take some time to get through. Crispy pops it. Shockwave has the pulse. Suzu is out from Cronus. You don't even need the bomb. 
but depends how long Team Peps are going to take to leave this because Exo have already flipped, so they're benefiting from this. Yeah, they do have to leave now. Benbest didn't hit the Earth Shatter, so that's a good engagement tool. Benbest wants to go in with that. Cronus is going to switch back over to the Moira, so you have a little bit more sustain and point presence outside of that Baptiste. So Team Peps, they, they have a, they've really set themselves up for success here. 99%, one more fight teleporter in. Let's hit the Shatter. Okay, the, the fade out of the Shatter. Or no, that was Cronus just helping out the team either way cookie just fragged three and exo may just do the comeback it's 85 plus and they could push up and take space and make the touch even more difficult but t-peps are also changing heroes right now they only got a few more seconds and you stop the rollout out of fd god and you kill him but someone else made it to the point i think oh that's actually one of the tanks and hybrid will be next to touch the point and you really thought Team Peps were gonna dominate with this Reinhardt composition, but Axel, once they take the point, it feels impossible to get it back. And Cookie is alive and well, and Axo will finish off Li Zhang Tower in style. Reinhardt looks so good there too, but Team Peps, they get so far in each of these rounds of Li Zhang, and they aren't able to convert it over to an actual round win. Ex Oblivione, maybe it takes them a little bit to figure out, okay, but what are Team Peps gonna go for? But that's what this match is going to be all about. Both of these teams playing to that flexibility, bringing so many different compositions, and you have to figure out how to respond to that. It's gonna be really fun to watch what new heroes they're gonna come out with next on both sides. Yeah, it's such a chaotic game type that, that favored Team Peps for so long until Axo just built up enough ultimates, made the swaps, and were just a lot more aware of Ben Best's shatter plays and got around to Naga and forced a Team Peps off their game a little bit. So uh, a great clutch at the end for um, Ex Oblivione, who will go up in our series. But it's cool to see that Team Peps can hang because I think the consensus was that EXO were heavily favored in this match. Uh, and Team Peps, they struggled against Sheer Cold. That was a game five. They got uh, crushed against Ents. So the hopes were low from Team Peps, but I think they did so much work to get back on that horse, the metaphorical horse. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, the stats aren't helping them either, right? If we take a look at the KD ratio for the matches that Team Peps have played, they have the lowest KD out of all eight teams that made it to this final main stage event. It's going to be 2.32 across the board here for the team. And it doesn't bode well if you have that type of differential playing against the teams that you have, right? So Team Peps, I think they are coming in as the underdog in the series. They are still about par for the course when it comes to the average KDA so far, but they have held their own. Being able to get that 70% on the first round, being able to get 99 and bringing it close on market means that they do have a ton of inspiration there in order to go into the rest of this match. And now that we're going outside of control on payload and push maps, there's more downtime between fights where you can really have some good fight planning. You can stay more composed and it's less hectic decision making. And maybe this could favor a team like EXO. We go to Midtown, which was selected by Peps. And the desk talked about this already, where their defense was, quote, not too shabby, but got full held. So we'll see uh, kind of what lessons they took from that. This is one of Team Pep's favorite maps. And I only say this because they played it basically every series and they've picked it basically every series that uh, they have played in OWCS groups and main events so far. So hopefully that is gonna give them the confidence to be able to make a good decision here, but only one way to find out. And that's gonna be after this short break.
It's time for Midtown. This was chosen by Peps and their defense was pretty good. They might like this map, but can they win it? <laughs> oh, it's it's one of those other I think it's one of those other moments where you take a look at their match yesterday. Gotta call out the fact that they did get full held on their map choice. And take it with a grain of salt, right? Because I think that there is so much merit there to why they're playing this. Ben Best is very good at Orisa. You can also bring out the Doomfist. You could also just bring out the Winston if you want to. I don't think the Reinhardt works as well on this map, but I think there's a lot of ways that Team Peps can work around the architecture and their strengths. And that's why we see this Midtown map getting picked. I mean, look at that. It's going to be the Orisa to come out of spawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I just wanted to do a quick shout out to the ex Oblivione stream. I know they are bringing on a lot of good friends oh, yeah. of mine and a lot of awesome talent to either do a co-stream vibe, a bit of casting vibes, and covering all of ex Oblivione's matches, whether it's uh, on broadcast or not. So shout out to the gang over there. And of course, Team Pebs, who are even exploring other titles. It's cool to see kind of the brand that uh, Fefe uh, created continue to live on <laughs> for so long. I mean, it, it even showed up in, in Pokemon. Team Pep's yeah. had a Pokemon Unite team for 2023, where they went to the European International Championships and the World Championships under that banner. So it has been very cool to see all of these organizations branch out into different avenues of esports. But this match ahead of them is still going to be very tough if you're Team Peps. They've got to show up here on the defense, maybe even get a full hold against Ex Oblivione, but that's Ooh. a bad start. Ooh, Naga on the flank. I think had FD God and Chromis with them, so at least Cloud being able to get that trade gives a chance for Exo to keep going. Axo made their way through the bridge and they see that Orisa behind, so this is the perfect time to push towards the point. Yes, Ben Best is safe, and, but he doesn't have Cronus, so he's gonna be chunked down at the later stages of this fight, where Axo will easily be able to get one or two ticks. Maybe there's a recontest um, available from Team Peps, but with how disjointed they are right now, not likely. No, I don't think so. You have to set up on the high ground here, because if you go in, you get staggered. If the whole team isn't with you, that is just disastrous. So you will see this high ground set up from Team Peps, and as long as you're able to hold it here, then you feel really good about being able to give some space to hybrid on this sojourn. Maybe try to work up to that overclock, but Cookie is way closer with how many frags he's getting so far. Cookie has looked good against Quartz and some of the best um, that this region has to offer and continues to deliver. And I think Hybrid didn't get his time in the spotlight, having to go up against the final boss of Kai. So this is a Sojourn matchup I'm really excited to see. And I say that over the two Arisa shooting each other forever. <laughs> but Ben Bess is doing a good job of playing forward so he could test the card. He doesn't let this get away. And Exo have Chase in very, very low health. And that Kitsune Rush came out too late. Ooh, Naga is sick with the flanks and axo fumble uh it's i i wouldn't have used the kitsune rush there i see the principle behind it of you could win the fight at the diff disadvantage at the very least you're maybe pushing team peps back but you're still getting some card progress here if you're ex oblivione just because you did take out some members of team peps you are forcing them to regroup right now so may as well sneak whatever card progress you can god's gonna get away with a lot Oh man, Ex Oblivione trying to escape after the Kitsune Rush trigger was pulled, then Exo just get full wipe basically after that. But yeah, the Tracers have a pretty important role on payload maps to keep escorting this forward. The fact that Cloud got this past the bridge and forced <laughs> Naga to come back and deal with him. Now Exo are within one solid fight win before getting B. I thought you were gonna say they have an important role of back capping these people. That too! <laughs> Not here and not today, also says Ben Best. Great Terra Surge. He does not care about this pulse bomb. He's on the ducky skid, and you're in his pond, and this is his turf until, well, Crispy and friends had something to say about it. Axo can finally leave spawn. Team Peps maybe bit off more than they could chew, but it, it was cool to see. I like the aggression that Team Peps is bringing forward to these matches. I don't think, oh, we didn't see a touch. I was so very close. Yeah, it was, is important. 
Yeah, Crispy and Cloud just getting additional progress even as the fight was just ending. This is down to the wire. T Peps hybrid overclock trying to hide from a Lucio coming after him. So hybrid well protected catches that carry coach jumping up and not as critical. Exo may not have the resources, but I guess they got the kills and that's all that matters. Cloud gets two before being shut down, but the point has been capped. Point captured, uh, not moving forward quite yet, but that does allow some valuable time here for Team Peps to, once again, regroup, find their footing, figure out where they want to stabilize this defense. And, and Hybrid's still getting good picks. Like, that was, what, three, two, three kills in that f in the final point of, of, of B, so going pretty aggressively against Cookie, and you've got to be able to do that in a matchup like this. Gotta clutch up as much as you can when it matters the most. And this next push could be it, it all. Three and a half minutes. If the, if the EXO can complete this, this would be out of hand. But it could do a rush from Cronus. Assist the team to run chase over. Who goes for the terror search just to get the fortify and the extra damage mitigation to at least take FD God with him. So a smart but risky play out of chase. And those extra kills is what gave EXO the edge, and they still have people to push this cart. They do, but Hybrid's sticking down a couple of members left and right. Nile is in a world of hurt right there, as we do see uh, a bit of a tussle between himself and Naga. Uh, team Peps, they are able to re-fortify re here as a team of five. Uh, but Hybrid, as long as you can get some overclocks down, maybe you do keep Ex Oblivione from full pushing. Ooh. I think a pulse from Cloud just got thrown to Hybrid and Cronus had a great Suzu. We got just to see the last frame of it. And then Hybrid had an overclock. We didn't see it. We heard it. Didn't happen much in the kill feed. And that's one less thing that EXO have to worry about. Kitsune rush. FD God has to be ready with the sound barrier. And yeah, they're hoping to disengage, but Bedbez was too far away from spawn. So FD God is forced to use a sound barrier. If they lose this fight, the, the defense, it's over. And team Peps just have to play their lives for respawns to come back. And Cookie has the overclock ready as they're coming out of spawn. They didn't see it coming. Oh, you can't defend against something you can't see. Cookie on his high ground, on his high horse, and Ben Best is gonna contest. Has the terror surge to fortify the extra damage mitigation for the extra few seconds that Team Peps can take off this time bank. And that'll be all she wrote. Ex Oblivione will be locking in a minute 38. Not too shabby, too. That third point can be notoriously difficult for the attacking team to get through. So the fact that you're able to finish out the map, even with some, like, a good chunk of change there, too. That's a that's ultimates coming online when you look at a minute and 38 left to go. Uh, but Team Peps now, they're, they're on the attack. A uh, pretty good defense, but it's... This is where they faltered the last time we saw them on this map, was their attack push. Oh yeah, they don't want to remember that. <laughs> and the best part was their defense and a minute 38 is a really solid time bank to work mm -hmm. with. EXO went into point C with around three minutes. So the glass half full uh, vision of this is Team Peps, you know, divided that in half. And how will their offense go? At least you're not dealing, you know, the reason why they got full held against Ents. There's one syllable, one word, it's Kai. And maybe um, Cookie and Hybrid will have a closer matchup to give Team Peps just that first pick to get through this. The most difficult part is this main choke. Yeah, and, and with the how Axe Oblivione have been playing this too, uh, as we've seen them on, on Midtown, it's like a Cookie on the Sojourn can lock down either the subway rail car. Laundry is a pretty pretty well-picked spot to make the rotation if you are the attacking team and that's how team peps has typically tried to engage on that first point so if cookie can lock them down with no shield available here for the Arisa either you just have the spear spin there to try to get your players across they could try to also just walk forward but you're walking into such a long line of fire and a cross pincer as well oh from there's a skirmish 
<laughs> in laundry. Lucio Tracer versus Lucio Tracer. Here he gets involved if needed, but you need to pay attention to your Orisa. And we talked about this when we casted Ben Best last time. He's kind of left on his own. The flankers leave him. But now there's a lot more support for that front line. And now it's starting to dwindle because Ax Oblivione just pumped the damage into them. And the defense holds on for Axo for now. Good first attempt, though, by Team Peps. They took that rotation really quickly as well, almost able to get a lockdown onto Crispy in that laundry room. But it's going to be another drawing board step here. Team Peps, I don't know if going through... Uh, like You could go through laundry, that, it, since that's the classic, but I wonder if there's any merit to trying to go through the rail car to take away that high ground. Maybe uh, XO are thinking about it. They're stomping up there. I like that Naga is exploring the flank. Goes up against Cloud and wow, the blink and the backhand plus the Lucio Cheerios that came in. Naga got bested in that moment. Needs FD God support, but I think he's trying to get ready for a sound barrier push. And Naga's gonna swap Ooh. to the Genji to try and maybe just brawl this front to back a bit better. This was a hero he was known for for a long time. We saw Kepster pick up the Genji yesterday as well in their main event match, so maybe this is the way that you can close the gap here onto the back line. That's exactly what they want to do. The sound barrier push by Team Peps. They make their way to the point, but Ex Oblivione have the same ult, and they're still trying to reestablish themselves, and Cookie won't have time or the hell to use that overclock. And Crispy did his best uh, to help him out. Team Peps are rallying towards the point, so let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, yeah, okay. Are you okay, nice. Can live? Nice. Can you awesome back? I'm gonna walk out with my own. Can you guys go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. Live, live, live. We can kill soon after. He'll be high. Okay, okay. Place to I've got a flank. I'm, uh, uh, I'm pushing left side. I'm pushing left side. Come on, Okay. I'm going back. Full reset. Find the host. Next yeah. turn, we have they're, to. They're gonna push. We, we need to go soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If the walk up, we go. We, we, we good. We good. We good for now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sojourn close. Sojourn close. Sojourn close. He's one. He's one. He's one. He's one. Okay, can you walk in? Can we go Three, for Sojourn? Three, two, one. Going now. Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh, Isano. 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 We need to go back line for the boss. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit now. Push, push, push. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. This one. Yeah. This you. Yeah. This you. One. This you. I'm one, I'm one, I'm one. 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 I'm one, I'm but Team Peps, they just keep supplementing their forces. They make it weakened, but they will never go down. So Team Peps take the point. Oh, Ooh. Todd caught him. Ouch. <laughs> Spear fishing over here. Yikes. Uh, well, I still am waiting for the content. Masa content, I ice fishing. Oh, I'm still oh, thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it still. But that was a great take here for Team Peps. It was coming down to the wire. They had 30 seconds remaining to be able to actually unlock this payload and get it going. But I love being able to hear their comms, just how they had to switch things up as we saw that burst healing come through every single time. But they made it work now, and they are able to keep on going, keep on trucking. Trucking away. And who's ready to get hit is Exo because this Naga Blade plus Sound Barrier could be a deadly combination. Crispy has to be on it with this Sound Barrier. Cloud is hoping to stop the fight before it begins with the Pulse Bomb, but it's too late. Cronus could do a rush. Naga holds on to the barrier, waits for that Sound Barrier of Crispy to be gone. Cloud has his impact known and Best Best Slam Dunks with a Terra Surge, but oh, sorry, that was Chase's Terra Surge. Either way, a great clutch up once again by Ex Oblivione and FD God and Naga didn't get to sync up on that combo. Uh, they just they just had such good responses to what Team Peps threw at them. The sound barrier to respond to the Kisune rush from Cronus. They had the pulse bomb that eventually ended up getting a pick there after you landed it onto Ben Best, I want to say. And just time and time again, I think Ex Oblivione has come out on top in terms of their ultimate value. Uh, so now, no Blade, Naga's back on the Tracer. Sound Bearer now for potentially an aggressive engage. And Cloud's Pulse Bomb was so good on Cronus. 
ADC now hybrid with the overclock forcing Exo to disengage off of bridge. And this is a power position for Sojourns, but Exo faked. They're actually wrapping back around right into the loving arms of this time. It is Ben Best Terra Surge combined with the sound bear just to make sure he could fully charge it. Put a big dent into X Oblivione and their forces are pretty cut in half. So Team Peps will get ahead and push the cart forward. Pushing the card forward, one more recontest though for Ex Oblivione, and they have the overclock from Cookie to do it. This could be the final attempt that Team Peps has to get this payload to the end of the second objective. So watch out for Cookie. Where does this overclock go? Can he lock down this high ground? Okay, Cookie overclock. Oh, the Lucio's riding up, and he'll keep ascending after that. And Cookie just has to chunk down that leftover sound bear, I think it was, or Team Peps. Good disengage. Uh, Team Peps have a few more. Wait, the sides are swast. <laughs> oh, look, the defense <laughs> is pushing the car backwards. <laughs> that would be a fun game mode. Uh, Katsune rush from Team Peps now that they're on the right side. And Terra Surge can't chunk through at all. But a Suzu keeps Chase alive. But X Oblivione are not healthy whatsoever. Team Peps just unifying for the final time on point B. We'll go forward at a time bank disadvantage. Huge time bank disadvantage, though, because they have zero seconds left in this time bank. By the time that they end up capturing that third objective, they don't get another opportunity. It's just drawable at this point for them. So they've got to do this with at least a second remaining. But where's the momentum? They've got this terror surge from Benfes coming online, hybrid with the overclock as well. Hopefully will be enough to just get through this final defensive stronghold here that Ex Oblivione have close to their spawns. Looking at the position of hybrid, it's got an overclock. This could be a long range, good place to take these alternate angles. And he does a good job of forcing Axo back, but they retaliate with a Kitsune rush. And hybrid slides out just in time. And Chase doesn't want to extend around that corner. So it's a good stalemate, but it becomes, uh, it comes down to these Sojourn picks. And Cookie gives Axo the edge to force a full reset out of Team Pets. And now this is the problem situation we were alluding to which is 10 seconds where's the cart staggers are coming through yeah. it doesn't look like it's going to be a completion fd god has to use a sound barrier to at least give them a fighting chance to get back to the cart and touch oh fd god but god boosts oh and they realized too late that naga died and that he wasn't going to be able to stall the cart oh but you know you had to go for that barrier at the end just uh got shut down on his way there no, it, 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 you just have to. And uh, it's, uh, too, it's too bad that it wasn't enough sustainability to get to the cart there. A little bit of keep away from the Lucios, but that's going to be Team Exo now. Up two maps. This, mm -hmm. is, this could be the closer, but Team Peps made that close. They made that close. The defense looked good. They were able to break through the defense on point A and B, just not able to close it out on that final point. So drawable wasn't winnable at the end of the day, but <laughs> they, they had the opportunity to. Got me hey, excited with drawing time. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, once again. Oh, what would you draw? A ducky. Dude, I love that Arissa skin. It's really cool. Oh, I don't know if it's still in the shop, but I think I missed it. And there's so many skins that I want. Uh, and Ben Best, well, he died with it, but at least look cute doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's all that matters. Looking cute, yeah. Looking that's cute, all. showing off your verified owl player Ooh. spray. That's the best BM ever, though. <laughs> Everyone that has that spray is the true flex, because not... I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think everybody in OWCS has been in the Overwatch League, so... No. You got kind of that shiny sticker <laughs> you get to show off. Yeah, is, is that like the... Like the threat, like the... The flex, uh, yeah. <laughs> the threat flex. <laughs> you are playing against an Overwatch League player. I, I would totally me. flex that. Um, I thought, yeah, that got close. I mean, Team Peps didn't get full held, so that was already different. And they felt more comfortable putting Naga on uh, Genji, which allowed them to just all play together. The Dragon Blades were hard to combo, though, and Exo were just better. So... Exo on match point, feeling great. One map away from going up against SSG in the lower bracket semifinal. But before we get there, we're going to see you after this break.
Victory is at hand. Interesting. Very interesting. A cupid I shall play. What are you looking at? Keep moving forward. Best of luck to you all. It's match point for Ex Oblivione as they make their push, potential push to the semifinal up next. And guess what? We got push next, and this is their map choice. Map choice. Well, you know, I, I'm now starting to think like, is it map choice or is it is it map map <laughs> like it's pushed and you have two of them. I'm excited for, for some of the new maps we're gonna get with the season 10. I'm really looking forward to that, but Focusing on the match that we've got at hand, we do have a bit of a sub here for Ex Oblivione. Shockwave now going to be coming into the roster to get some extra play time as Cookie comes out. Uh, it's a, it, it's a, this has always been a kind of an interesting decision for Ex Oblivione to make is like, when do you play Cookie? When do you play Shockwave? And my understanding has been that like, well, Cookie's shown us what they're able to do on the Sojourn. That is no secret that Cookie is a great Sojourn player, but Shockwave, as we have been able to see not only during his time in EMEA Contenders, but as well as in the Overwatch League, he plays more than just the Sojourn. And so that does allow this team to have some flexibility when coming into maps like this, where you might see like a Mauga come out from Team Peps and you might have to switch up what you're playing. Yeah, that's a great point. Shockwave's flexibility, you can commend it. And, you know, we'll crunch, we'll have someone smarter just crunch all the stats as to who really is better Sojourn between <laughs> Cookie and Shockwave. But Esperanza is just so known to be a good rush map. You don't get to see Winston's too often unless it's Hottie. So we got the Ben Best versus Chase on that. And Naga's going to stick to the Echo, which is pretty cool. I love the echo choice from Naga. It was very impactful when we said it saw, saw it on Lijong Tower. And now you also have the ability to contend with Shockwave, who, who might just be focused on different things as well on this sojourn if you look at play style differences. That could give a little bit of breathing room there to Naga to be able to get some big pop shots there onto Shockwave, already landing the sticky bombs just to help soften him up a little bit. Yeah, and I like that bubble from Chase to protect his team when Team Pep started pushing forward. So Chase seems like that really selfless tank that isn't taking big risks. And Team Peps land right on top of that bridge. 
and pressure that important high ground because that's where Shockwave is going to want to be safe and sound and away from all this action as much as possible. But Team Pep's playing really well together. Cloud is low, forced to recall, and he may become a target. Crispy is there for the boops, and Chase puts down the bubble again to establish some sort of space that Exo can work with. So far, it's 17 meters. We got a Katsune rush out of Cronus. He's going to throw it down now to hopefully save Ben Best and does an amazing job of doing so. Ben Best can still live, so the fight is still going. And Team Peps push the cart forward. Exo ready to emerge with their own Katsune rush. And Team Peps hoping to respect this. FD God has the sound barrier, and the dupe has been used by Naga. And Exo Oblivione are not gonna pop their Katsune rush until Team Peps are out in the open. The trigger's been pulled. Chase dies 5% away from the Primal Rage. So Exo play at a huge disadvantage because of that sound barrier too from FD God. Team Peps with a clean team wipe will extend their lead even more. And Crispy wasn't able to respond with a sound barrier of his own. So while you do have that for the next fight, Team Peps are going to be walking away with a ton of progress here. And we did see how powerful this dive could be on the Zhang Tower. And one of the reasons why it was so successful is that Team Peps, as a team, has really started to figure out their flow. Being able to play these different types of compositions means that they have a different understanding of each other. There is a bit of a touch that comes through, but not before FD God. They're able to just get a huge leg up here for Team Peps. Yeah, that was strange. <laughs> when Lucios get to travel around and be little demons like that, it's, it's getting pretty sketchy. Exo, just nobody is safe. Shockwave would like to be safe so he can actually start shooting things, but Team Peps are all over him all the time. And Chase, yeah, he can go in this deep because he has Primal and he'll have extra jumps to get back to the team. And wow, he manages to catch Hybrid while he was low without blinks. So ends up being a super valuable Primal Rage. Uh, and then Bess is going to match it too, but after you've already traded your backline here, if you are ex Vione, just uh, you just kind of keep the ball rolling. So now they've got control. Pink Peps did not get a chance to get that first objective unlocked. So take this high ground, Shockwave with the overclock, kind of ready to let that rip, but we're also looking at the sound barrier from Crispy that, uh, that still is in the back pocket. Yeah, XO with this bridge control could even just overclock first, but it depends. Team Peps could jump on him immediately. So a lot of options and really it's Team Peps that are having their hand forced and Hybrid is forced to sleep permanently <laughs> after that one. Great shot by Shockwave and XO. They want more and Cloud throws the pulse bomb in the middle of a bunch of people. Team Peps disengaging as much as they can and the cart progresses more forward actually we're close to tying things up very close to tying things up but team peps are not out of this yet they've got a kitsune rush they can lay over the point and that's what they're gonna do oh cronus yeah kitsune rush but fd god got low i thought he was gonna use barrier but now you don't even need to especially with the dupe the best spin naga and hybrid going off as a team oh sorry that's a kitsune or a Kiriko dupe. Either way, Team Peps, pretty good economy in terms of their ultimates. They'll get that forward spawn, and Exo will have to reset. They have a big reset there, too, and Team Peps being able to take back control of that bot just before Ex Oblivione gets that meterage lead. They're feeling really good about that one. Still with alts in the bank. Another primal rage ben best can try this again to go contend with chases as well uh, it's all about trading back lines here can crispy or fd god come in to save the day with these sound barriers yeah the one edge that exo has to work with is playing around this corner they have some shelter they have cover they just want to prevent hybrid going through a flank through the rooms and as the dive initiated from Chase. They smashed down Naga. Ben Best has already had his primal use. So Exo are gonna use a sound bear just to supplement themselves and fight for bot control, which is going pretty back and forth. Exo managed to get it back and Team Peps reset. The team Peps coming back into this. Uh, they're gonna get staggered too as Hybrid gets found out. Naga barely able to escape with his life there as well. So this should be a big lead getting taken here by Exo. They do get the point captured as well. And with this 
with this primal rage, just pushing everybody back to try to take this control before a contest comes through the peps. Yeah, Chase used the primal, but Cronus still had teleports, so he got out scot free. Sound barrier from FD God as the re-engage ensues by Team Peps, but the disengage from Max Oblivione is just that good, and you gotta think someone like Crispy that knows when to make that call, but Exo are coming from different angles, they're ready to crunch down on Team Peps, and it will be a Katsune Rush exchange, and there it is, Cloud has the pulse, Naga with the dupe, but the bot keeps getting stolen, so everyone's <laughs> having their focus kind of divided on what is the priority here. Yeah, but this, uh, this focus might actually go the way of Team Peps, the duplicate's not able to get used, though, so it's gonna be yet another big tussle over this point. Except Livione still have yet to be able to take control as Kybert's just gonna try to play Keep Away. We even see FD God coming in for the touch before it eventually goes the way of Exoblivione now taking that control. They have more reinforcements available as well. So we're at sub three minute territory to finish out this push map, but it's so close, Jen. I could go either way, depending on how these ultimates shake out. This has been much better showing out of Team Peps. This is so close, but Ex Oblivione have the lead for now, and you have Shockwave using the overclock. I thought it was going to be on the high ground, but he uses the jump to force Naga out of this Tracer dupe. You do not want to build towards that pulse bomb, but Naga was able to blink away and get to safety. And oh, wow, I'm surprised that did not stick to Shockwave. That was inches away, and that could have been the edge to Team Peps. But Ex Oblivione still have everyone alive and well, and the pot is... Well, still going forward, Team Pets. I thought they stole it again, but it's right where it's supposed to be. Ex Oblivione running out of gas, relying on crispy sound barrier to extend the fight. It didn't come in time, so Team Pep stopped this from hemorrhaging. But there's still two minutes left. Team Peps also don't have too, too big of a differential here. So it, you could you win like two fights, and you're feeling really good about being able to take back control. The only problem is the ultimate economy. Uh, except with Yone, have four alts to work with. The Kitsune Rush is just such a good initiator. Uh, but the South Bear too might have to get popped here by FD God to give Peps a fighting chance. And Kastune rushes. These fights have been so crazy and fast. I'm surprised Shockwave even has time to shoot anything. And maybe he does it because getting through that overhealth of the sound bear is just too much. Team Peps didn't even drop a single body there. And they need every fight they can take because they're still down 41 meters. One minute to go, though. So that's one team fight out of the way. You get some progress here. One more team fight stands in between Team Peps and being able to take back control, take this map, and bring us to a map four. All eyes right now are going to be on Naga. Can you get anything done with this duplicate? Cronus goes down there with the rush. That is so Cronus bad. Don't have teleport. Chase jumped on him, and I fully expected Cronus to be able to live, and I think he did too, and it didn't work. And they were relying on that Kitsune rush, and smart of Peps to not use any ultimates, but maybe you should have, because 37 seconds, they are just going to bank on the guaranteed fight, but this is a long journey ahead of Team Peps to come back. They still have to win those two fights now. That's a big setback with the loss of this fight. So one more fight here after Ex Oblivione. Get those forward spawns as well. And you got to win this one and the next to be able to make this into a map for Team Peps. Show us what you got. Got to use this rush. Ex Oblivione. They're in the driver's seat, they're in control, and Team Peps through the Kitsune rush, and Naga with the dupe. He's gonna do his best to add pain to this fight, but Cloud, the pulse bomb onto Cronus, kills all the healing and most of the resources of Team Peps, and they're just running out of gas, and Naga still lives. He's back to his echo form, but Team Peps do not have the forces. Overtime dwindles away, and X Oblivione sweep Team Peps out of the bracket. That was such a close map, too. I had so much hope that Team Peps were going to be able to take that map, bring us into another map in the series, but X Oblivione. They, they showed up with a with a big swing today. It was a big hit, and they're going to be moving forward in the slower bracket. I, it was great to see the fight come out of Team Peps um, on that push. Like you said, that could have gone either way. And I like that Ben Best 
is taking risks with these primals. He's doing his best to set up his team. And you could tell that Team Peps never gave up until that sweep happened. And it didn't matter what the series was at that point. They were gonna they were gunning for that reverse sweep. But X Oblivione came in. We came in with high expectations of them, and I think they really delivered. They did. They did. I think like, Explivione is still one of those teams that had considered themselves to be at the very least in the top four. Uh, we even heard it from the desk. They expect that Explivione is going to be a team that makes it out of this lower bracket. So still a lot of expectations on Explivione to live up to those standards that are being set by everybody else watching. But I can't wait to hear what the desk had to say about that one. Jen, this day has been so fun. So really excited we got to cast these matches together and the two of us will be back tomorrow for more, but let's close out the EMEA day. Lemon and Necro, thank you very much for that wonderful casting. Yeah, Ex Oblivione taking the win against Peps. Can you say Ex Oblivione fast 10 times? I can. 10? We're we'll gonna be here all day. Ex Oblivione, Ex Oblivione. Two? Ex Oblivione, Ex Oblivione, Ex Oblivione, Ex Oblivione. You have six. Good job. Good job. Good job Anyways, man. great, great stuff from Ex Oblivione. Ex Oblivione! <laughs> God dang it! I'm gonna get it right at least once. I gotta get it right what at least once. Ex Oblivione! Yes, there you go. All right, guys. Walk us through the match. What happened? I mean, this is another beatdown in the EMEA today. Some quick 3-0s, honestly. Exo looking like a drastically stronger team here. Honestly, Peps was kind of coming apart of the seams. I think especially the DPS gap, I felt pretty strongly. I think Tank as well. Um, just kind of in every role, right? Like when the Tracer comes out, Cloud was just getting pick after pick. There was one moment on Midtown where Naga was like trying to push the flank, just gets met by Cloud in one clip. And I was like, oh my <laughs> God, I think this series might just be done. Like that is a, you can't, and in the, these types of fights, right? These like high mobility mirrors with Lucio, Kiri, the Tracer, these right. flank fights mean everything. You lose the advantage on the flank, it might be your supports or your tank that ends up dying, but ultimately that's coming from the flank. It's coming from losing angle dominance, especially for your Sojourn. And I mean, talking about Sojourn, Cookie was lights out this series. I think hybrid is a bright spot for Pebs, but I mean, just so much space for, for uh, Cookie to work with. And then here we go. Let's see it from Klaus POV. Oh. Oh. Send, him, send him home. Woo. That's a, that You're feeling pretty good after that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's great to see these guys perform. Uh, and now they get the chance, of course, in the lower bracket to take on Space Station as well uh, for an opportunity to face either uh, Twisted Minds or NC Esports uh, mm -hmm. in our top three. Part of the match is going to be Cloud on this Tracer. Uh, of course, from Finland. And you know, historically, been so many great uh, players uh, from Finland who has really excelled on that tracer pick, right? You know, back in my day, I mean, it was like ninjas in pajamas and stuff like that. But that's like <laughs> going way far back. Uh, but but really, yeah, it was a great performance by them. And I, I'm I'm curious to see how they're gonna perform now when they go up against some of these tougher teams because we we already established that it is a top three here in EMEA, obviously with NC Sports, Twisted Minds, and, and Space Station Gaming. So you got this up-and-coming team with a lot of players we haven't necessarily seen before, like Chase making an name for himself, Crispy, Canale, for example. Yeah. Like, we haven't seen a ton of these players when it comes to Tier 1 of Watch Esports. So again, this is all what it's about in o uh, OWCS. Some of these up-and-coming players right. get a chance to compete with the very best and prove what they're about. All yeah. right. Yeah, no yeah I was just going to say, I mean, you look at a lot of the, talk about names, I mean, Team Peps has a lot of name value, right? A lot of these guys have played in the Overwatch League, yeah. historically been on, had a lot of chances on a lot of teams, and now this team of up-and-comers just kind of clapped them down, and, and they're look, making like, these guys are, are much more relevant when it comes to breaking into this, uh, you know, top echelon of the EMEA region. Yep. All right, uh, Reinforce, I've been, I, I heard that uh, you're blessing us with another amazing telestration. What do you got well, for us? Well, amazing telestration. So I was actually looking back at my telestrations yesterday. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'm just reading, you know, getting a sense of what the chat is saying, you know, feedback. And there was one person who came into one of my telestrations. Uh -huh. like, I'm new to Overwatch. Do you have any advice? So it's like, you know, maybe not every telestration needs to be about positioning and rotations and blah, 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 yeah. you, know, you know, like cooking with math. So I just got some Orisa gameplay that I cooked up from one of those up and coming players. And it's Chase uh, set that I've been really excited to watch more of here in OWCS. And we're just going to watch some Orisa. Now, I know not everyone's cup of tea. So Jake, you know, I don't know if you go need to go get a drink or something. I'm an Orisa fan. This is a but deathmatch warrior. <laughs> we love death Horse. Match warrior. So they're playing against this Winston composition here, which obviously means that you're going to have the benefit when it comes to like close combat. So if you're team peps here, you really need to utilize 
these different angles to engage around the Orisa because you can't really fight this frontal combat, right? And we're going to see that Chase is actually going to abuse this to his advantage. We got Kitsune Rushes being built on both sides here and they, those are going to be dropped in this fight. So I'm just giving you a heads up while we're watching this gameplay. So we can go ahead and play this one out. And so the thought of the Orisa here is, okay, well, I know that I have an advantage against the Winston. So I'm gonna push up here. I'm gonna avoid taking spam damage, but I'm going to utilize, put pressure onto the Winston, force out the bubble, Susa comes out. Here comes the Kitsune Rush. And now we gotta hide. We gotta hide from this Kitsune Rush, a lot of damage. Nice javelin hit there onto the Echo. Now we're going to swap the POV to the Lucio. We're just seeing that Crispy is going to drop this sound barrier, but the thought of the Orisa here is, I need to hold the front line, put pressure on point, and then peel this dive coming through. Here's a Terra Surge coming up. We gotta wait out the Susu, and then we can land it. You get a 2K, Ooh. and this is going to set up the fight win here for Ex Oblivione. So, just a, just a pretty basic Orisa gameplay when it comes down to it, but you can see what they're trying to achieve, right? They're trying to push the front lines, trying to make space for the rest of the team, and then when the dives comes in, you, you go back, you peel for the rest of your team, and you put pressure on them up close. That, this is advanced. This is some serious... All right, guys. Yeah, for the, yeah, for, for the, the actual people that like, don't know about Yo, Overwatch, that's pretty unfair. The actual <laughs> beginners, actual <laughs> beginners, listen to me. You play Orisa, find a low mobility hero on the enemy team, and ruin their life. Just kill them over and over again. That's all you have to pick it's, one hero. They got, was, they got a Baptiste, run at that guy. This was so they got Johnny, a Zen, Johnny run started, at that guy. Johnny started with like, kill oh, I, got, I got this comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for beginners here, I'm gonna dumb it down. <laughs> it's like very advanced. But hey, they're talking about it's you know, pro play. At the end, it's pro play, so it they was, have to do these things. It was right? faster than I thought it'd be. I, like we played it, and then I was like, wait, this is going really fast. So I could have sort it down. I'm no, sorry. It, I mean, no, 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 it's pro play. It's yeah, play. It's so of play. course they're yeah. gonna they're gonna dance and go in and out and out. For the casuals at home, <laughs> run it down. Since run it down. If your team's not with you, it's their fault. Since we're on the topic of like people who are getting into Overwatch, just a fun question. Like if someone Someone wants to be a tank, wants to be wants to play tank heroes, and they this is their first time playing uh, Overwatch. Who would you guys recommend? First time yeah. playing Overwatch? Yes. Honestly, probably just Orisa and just press your abilities. Mm. Play, pick Orisa, press your abilities. He's and strong. Just, just go in. I would I would say Ramatra. That would be my suggestion. I think Ramatra has a nice balance of kind of all styles of the game. You can go really aggressive, but you can play slow too. So you don't have to force one certain style. You can kind of try your hand with different heroes on your team. You don't. Don't take road out. No, don't pick Rogue. Would recommend against tanking don't on Rogue. Maga? Maga first time. I think Mago would be a good beginner. Oh, it was okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a little positional, it's positionally hard. But... Overrun, you know, like, oh, I'm running at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Joss, what do you think? Whoop, whoop, oh, oh, Romatra. Romatra. Yeah. You're not a Romatra <laughs> believer. I think Romatra's just every a very time, balanced Every hero. time Jaws sees a, sees a Romatra, he just does that whoop, whoop thing. It's right, that's my favorite sound effect now. I do it too now, it's a fast right. infection. Sorry guys, we went we went off uh, off tangent here a little bit, but uh, that's, a, that's a wrap on, uh, on EMEA for today. Uh, let's take a look at some top plays. Uh, what do we got, guys? Uh, production. There you, you got, go. Do you have a pun? Do you have a pun, Danny? No pun. Uh, e e e amazing, amazing plays. Kai with the ace here. Sorry, guys. Quick 5K. I think there's a collat earlier in the clip. Very nasty on the Sojourn. I mean, this guy in the Sojourn, he's been lights out ever since this hero Five dropped. Kai? Five oh. Kai. Oh my. Five Kai. Boom. I mean, Kai in this matchup was just lights out. He was, was. <sighs> too you good. Know, one of the more consistent, amazing hitscan players we got out there. Would you say that he's the best hitscan? In the world? No. Yeah. I mean, I, I think no? that conversation is always who a little goes, silly. Who's, who's, who's above Kai then? Ooh, I mean... I mean, Kai has to be in the conversation. Lip, hitscan is lip. so hard. You can't rank Hitscan. It's just, it's just meaningless. Like, lip. I'd pick like Lip on any Hitscan. The top Hitscan are all the same level for me, actually. Like, the, the really... I mean, there, there's like five or ten of them, you know? But, like, they're... Honestly, it's more about the team play for those players than it is about individual... Like, they can all hit the highlight reels. At the point where they're acing the whole enemy team, it's like, how much better I need are you more asking? hyperbole takes from you, Jake. I need you to be more explosive. And just more explosive. More explosive. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, go, you know, drop, drop the hot takes. <laughs> I need you to be more right, Johnny. <laughs> what, what? Whoa! 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 All right, Whoa! all right. Oh, yeah. Those I'm guys. sorry. I'm talking to the Preds guys, champion from last Whoa! year. Johnny you guys hash it out uh, in, the, in the green room, guys. That was all the matches that we have for EMEA uh, matches. We have more coming tomorrow, so let's take a final look at the brackets. And tomorrow, we're going to see that matchup. Twisted Mind versus... Uh, Team ends. 
this That's is an exciting, exciting match. I mean, these guys, I mean, very likely we'll see this be the top two or top three in NA along with maybe Space Station, but with Ents winning 3-0, it kind of looks like that's the top two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Twisted Minds as well, they did drop a map to Exoblivione, so you know, they're not, they're not, they're not... Not unbeatable. Uh, not, not unbeatable, not unbeatable a lot. And then we got the Space Station Gaming and Exoblivione kind of Come looking in, in the lower bracket. You never know, you don't want to drop down there. It's spooky. Yeah. You never know what happens in Always, the lower yeah. bracket. Because, yeah. uh, what was Weird it, what was it? You never know, you never know what's going to happen in uh, OWCS. Yeah, I mean, 2021 playoffs in the Overwatch League, we had Atlanta Rain beat Dallas Fuel, you know, out of nowhere. Spooky things happen in the lower bracket, then. Always. And all, it was San Francisco Shop always used to be in the lower bracket. Oh, yeah, they were just like a shark. Just. Yeah, we put them there. <laughs> you, put, <laughs> you put them there, you know, I don't you know. Didn't I, I, was, I was coaching, so this is not really a me situation. All right, guys, that is it for the EMBA section, everybody. Uh, don't go too far because we're taking a short break uh, before we get into the North America region. In the meantime, link your Battle.net account so you can get drops, but you can also fill the time by checking out a new graphic novel. Head over to overwatch.blizzard.com to download and read a friendly rivalry. You remember the, the Junker Queen song when it came out, when Junker Queen was released? It was like the punk rock song. Yeah. That was, that was
Listen ins into team comms have been so fun during our matches so far, so we thought we'd get a little listen in on what the desk has been up to. Not much is going on there. Mm -mm. Immortals will take contender season zero. And Smith might have done it. They will fly high. San Francisco is shot. I can share it here. Whoever said lightning doesn't strike twice has never met San Francisco shock. Shanghai Dragons are your champions. Dallas Fuel takes their place amongst the stars. Florida Mayhem are your dreams for all time. of the knockout it's exciting it's an exciting day yeah. danny live here with jake and johnny are you guys ready we have had incredibly close matches in na i think the top level is extremely competitive not very many 3-0s you americans just get get into the energy have, look, for this we region. do have look, better we love, players we do we have a better region out. it's look, true I, I love i love europe i love emea but i gotta be here too so. You know what? For NA Overwatch, guys, you know what? We need we need you. We need you. <laughs> we, need, we need you to sign up for OWC as oh, qualifier number two. Wow. Because we need this. I mean, think about how many of the players in this qualifier, if you're an esports fan, you might have not have seen a ton of these players before. These are tons of up-and-coming players putting teams together and making it all the way here to knockouts, maybe potentially making it to majors, DreamHack, Dallas. There's Stockholm. nothing like live overwatch. There's yeah. nothing like being in a crowd and cheering for the prize. There's also nothing like price money. Yeah. Cash money in the hey, bank. Hey, hey. Cash. Uh -huh. Or, uh -huh. in this case also, circuit points uh -huh. that helps these teams progress there you towards go. advancing uh -huh. to qualifying right? for Fork? those LAN events. So, yeah. if you're a team and you want to make it to Dallas, you want to compete at Dallas, you got to get some high placings in these stages. But don't threat. If you missed out on stage one, you got stage two where there will be double the wow. circuit points available for you to win. So, go sign up now. Yeah, we'll and also guys, I mean, if you're not competing, it's fine. There's still a way for you guys to participate as well by purchasing the tickets for DreamHack Dallas. Get it now, they're on sale. The, uh, the, the website is right there. Click on it, or not click on it. Yeah, go to that website, buy your tickets, see us there, see us there uh, support your teams. Yeah, we're all gonna be there. Everyone's gonna be there. Yeah. This is the place to be, and, and it's more than just Overwatch. It's a huge esports event, so being part of DreamPack is an amazing opportunity. I personally can't wait. I think it'll be a ton of fun. Yeah. 100% guaranteed. All right, let's all take a look at our brackets for today. Uh, and we're gonna start things off today with Luminosity Gaming versus M80, oh, as you're seeing. Banger. Yeah, it's gonna be a very so good, good one. Then the loser of that will play against Pip. That's gonna be our second match, and then we're rounding things out at the end of the day uh, with students of the game versus timeless. So many good, so many All good right. matches here. Yeah, we've got to talk about this Luminosity squad though first coming up into the match against right. M80. I mean, I think from a name value perspective, you might know a little bit more about some of the M80 players, some more experience in the Overwatch League, but Luminosity, the guys have been together for a really long time, still fighting uh, in this upper bracket. Um, you know, I think Dante specifically, a very close personal friend of mine, someone I'm expecting to see a lot of. Uh, might see False come in as well. Friend the of the show. Role. Friend of the show, definitely. <laughs> King and Vision, though, I really want to highlight this DPS pairing. I think they're incredibly strong. Vision has been on the come up on Hitscan for quite a while. Been a player I was kind of watching out for in ranked um, since a long time ago. King as well, very consistent flex DPS player, uh, uh, very solid. And then on the other side, support, you got Juby and Squid. 
Juby with experience in the Overwatch League, playing at a high level. And Squid, another one of the hottest support prospects, I think, coming up out of the NA region. And we've seen how well some of these young performers have been. So for me, LG really has pieces to put together here. Yeah, you kind of take, took my talking point because if you consider the best hit scan players, you'd probably say Hydron, like we're seeing here on M80 and Seek mm -hmm. here in North America. But Vision is vying for that spot. So if Vision has a great performance against a squad like this with Hydron, Pelican, Hawk, Ultraviolet, this Woo! is one of the most giga stacked rosters we have in the OWCS. And probably going into OWCS, you'd say that this could be a squad that could challenge the likes of Toronto Defiant here in the North American region. I think we're in for a really good one on our hands though. As much as M80, they have incredible name value. They have been performing really well in scrims from what we've seen from the scrim co streamers. I do think that Luminosity could give them a real good game here. On the side of M80, I know we're seeing a lot of Pelican and Hydron, but don't forget about Spectre as well, who was part of Toronto Defiant last year. Spectre has been really good so far, and we see them swap up their damage lineup depending on what kind of flexibility they need. Yeah, Spectre had a breakout performance, uh, and Pelican, of course, one of the hottest DPS players we've ever had in the Overwatch League, a top tier performer on pretty much every hero you put the guy on. Um, I will say, though, for the Korean players on M80, still, I believe, playing on ping, so that'll be a challenge they have to navigate here as they try and punch their ticket to DreamHack. I know that'll mean a lot to them being able to play on land, get the whole team together, so uh, definitely anybody's series up for grabs here, M80 versus Luminosity Gaming. You're gonna have to see it. Yeah, both. I mean, both teams have stacked roster. I think it is a certified giga banger. So everybody, let's jump right into the game. And for this match, we got Jaws and Matt as our casters. Thanks, Danny. We're back, Matt. How does it feel, man? Why? Thank you, Danny. We're back. What? What do you mean? How does it? What do We're you mean? Back. How does it feel? I expected We're back. to be we here alive yesterday. and back today. Yeah. Uh, this, this, it, this isn't a surprise. Oh. Uh, you, you need some of uh, Danny's America energy, I feel like. Uh, no. Danny is so excited for NA. Uh, also, the fact that, like, NA also has, like, parts of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Canada and South America. Danny just focuses on America. Yeah. 18 uh, shots this of espresso be... will do that to you, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would. Uh, this should be an awesome match, though, to kick things off. Yes. Uh, no, we had a great match to end yesterday. Uh, this should be another one that uh, is is equally as close. Yeah, M80 had uh, quite the run. If you're thinking back to the group stages, they had an extremely close game against Timeless, and they actually came out second in that group overall after Timeless beat them out. So I, I like Johnny's point in saying that there's a lot of veteran talent on this team, a lot of uh, players that you'd expect to do extremely well against the likes of Toronto to find, but I think they've got a little bit more to prove here in the upper bracket. Luminosity Gaming, Dante, friend of the show, uh, and a lot of hot prospects too, including Vision, which is, I think, a lot of people have got their eye on now. Um, it might be a bit of a, a tough ask for M80. We'll see if kind of M80 have found their groove, and I think that's what today is really going to cement, Matt. Of course, Toronto to find that will be their opposition if they manage to make it after uh, make it through after this game. Did you find it a little bit odd that uh, Jake didn't say that Juby's a friend of the show as well? Um, no. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. That's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. They're cool. I, they're, they're cool they're, like they're, that. They're, Jake's so sele Jake is so selected. No, I feel like everybody here is a friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, everybody on the screen, apart from apart from me sometimes, Matt. When you, uh... <laughs> I mean, you, you said that. I didn't say well, it. Well, you were thinking uh, it is the problem, bizarre. Matt. No, 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 not true. Uh, Z Zarya here into the Arisa. So we saw like a lot of Arisa yesterday. Uh, I, I think we'll continue to see a lot of Arisa. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just how can they kind of keep Hawk, you know, with that armor on, right? As uh, you see, they get really aggressive, just like how the desk was talking about. No TP. Find the target that can't exactly move and speed right at him, and they find one early. No swift step for Squid there. Yeah, even received a bubble from Dante, and like you said, just kind of ran them down. I mean, this was. This what this comp does extremely well, M80s, is looking at one target and then just kind of running at them. Dante is there more to help and facilitate the rest of his team. Hawk's there to really initiate and engage with the Orisa, try and push people back. Uh, nice little cap for M80. It's going to be a pretty tough ask for Luminosity here without King kind of getting a pick off to really do much because Orisa, unbelievably hard to take down. And with King going down like that, I mean, that's just a reset angle. Yeah, I mean, you, you lose the Tracer right at the start. I mean, these are the types of things though, that Pelican can do, right? We know how talented he is. And look at Lep taking that position all the way up there, like in the skybox, basically blocked by the UI. Oh, yeah, uh, what? Looking for a boop as he's okay. going to come down. Yeah. Do they know? 
No, they do not. <laughs> Dante on the ground. King gets a little bit of revenge there. Dante's the main focus. Let Div receive the Suzu to stay alive. And as Hydron duels out in the skies against Juby, is also forced to retreat back to the point. It's got Vision in his sights, but where's the support? UV does end up teleporting back to him, but that just leaves Hawk on an island to get taken out by the rest of Luminosity. M80 kind of scattering a little bit there. Focus fire, not really uh, being able to pin anybody down either, especially losing Pelican that early too. They lost a lot of control of that fight. I also think maybe getting a little bit too cute there for M80, right? Like the Lucio in the skybox coming down with like a boop, like uh, you no know, possibly works against some teams, but no luminosity. Right. Uh, you know, they they were not really kind of moved by that as uh, they're able to battle back, get the point. Now you know double support, all right? You win this fight, you got to grab for the next one. You know, maybe even build it up and use it in this fight. Uh, you're right back in things if you're luminosity. Yeah, this pulse one's going to be hard to land, Matt, as there's uh, two bubbles to kind of get through. There's one, just saw Dante use it. Rush on the point for Luminosity, but are they going to make good use of it? That's the question. I mean, decently, Dante is kind of standing in there chilling, but I don't think he wants to be there at all. Actually, just throws out the grab as Hydro tries to duel with the DPS on the back lines. Managed just to snipe Vision, but King is there to return the favor. As, uh, well, Hawk uh, does what Hawk does best on the Orisa. It's just pushing Dante around, bullying them. That Graviton Surge, it did find someone, Matt, but not exactly a squishy target that you can all in on after it yeah it's just wild to think about like the the arc of orisa in terms of uh basically completely stationary tank at one point just shield yeah. standing there and now just like a speed demon into the back line just can play so aggressive that uh it, it's a completely different place a completely different here it looks like pelican trying to set up maybe a blink to the high ground here with that pulse bomb knows at least two players are lurking yeah, he's got his eye on Juby and King. And they're staring straight back at him. Receiving a little bit of support there from UV every now and then. Some cars being thrown towards uh, his direction. King, though, takes a kunai square to the dome. And now Dante is the target again. There's the pulse. It did end up connecting. A lot of bubbles there for Dante, but now he's flat out of them. They've just got to be able to find that focus fire. Perkin just can't land a kill. Eventually manages to pick off Yubi, and it's up to M80 now to force Luminosity to come to them. The point does end up getting flipped here. Pelican just trying to distract for as long as possible. A bit of a bloodthirsty battle, but Luminosity win out in the end with 50 percent in building now yeah and the, the zarya like if you can get both bubbles off or at least conserve the bubbles for when like hawk goes in and then pelican as well like you can start to ramp up on this zarya like uh, think about how we talked about how the symmetry you can ramp up right you can start to get the zarya really healthy it's a suzu there just to keep uh no look like it was king alive as he's hunting for pelican yeah pelican they are going to meet each other in that small corridor but looks like they're going to separate go their separate ways at least for the time being just waiting for that rush to kind of wear off and now you can go with the rush of your own it's exactly what happens however hydro's already dead the trade on to dante is going to be good though as hawk can now plant himself firmly on the point with that terror surge and if you from luminosity it would be a fool to walk towards him but they're going to have to to touch ot is here as m80 do manage to find the flip and i stick on to vision though where'd he go vision didn't even see king I mean, look, doesn't really need to now. Dante, Hawk, I mean, they're having a nice honorable duel in the front lines, but Hawk has to back all the way up. That yep. pulse bomb kill from King there was absolutely massive as Luminosity finds the flip again. Yeah, and that's one where, oh, you gotta you got keep King alive here as he backs out just a second, where you know, Juby has the sound barrier and they just kind of like let Dante die, like within the rush, maybe it was just a, you know, not have the line of sight on him. It'll be Hawk will step up and take point. This grab could be pretty huge. Vision with the overclock, can't quite find the shot, so it's not a headshot onto Hydron, but received the beat just in time for, to survive. Speaking of overclocks, Hydron's going to rip his now, a little bit of revenge maybe, but Dante says not today. Actually just locks him into the grab and jumps towards him. They end up trading out, and once again, Hawk's left basically alone on the point. It can do what he pleases. Vision finds yet another kill, but where's the staying power for Luminosity right now? Vision's trying to play point guard for his support. King does come up with yet another kill, but no... No slide for Vision. Well, he had the slide, but didn't quite get there in the end as Hawk was able to just basically sit there and wait for Luminosity to barrel into him. Losing Dante so early on in that fight again, it's not working out well for Luminosity. Yeah, you can see they're really putting a lot of the, the focus on getting Dante out of these fights. And you know, when they're able to keep him alive, good things obviously happening for Luminosity. I would say outside of that, Vision had a really nice uh, first round on the Sojourn. The Hydra and, you know, and really Vision, nice, that'll yeah. be a really good head-to-head -head matchup to look at uh, throughout the series. Yeah, really. Nice. I love seeing Sojourn, man. I was talking to Jake in the green room earlier on. I think it's one of my favorite heroes just to watch and spectate. 
Just the amount you can oh, do with the slide and the rail gun. High, high praise from you. <laughs> what? What are you saying? Hero you like. A hero you like. Oh my god. Let's go to another hero you like. Maga here for yeah. uh, M80. So uh, a little bit of a throwback here uh, to last week. You know, Maga, uh, Sim, in the Reaper. And you see how much pressure they're just putting up on Dante. <laughs> just firing with both chain guns as they're trying to keep him up. Oh, it looks ridiculous. I mean, Hydron can melt the shields, but his health bar gets melted a little quicker than he expected by the looks of it. Dive in from Hawk, trading pretty favorably, but without a tank, it's going to be tough for MAT really to make anything stick here. They can speed away, of course, still having their Lucio alive and well. And with Pelican, I can imagine they have the shift, but all oh, Lev going super low. He's just about stalling out here for as long as you can, and uh, stall they did is uh, Dante is actually going to end up falling. Luminosity just needed to find the kills. They needed to clean up that fight a lot quicker a than they did, and MAT come back and they cap the point. I, I mean, just finding his second kill on the point, right? I uh, you know they end up getting the first kill. They control some of the high ground. They move back down to the point. Uh, and, and they get a few players weak, but never really kind of picking a target and chasing that player down, allowing M80 to just kind of stay in the fight. Uh, and that ends up allowing you know, Hawk to come back on the Maga. It ends up winning it. This will be a TP to the opposite side high ground. Is you know, Both these comps with the Sim want to fight on the point. This rush is going to be super rough to fight into as well. Juby seems to agree. Escorts himself away from the fight, but escorts himself away from his entire team. But you got to imagine at that point, Luminosity are kind of uh, they're kind of thing, and it's done that fight at least. They end up resetting after M A T used the rush. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of like the key, right? They they see they use the rush. They're in a position there where they're probably not going to invest in anything. Uh, you give up 50%, right? You win the next two fights, though, and you're, you're back at even footing. So that's kind of the thinking here. If you're a Luminosity, give yourself a big advantage in terms of ults. Yeah, the Simcom just wants to sit on the point, Matt. So all they want to do is sit on the point with the wall or oh, the ult. Oh, speaking of ults, though, where did Pelican come from? Straight from above, straight on top of their heads. Squid for, rush use Rose Squid? Sure thing, no worries. I've got a Suzu on top of me, so I'm immortal for a brief window and a double kill for Pelican and damage on top, too. Yeah. The, the, the rush comes down and then Hawk just uses <laughs> the MAGA charge directly into it. Uh, just, uh, you know, face first into that fight where uh, we, we thought the MAGA would be dead, but we've seen teams actually do really nice jobs. I think it's more situational than all the time. They now. TP out. Oh, right no. here in the close quarters. Vision does receive the beat there, but the TP, he couldn't take it in time. He's still frying people in the front line, though. Let's get a quick M80 listening in this fight. Come on, come on. Help me, help me. 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 Not as deadly as the Blizzard, but it's it's good enough. King swapping over to the uh, Echo as well now. I really like this in the Malga comms. You get so much ultra charge so quickly just shooting at the Malga and pretty easy to focus down as well if you've got that focusing beam. Yeah, that's something the desk was talking about a little bit earlier. We saw Sugar Free uh, run the Echo a lot yesterday. I know it may just deter teams from actually switching over uh, to the Malga. I think it's just kind of like, how do you keep that Echo alive, right? It, you know, oh, right now it's Hydron. What? Uh, Wait. Picking up the soldier. Well, I'm that's sorry. A, it's a trade, though. So, so you're in a decent spot. Was yeah, that he a just punt? It almost looked like he's doing the punt. <laughs> <laughs> he just died to the wasps coming out of uh, the staff of Romantra. Pelican's got Death Blossom. M85 the flip. No way you can fight on point now if you're Luminosity, not against those uh, ultimates. That rush going down was key to them capping there. Ultraviolet does manage to TP away. Had a nice little off angle, but they are Sound Barrier. Yeah, that will be important. There's the Death Blossom. Nice little Suzu. Sound Barrier comes out as well. That Death Blossom perfectly negated as Hawk ends up falling for M80. 99%. It's going to be a pretty easy flip here from Luminosity. Use their rush a little bit later there. And Luminosity still have uh, ult for this next fight. And they could very well make this the last one as well. This dupe can be deadly. Yeah, and I'm curious, I was going to say, if M80 feels the need to swap here, which uh, they just have... Okay, Pelican looked like he was going to mirror the Echo, where, you know, realistically, you know, Echo v. Echo in the sky, sure, you can take that fight, but you'd almost rather be the Tracer against uh, the Echo as, you know, M80, nothing really to work with here. 
outside of this beat so gonna have to probably try and take some position on the point and get some damage down maybe a big maga charge and then the sound barrier Vision trying to find a stick. There it is. Does land. Hits the Suzu though. And there's the sound barrier to try and march him forward. A sound barrier, both the uh, copy and the pulse bomb. You take that. Lep coming up with a massive sound barrier and Hawk finishing up with a couple of kills. I mean, that's just M80 running away with this. That duplication not finding anything at all, Matt. A two points to the Mauga. Definitely nerfed with this new Mauga hotfix, but that found next to naught. M80 are just going to run him over, and a 99 to 99 will be M80 taking the first map 2-0. Yeah, and, and I think it's like the position that you end up in uh, as the Echo right after that, right? You end up like on the point and definitely not where the Echo wants to be fighting uh, whatsoever. So uh, you, you end up in that really, you know, tough position where you have to fight on the point to use that MAGA duplicate. You don't really get much value out of it. You end up back on the point as the Echo, and that's a pretty clear kill to be able to pick up. Yeah, really nice stuff uh, from Let there, landing the perfect beat. And then the Suzu from Ultraviolet, two saving from Pulse Bombs. That's what yeah. the Kiriko Suzu 99% of the time feels like in this meta. Oh, you land a Pulse Suzu. Oh, Pulse Suzu, right? I mean, it's uh, the perfect counter to that ultimate. And then the Sound Barrier to follow up is just uh, Luminosity Gaming throwing everything in the kitchen sink there at that final fight. And M80 ended up taking that first one, two and oh. It's going to be a close series though, Matt. Oh, the uh, map, Matt, Matt. This is going to be uh, I'm, a close. I'm, a, I'm Map. Yes. Yeah, that's my new name. I am. I am. Uh, you got you know, two of the same letters, so bro. so excited for the map, the map set and the map veto that I've just become Map as well. <laughs> uh, well I'm definitely not excited for you though. So uh, that does kind of uh, add up. See, you know, that's that's a, the second mean comment. <laughs> second mean comment of the He's day. Binion, Binion, you know, team and track. I got my my scoreboard ticker at home. So I mean, uh, this was. This is nasty, right? Rush comes down uh, from Luminosity. Pelican Death Blossom from the high ground with the Mauga Charge on the other side. Yeah. Uh, then Juby with a nice sound barrier here, right? That's another Death Blossom, gets around the pole, still keeps within line of sight of everybody. So uh, Luminosity had some really good moments, played it tough even against that Mauga comp. Uh, it's just in the end, I mean, right here, this is a pretty tough fight. Yeah, really tough. That sound barrier, perfectly timed by Let. I mean, look. Malga, Ram, it's it's a tough matchup. I think I think I'd still put it in the favor of Ram, especially if you're going super fast. Just forcing the Kiriko to use the uh, Swift Steps like super huh. important, even obviously using the uh, the Suzu too. We'll see what they want to go to a different map because control it's a bit to and fro, and especially oh. Village, which is a bit more of a unconventional map, I should say, with a lot of May, a lot of like sim kind of uh, teleport plays uh, are enabled by that map just uh, on the topology, but. When we go to Midtown as our next map, Matt, like, what do you expect to see? Are we going to see a little bit more Mauga or are we going to see maybe so, some dive? So I actually think that uh, for Luminosity there is quite unfortunate because, like, that point doesn't tend itself well to Echo generally at all. But, like, if Echo is the counter to Mauga, you're kind of like... You know, stuck between a rock and a hard place, especially if you don't want a mirror. Uh, Echo, you can get really good value here on Midtown. So I would actually expect to probably see Hawk play like more of the Arisa based stuff, knowing that there's probably potential for an Echo on the other side. Yeah, Arisa does feel like what is meta right now in terms of the tank roll. Definitely a lot of teams still trying to figure out the Marga to see if it's still like super good, but Arisa seems like the safer pick right now and the more beneficial pick, especially like look at round number one, right? Dante wins Zarya. And then, well, Hawk just chooses Orissa and then bullies the uh, Zarya around. It's like, okay, well, you have to use bubbles, but it's tough when you need to use them on yourself because you're getting cornered. Or Orisa just seems to be the safest pick at the moment, right? Like, it may not be the, you know, uh, best overall, right? In terms of, like, strongest, like, individual tank. But yeah. in terms of dealing with lots of different things that you know can be thrown out it seems to be the best like overall you know well-rounded tank at the moment so uh typically when we've seen you know whether it be you know overwatch league or some of the top teams in owcs like whatever the safest comp is that they don't have to change you know loads of stuff after if it doesn't work keep going that's kind of what we see teams tend to go for yeah and i think you are right as well it's definitely going to be a lot more echo too just makes the most sense a lot of really good duplicate targets although to be fair we've seen an enormous amount of lucio dupes uh, over the last couple of days it feels like over the last couple of weeks like just random lucio dupes it can work don't get me wrong but yeah. probably not the highest value we're gonna jump to a quick break though don't go anywhere we've got midtown coming up just giving the players a couple of minutes here Thing. Get everybody in the 
stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Welcome back. Midtown up next. M80 taking an early lead in the series. A 2 and 0 on control. Luminosity still looking good though. I mean, it was a very, very close final round. It was Lep saving the day for M80 with a perfectly timed sound barrier. But uh, here we go. Midtown it is. And yeah, Matt, we were talking about it just before we went to the break, but a little bit more Rissa. And honestly, with the DPS lineups uh, for both teams, in fact, oh, Incredible flexibility, like especially players like Pelican too. My yeah. God, that guy can play anything. Yeah, I mean Pelican's sick, right? Uh, we, we we've known that for a while now. Uh, it looks like at least here off the start. So we'll talk a little bit more about Luminosity right there on D. Uh, they'll run that Zarya yet again. So they did have some success uh, with that Zarya in play. I think it's just, you know, maybe even giving Dante a little bit more resources to live. Uh, I know he's using those bubbles both offensively and defensively. Uh, I know whether it be on like King, maybe trying to stay in the back line a little bit longer or uh, protecting the supports on his side of things. Uh, M80 looks to be hovering uh, that Orisa base composition that they used uh, on map number one. So, uh, you know, some, uh, some differences here in terms of like, you know, seeing the, the tank difference, but in terms of the DPS and support, nothing else. What? Yeah, no two shot, uh, no real shock there. Not too much of a surprise. Hydron and Pelican, Sojourn Tracer, and Vision King, Sojourn Tracer. You love to see it. Yeah, Dante, at least on this Sojourn map as well. Sojourn just having the ability. No, go on. He... No, I mean, Sojourn just having the ability to just like burst targets down, like yeah. within, you know, seconds of, uh, you know, just building up some charge and then also being able to escape and then kind of like a, uh, a deterrent to a push there with a disruptor shot. Like she's she's always going to be around just like a tracer where Hawk takes pretty much all of his Infinite armor and he damage. has to back out and they're going to lose Pelican. <laughs> Dude, he's yeah. taking so much. He kind of stepped onto the point and was like, oh, I'm half HP. He tried to step back out and an ultraviolet, which is just pumping him full of heals. You can tell like the old charge looking uh, rather topped up there for UV. All right, we're going to go again. It was a small kill on Luminosity's side, meaning uh, M80 had to go for a small reset here. Luckily, though, they're going to get quite a few attempts. The comp does go pretty fast. Hydra on full energy right now, trying to force Dante to use bubbles, but from this distance, very unlikely to do so. Although, saying that, it looks like a small off angle from Hawk there did force at least one of them. And there's the second one as well. All right, King goes down to a, a kunai there from UV. And this position from Hydron 2 is just absolutely stellar. It's forcing Luminosity behind this big red truck here. And actually, they're going to push the rush and push the tempo up to the maximum here, trying to push Hawk away from the point. Does take the mega health back and actually lose Lep on the rotation. Yeah, Hawk was actually quite low and had to back out into that mega health pack area because he knows that Dante is like pretty well charged as uh, Vision putting down some nice shots again. Uh, no, really nice uh, first map there for Vision. 
uh, on the sojourn but yet again getting off to a good start where you know when hawk loses that armor and then dante's charged up he is gonna just chunk down oh both those overclocks being ripped and king only just a moment ago did he spawn but he's straight back sambara for juby though and look at that dante already immediately pushed away there was no chance for dante to enter that fight hawk no. just spun the spear walked at him and dante couldn't do anything but hold on tight and hope he survived and unfortunately he didn't four minutes to go now as they unlock that payload they get it rolling and because it was quite a quick team wipe matt there's going to be an early rotation up to high ground for m80 I mean, uh, Dante had two bubbles in Sound Barrier there and just melted. Uh, I mean, just the damage with the overclock. There's also a Kitsune rush for M80 in the mix, but... And then Hawk able to just displace Spear, do damage. I mean, that's where you see the Orisa shine is uh, it's going to be M80. They're going to just give up the high ground at this point. Is uh, King going to go maybe look for a Pulse Bomb here? Throw it on the Hawk. Feels like a little bit of a waste. Yeah, definitely, especially when all the armor is left. Did hear a pulse bomb go off though. It was kings, and yeah, no pulse bomb. Ooh, kill giving up a lot of space here. They are, yeah. Very happy with their M80 just moving underneath here. At least uh, there's going to be a little bit of a distance between the two hit scans, I suppose. But nice rotation from M80, seeing the luminosity of a uh, backed all the way up. Graviton surge available for Dante, but still doesn't want to throw it at a hawk. Can be eaten by the spear spin, of course. Speaking of which, there it goes. Fortify have been used. Oh, dragged straight back in. Hawk says, "Come to me." That graviton surge from Dante went in, sure, but uh, Hawk tried to close the door once again with that terror surge. But it was actually Dante that come up big once again with the kills. Nice shot by Vision, wow. Good positioning too. Super far forward uh, to try and catch the exits. Yeah, if you're M80 though, it's pro you probably don't really feel too terrible about that, right? Like, look at how much payload progress they got for relatively just one, you know, fight. Uh, you've the pulse bomb here from Pelican uh, could be huge with the way that uh, we know that he plays uh, on the Tracer seems to always land a pulse bomb. And then they have a Kitsune rush. Like, if you can just get to the payload, I think that's like kind of the thing, right? Keep everybody alive, maybe for some of the you know, high ground control here for themselves, uh, and then use the rush. You can probably get second checkpoint. Yeah, and they're setting themselves up for exactly that. It looks like Lumosity giving up the high ground very quickly. Just see the Hawk throwing javelins at Dante. There you go, there's one bubble forced already, and uh, that Kasunia rush layering most of the point, or at least next to it. Oh, there was no chance for Squid to survive there. Pelican already in the back line too causing quite a ruckus as that point is uh, capped. I feel like fairly easily again, three minutes and 20 seconds. Yep. Normally that second checkpoint is just such a chokehold on this map, but M80 looking quite good right now. And uh, they're flowing through this map quite quickly. I mean, it's literally one fight, right? Uh, I know they get that, you know, they pretty much get their payload all the way to that second checkpoint. Then they just end up, you know, losing, you know, in, in essence, right? But really, you know, forcing some of the ultimates out and getting an ultimate advantage, coming back, you know, just getting a good use of the rush and that's it. Uh, and you're able to quickly take that second checkpoint. So uh, a little bit less than three minutes on the clock here for M80 and they're still in a pretty healthy spot in terms of ultimates to get another fight win. Oh, Dante, the main focus for Hydra right now, saving that power side to get away from that sound barrier. Dante just marching on forward, but already that's over shield or over health from both Lucio Sambaris has already dissipated. Nice little spear again. Vision still on the hunt for a headshot. He's being quite aggressive here, but knows he has the power slide to back him up. But there's Hawk trying to go for Vision. Kasuna Rush being ripped too. Terra Surge. Oh, leap away, and Hawk instantly just getting <laughs> evaporated. I mean, Terra Surge, yeah. You got that extra little bit of Fortify there, Matt. It, that's, that's all great, Hawk and all. But uh, the problem is there's a rush in front of your face and the fully charged Railgun. <laughs> yeah, you can tell, like, Hawk's trying to get into positions where he doesn't take, like, large chunks of, you know, his HP pool before you can, you know, really engage on the opponents, right? <laughs> yeah. Kind of goes in from that side angle. Basically runs around the corner, spear spin into a fortify, tries to pin one, and then now has no more cooldown. So then has to use the terror surge to kind of get another fortify, but uh, just kind of crumbles over amongst all that pressure that's coming on through. But I uh, know that is the Kitsune rush gone uh, from Luminasi. Luminasi still holds onto this grab, so we'll see how Dante wants to use it. Yeah, it's been a tough ask for Dante to get one of these grabs off. 
past Hawk is going to be a bit of a problem, but only needs to catch one. You only need to go for one. It might be a Hydron 2 is extremely low on the sidelines. Dante with a quick bubble onto King as King tried to follow up on that damage from Dante's right clicks. There's the spear pin. Dante uses that momentum to just jump back onto the floor here. Graviton Surge, perfectly placed, but where's the kills? There they are. A big right click into that grab. Both DPS succumbing to the high charge Zarya. A minute to go now for M80. Still got another big chance here, but Luminosity, the old bank, is looking at Killeen. Only used one in that fight, and they got Overclock and a Sound Barrier coming up. Well, just like how we talk about, uh, you know, Terror Surge, right? Like inside of the rush, like, you know, they actually have to kind of like run down that alley. You can do really nice things. So the same thing kind of with a graph. That time though, Luminosity, they back out. Once that Kitsune rush comes through, the spear spin already gone. And then, you know, it's pretty safe to throw that grab in the mix. And uh, Ultra Battle gonna go to the Baptiste here. So a little bit of extra, you know, more health to try and keep Hawk up. Scout Luminosity listening on this last 30 seconds though. I can swing with Surge whenever. Live this, live. Okay, okay. I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah, yeah, simple, simple, simple. Oh, oh. Don't carry, don't carry, carry, guys. Man, I'm on Lucio, I'm on Lucio. Lucio, 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 Right, 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 right. One, 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 one. I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm gonna go Play back, play back. Yeah. Check on me. Going back. Okay, 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 you not have uh... just surviving at the very end that's all you need to do just wait for the spawners to come in matt and that's kind of demonstrated perfectly there as dante leaps back into action on the doom fist uh, you know what i love about that listening is uh I, you know i believe it's you know we're watching from vision's pov and yeah. you know, don't know all the voices but assume it's him since we're watching him and shoot the bat uh when he calls the bat is really one just gives the the acknowledgement that sometimes when you call people one shot they're not actually one shot it's like no guys seriously <laughs> he's that guy, really that one guy actually is one no seriously he's one uh i i feel like uh you know he's one shot as you know there are three uh, call outs from like in overwatch 40 man. hp down is exactly he's one shot i feel like at this point they're low which means they're anywhere yep. between 90 percent hp and 50 percent they're one which means what 50 to maybe 30 and then yep. real one is like maybe 10 percent hp you know like there's uh, a <laughs> you have to be very and, specific. And now C9 is uh is whenever when somebody doesn't finish an objective, it's just a C9 mm -hmm. at this point. Everything's a C9. Everything is uh yeah exactly. Every term is getting just melded into one. It's all good. Enough time has passed. People forget. It's fine. Good defense. I don't though. think they forgot. Nah. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, that's true. Yeah. I myself has a have a memory of a goldfish, so I have forgotten. Oh, don't. Do oh. Okay. That's, uh, I mean... Oh, okay, okay. All right, okay, chill. Everybody chill out. That is... Pretty good start there. That is Luminosity. not great. <laughs> that is... Ha ha it's not ideal. That hasn't happened in a while where you get spawn picks like that. That is a free tick M adventure. Mitch and, I, uh, Mitch and I had one, I think, like last week where it was like a uh, King's Row Widowmaker just shot a Sombra. Like the Sombra was just standing there, fired some shots, and the same type of thing happened. God. Two ticks for free. That is the freest two ticks you will ever see uh, on Midtown. Nice push here. No bubbles, yeah. They're definitely calling no bubbles right now. Easy cleanup from Mr. Hawk. Oh, they do end up killing Hydron, but it shouldn't matter all too much. I mean, you're still happy about that if you Luminosity, even if you lose that fight, Matt. That's two free ticks in a minute. Less than that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is... Uh, they, they just oh, need to kind of like either... Yeah, these players need to stay alive or get out. Uh, because they are in a really dangerous spot. Both supports there, actually, uh, over on the side. So now that you just need to get one extra tick, uh, I mean, there you can play a lot, uh, you know, more loose if you're Luminosity, right? Uh, but you see there, just going to oh, pressure Dante down. God. When he doesn't have both bubbles for himself, I mean, he is screwed right there. Oh, King? You what? King? Two wait. supports? Wait, 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 wait. 
King just gets the double kill on the back line. Where's the heal, son? King with a, a quick ace, potentially? I mean, he just killed, almost killed the entire team. There's four kills. Where's the fifth? Give me the fifth. Give me the fifth. Pelican in his sight. Oh, stolen by Vision. Oh. But we'll take it, King. Four kills for the Tracer. Although it does end up getting shut down. Still a chance there for M80 to maybe get back into this one. But with 33% looking extremely Ooh. unlikely, King just went absolute psycho <laughs> on the back line. Yeah, that was insane. Uh, you know what? Vi they, they pretty much win the first point off of, you know, Vision getting a Widow shot into Ultraviolet at the start, and then King essentially getting an ace, uh, just basically just running through everybody. Uh, gets both uh, supports in Hawk. Just a really tremendous play there from King, and that's going to allow Luminosity here, second part of the map. Uh, you know, they're definitely behind in terms of some key ultimates here, you know, really just kind of looking at, like, the tank ones. Um, but... Look at this, uh, M80 not doing what Luminosity decided to do. Luminosity gave up so much space, uh, you know, on their defense and allowed them to just kind of push on forward. M80 not doing the same, but it'll be King again winning, uh, you know, another big fight. King just keeps on killing. This overclock from Vision did find a couple of little headshots there, but nothing substantial. Dante, like you said, Matt, is just moving the payload. <laughs> okay, finally someone shut him down. It was left at the end of it. There's the rush on the point. Hawk is in a whole lot of trouble, surrounded by members of Luminosity right now. Does manage to spear spin and push Dante away. Terra Surge is good enough as well, just pulling everybody in, giving D uh, Hawk some extra sustainability too. His ability to bully Dante is just unreal. Dante can't really get much damage in. He's firing as much as he can at Hawk, but Hawk just has so many defensive countermeasures. They end up winning in that fight and more importantly as well maintain control of this high ground too a fairly clean fight for them with luminosity going for a full reset yeah i mean uh dante can get charged up on that zarya but yes he's obviously both bubbles to do it and then he has nothing uh defensively able to keep him alive and then that's when they decide to run him down like good grab by spear spin yeah just connect one with the grab and that's a big kill yeah good grab wrong place wrong time for hydron there hawk Getting pressured a little bit out too. Dante is super high charge. No bubble though to save Vision as he gets pulse bombed. And now M80 want to pressure the back line once again. Use that sand barrier to push Dante to his absolute limits. 100 ch charge on the Zarya, but uh, you can't just burn down Hawk like that. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go. And M80 still holding on to this high ground. Yeah, and, and the high ground is key. I mean, you see the difference in terms of the defensive setups, right? Where M80 wants to play, you know, way more aggressive, active here on the high ground, drop Ooh. down. And Luminosity played a little bit more defensive on their end, where they gave up so much car progress. And now we're going to see Dante actually match here in terms of the Orisa. So get a chance to see what this looks like in the head to head. Yeah, Dante Orisa now. Looks like a rare sight. Not that rare, but it, it feels like it. King with the pulse bomb in his back pocket right now with two minutes to go m80 pretty close to losing this point but it's still gonna be tough for luminosity to kind of flood out into the uh into the wide open space as hawk and the rest of m80 just looking down upon them looks like dante is going to try and push the back line ultraviolet using that suzu already to protect himself from the orisa plus this railgun coming through from vision too now they have to contend with a rush on the point m80 are going to have to be able to touch here vision's forced to slide away the terror surge is good for hawk to create some space but where's the damage where's the follow-up hydron with the overclock will make sure this damage sticks M80 continuing to hold a minute and 20 seconds to go and that's a clean team kill Matt and Luminosity going for another reset used a lot in that fight too they got a beat and a terror surge maybe to win it out not sure they're going to get much more than this in this round uh, and although it's a losing fight for Luminosity, I thought it was actually like much more competitive of a fight than playing that Zarya. Like Dante was quickly able to get to the back line, you know, force out a Suzu swift step, you know, make it pretty challenging on Ultraviolet and Lap as uh, it'll be sound barriers for both teams. They both have to come down pretty perfectly. Pelican didn't want to go too deep there. Forced a recall, still has a pulse bomb. Doesn't need to worry about bubbles either this time. Senses that Luminosity had taken that high ground. Spidey senses were correct. M80 not wanting to go down without a fight, though. The longer they can test on the high ground, too, the longer that payload uh, takes moving back. Worth keeping in mind, it's still slowly rounding that corner once again. Pelican being so patient as well, knows that maybe he could just make this the last fight. Terra Surge hits three, there's the stick, but a sound barrage comes out just in time. Dante still pretty low, so ends up backing towards the payload, Matt, as uh, Lep ends up using his sound barrier pretty late. And now Hawk and the rest of the gang could just charge on in. It's up to Lunamossi now to try and get to the payload in 
time to get the touch. Five seconds to go. His left is just corralling the entirety of Luminosity into this underground subway station. And it's up to King now to try and get the touch and maintain it there. So he wasn't really in that fight at all. King, Dante, they're gone. Luminosity halted right there. And M80 will solidify this series 2 and 0. Oh. Yeah, and I, I think I know towards the end, it's the lighter sound barrier there for M80, which is huge. Uh, and I also think just doing a great job in like that Arisa versus Arisa head to head. It seems like Hawk knows exactly when to like pop spear spin, when to kind of like get aggressive. I know push on through seems to be doing a great job kind of holding those big cooldowns, the fortify and the spear to get aggressive as uh, rather than to use them to just kind of take space. Yeah, Hawk's Arisa is just phenomenal honestly this whole series and also this support all timings like you just mentioned there normally the latest sound barrier does end up winning it out luminosity felt like oh we can just flood here we can try and get to the back line they sound barrier dante as he got stuck on the Arisa. he pulled three people in with a terror surge um but then he just got focused down every single defensive cooldown was yeah. used to try and keep dante alive and it just wasn't enough and then the later beat and they could just basically chase him, <laughs> chase him down to the subway. And uh, well, that's GG. The gates were closed. Uh, it doesn't matter if you got a ticket because uh, you're going home or they might go home. I mean, this could be a 3-0, Matt. It's not looking as close as I uh, envisioned uh it be. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And I think you see, you know, just from some of the highlights, like there's just, you know, when the bubbles come out, there's almost like no, you know, typically you wouldn't want to shoot the Zarya bubbles, right? It's almost like, you know, when Dante uses them on himself, like doesn't even matter, just like blow them up. Like, and then you feel like, you know, Hawk is just going to live for so much longer. It's that Vision with that first pick. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> uh, no, really, I mean, v Vision and King had to go crazy, you know, with uh, won that first pick and then King obviously, you know, going, you know, crazy on the tracer to get that first point. Uh, and then once we got here towards the second part of the map, uh, I thought you saw the difference between both sides, right? Where, you know, Luminosity let, you know, M80 take so much space. M80 did not give up that space, played from the high ground, jumped down, got aggressive, played at that first corner, uh, and ended up bleeding tons of clock doing so. Yeah, their macro game is uh, really, really nice. Just continually holding that high ground, forcing that payload back too. I mean, you have to then fight us on height, and then you have to drop to then touch. It's not a matter of we're just going to play around the point. And it did force the point quite a fair distance back too. It almost went under the, the bridge again. So yeah, really nice macro play from M80 thus far. And Luminosity, Man, they just might go down to the lowest right here. M80 want to go up against Toronto Defiant uh, in the next stage of the bracket. Some stats on your screen, of course, all going to be pretty close. KDA is obviously the winning team is going to be a little bit higher. And I think that's only going to get exemplified in our third map coming up because yeah, this, this is not that close. It's, it's really not. Map one, one was closer, but um, map two, not so much. M80 steamrolled their attack, it felt like, Matt. Yeah, and I, and I wonder if you don't want to play the Arisa head to head and the Zarya is not working, like what, you know, what you potentially could do uh, if you are a Luminosity, like what you potentially could go for. Um, we've seen teams even out for like Sigma, right? Some like more longer range poke style uh, comps. So uh, maybe here in Coliseo, you're able to do that. I do feel like though that the Arisa is just so fast. Uh, you're able to just kind of like run run the, uh, the sigma down and uh th then the sigma is not able to live right so probably right. the downside of that yeah it the sigma comp it, it very much requires a special map or like a like circuit or a map you can play slower i just don't think coliseum is really like that could you know it could play it but i feel like the way mat are playing right now um how quick they're playing and how much Hawk just wants to kind of get up in your face and know the targets too. I mean, a lot of the time you are trying to force out the Sojourn. You're trying to force her to use slides so and then you can just run at her and kill her. And it's been hard for even Dante on the Zarya to keep Vision alive. Although it wouldn't surprise me if Zarya was the, the pick here for Luminosity. A, a very comfortable hero for Dante and a hero he's been historically extremely good on too. Um, and that's just their style of play currently. And, you know, if you are down in a series like this, going to a comfort, going to something that you know you have a lot of trust in, um, is probably going to be a better uh, choice here. Yeah, and this is a uh, Luminosity map pick, right? Uh, right. You know, not tons of selection here. Uh, I know in push, yeah. right? But still, uh, you know, we got a, a coin flip of uh, you know, one or two maps once we get one out of the pool. So uh, Coliseo, it feels like you, know, you kind of feel you can win this like 50-50 battle here at, you know, midfield, so to speak, right? Versus 
you know, Esperanza, we typically see way more of the map where, you know, Coliseo, like, you know, typically here, you know, that first high ground, and that's about it. Yeah, you can definitely play a little bit slower here if you are the Zarya. Good spear. Straight after a body shot landed on the Sojin. But now with both bubbles down, yeah, Hawk knows it. Just pressing WM1. Now it's to back up himself. Oh, Leb randomly goes down to a, just a random Kunai headshot. That's not good. That's all your heals pretty much uh, done and done. Well, your speed, sorry, done and dusted. That's uh, bad for the Zarya or bad for the Arista, sorry. Payload moving. Luminosity with a very, very nice early pick from Squid. And they will get the payload uh, on its way. And being able to hold this corner too is going to be really nice for Dante. And actually forces M80 to go for a, for a swap. Going over to the monkey now instead of that Arissa. Yeah, a uh, Winston pick here for M80. So uh, maybe it's just a little bit easier to even access that back line. Uh, you know, put some pressure. Is, and when we see the Arisa get Jesus. in and then not able to get out, it's very difficult where Winston's a little bit more mobility. As uh, Hawk down to 100 HP is going to get healed right back up as uh, it'll be M80 now in control of the bot. Good dive there from Hawk. Also separates the heals from the rest of the team too. Maybe forces Dante to use an extra bubble on himself or one of the healers. Just way more mobile on that uh, on that hero and on the cop too. Well done. High ground already controlled here by M80 though. Uh, so, uh, as I say, that high ground slides <laughs> off, but they're you know, trying to grab that like uh, you know upper perch. It feels like if you can't control that, you kind of like let them come down and play on that even ground. But Vision finds a shot on the ultraviolet, so that's going to force M80 to back up. You cannot fight this uh, without your Kariko, especially you know with the Kariko with Kasune Rush. Yeah, this is this feeling like textbook Colosseo right now. Ah, the Sojin got a pick. We reset. Ah, our Sojin got a pick. Ah, we push. <laughs> textbook Colosseo mid fights. Not uh, not further than this archway. Neither teams have moved that box. Rush has been pulled by both teams though. Vision trying to get back to the rest of the squad, but I mean Dante's just gonna be an absolute mess in the front line, even more so now with that uh, sound barrier coming out. This ends now, says Hydron, but where are the kills? Nothing in the kill feed so far. Pulse one thrown out, Suzu used there on Dante and Juby to make sure they stay up and alive. A later overclock here from Vision, still hunting and finding the Lucio. Not quite enough to find the kill on Telep, but that Graviton surge from Dante should seal the deal on this push. Hawk just standing in the front line trying to juggle that bot is no match for the grab. And I'd love to know what M80, uh, you know, what their kind of thinking is here with, you know, bringing in the Winston. It hasn't looked bad, but also like in the Arisa Zarya mirror, they've been able to win like pretty consistently, right? Uh, maybe it's just an extremely long kind of like, you know, gap and sightline that you have to close on Coliseo, right? Like creating so much space that it becomes so costly for the Arisa to get a, uh, you know, close that gap. Maybe that's why you feel like you need a little bit more mobility, but uh, no, they actually kind of take the bot where it looks like yeah. Nazi backed out for just a, a brief second. And it looks like Pelican just started scoring the bot the other way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, wow, Luminosi aren't. Why were they not pushing there? But yeah, Pelican just stole the ball. Pelican just ran away. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of walked. All right, I respect it. Okay. Primal Rage available from Hawk now. Might be a bit of a problem, especially as one bubble's already been used. Speaking of which, there's two. There's the Primal. Oh, that Pulse Bomb as well. The connection onto Juby is good. And that Primal Rage is doing so much work in the front line. The problem is with the Zarya comp too as well, Matt. You, you do need to be an LOS if you're Zarya to receive those bubbles. So as soon as Hog sees one, maybe two go down, right? He can just jump in with Primal and start just uh, trying to get the Sojin out of here or get even the Kiriko out of there as well if they've used their Swift Step already. It's uh, really tough for the Zarya when your entire team is kind of scattered everywhere and you've got to prioritize your bubbles correctly. Yeah, this feels like a must-win fight as well for Luminasi, and they lose Juby right at the start, and he's got the sound barrier. I mean, that is massive. If Lep wants to, could throw this one in here for M80, secure that checkpoint, but probably not even necessary. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, they should be able to juggle touch here. Hawk's going super low, but I think the bomb may be a little bit too far forward. No, it's not. Dante can still sit on the edge here to, just to make sure it is contested. And so it doesn't look like M80 are going to push up and try and take it. They're going to back up just a little bit. Wait for Luminosity to come to them. Vision going super aggressive, jumping onto the high ground. And then the overclock has been pulled. Same with Hydron. Well, high ground advantage is very much in Hydron's favor, but Vision not too scared. Jumps up there with the sound barrier. However, that robot has been stolen once again. 
Oh, good grab. Yeah, but it's going to be a, a, a beat here potentially for Lapis. Uh, they're not able to save Hydron, so they end up do losing that Sojourn. The bot goes briefly the other direction. But, oh, it's been stolen you know, again. M80. <laughs> Yep, it's going back towards your way. Like, look at this. Like, Luminosity just has to run. There's like, no way. You might, yeah, can they get no, checkpoint? Gonna get, are you going to get checkpoint? Oh, oh. no, not quite. I, that would have been egregious from Pelican there. Stealing the bot that far to get checkpoint. And that, <laughs> but still, winning that fight winning that fight there like and keeping the bot moving in your direction for Luminosity gets you probably closer to tying the game, you know, in terms of like meters on the board. But because the bot goes all the way the other direction, uh, you're going to be at this like nasty spot where nobody really wants to fight like pushing into the opposing team's high ground yeah they're just gonna play on the bridge wait for a pick with a rail gun i'm at the overclock sad there's the rush from squid almost instantly falls prey to it himself and to going down to pelican nice little dive there i mean mac's dive looks so nasty just on paper in terms of name value but i mean it's put into practice right there and then squid's the perfect target to take down as luminosity have to get out of there Mm, this, uh, that is a brutal oh. turn of events there for Luminosity, right? As uh, I mean, get, get, gets even worse. This potentially looked like you could have you know, gotten some you know, bot progress. Pelican escorts the other way. Then you get, kind of get back towards that you know, midfield area. You lose that fight. And then the next one, you lose your Sojourn right off the rip. So this is going to bring that bot all the way back to a spot, though, that they will be able to contest from this high ground. We'll see how M80 decides to try and break this. Yeah, the probably still want to use this rush up on the bridge. It's so strong. Sandbar from Juby did hit everybody on Luminosity Cyber. Does it like that bot eventually hit that checkpoint, so they can't perma-contest anymore. 67 meters and now. counting now. Is that overclock for Envision that tries to find any value? Oh, the collat! Pelican and Lev falls to the collat after that bubble just dissipates. Oh, Oh my word, because I've got age since we've seen one of those as well. Good shot from Vision that cleans up the team, but M80 still have the lead and the checkpoint. I mean, you get checkpoint for M80, which is massive, and then Luminosity still has to push through this extremely difficult area where, look at this, I mean, the high ground control already favors M80, where typically teams don't want to push into this. They'd rather have, like, M80 push the bot back to that choke, you know, fight more towards where that bot spawns, like, a little bit, you know, closer to this side of the map, uh, and then try and get that push. But they're kind of forced into this really awkward situation where they have to fight. All right, Hydra wants a clip for twinning out. Pulse bomb. That's a uh, way off mark. Oh, that was close. Squid takes a, a railgun to the head. Now, once again, Pelican has stolen the bot, but it looks like Hydron's going to be the target focus here for Luminosity, but they can't quite get their hands on him. It's so hard. I mean, it looked like Hydron had multiple slides there, like multiple charges on the power slide, but it was just the sound barrier, the speed boost, and just being a very, very slippery Sojourn, just making sure he can stay alive in these fights. And Luminosity unable to pin that Soj down means M80 control the bot again. They can get it moving past this checkpoint, get it forward spawns, and they're in a good spot to win this map, Matt. Yeah, this is where it becomes uh, incredibly punishing on push, right? You know, Luminosity going to have to invest into these fights, but also probably win like three in a row. And if they don't win you know, one of those fights, the bot goes all the way back to the start. Is yeah, We will have Vision coming in on like Cassidy here, probably, uh, you know, a little bit more of a defensive pick than the, the Sojourn, but also like with some of the sight lines, it's definitely going to favor the Sojourn. Oh, 100%. There's the rush on the ball. Graviton Surge hits UV. No Suzu available. Wasn't even in his own rush, sadly. There's the cash coming up dividends, but that's more Dante picking up that kill. Soundbarrow for Juby's good here, but Squid ended up going down and now Vision the target. Where's the bubbles for Dante? Must be out of them already. And now M80, all they really need to do, Matt, is stall. 72 meters to 48. Luminosity has to invest into that fight to get the win, but it's M80. They can now just defend here on this bridge, on this high ground. And honestly, I don't think they're even going to do that. They're going to play the mid-fight again. Yeah, and the more clock they burn here, the better, right? I know they're going to end up building towards, I know, some support ultimates here. Yeah, you see Pelican you with this Pulse Bomb just trying to force out, like, uh, you know, maybe some of the Zarya bubbles where they have about three fights here to work with M80. Pulse Bomb for Pelican in his hands as well as Dante just continually getting peppered in the back 
And now, with Squid dead already, that's the third fight in a row. It feels like he's fallen over. That Pulse Bomb didn't find kill, but it find massive damage. Hydron's got the overclock in 10% as well. I mean, this high noon's going to buy some a little bit of space, a little bit of time, but where Squid needs to get back into this fight, the health bars for Luminosity, they're bleeding, and they might just be bleeding out here. M80 coming up with the kills. A 3-0 in their sights, and Luminosity Gaming will fall. The overclock is just the cherry on top as M80 advanced in the upper brackets yeah extremely strong performance from m80 uh luminosity also put up a pretty good fight it's just right there on coliseo uh just some really tough positions they had to kind of like push into go and make a play uh there at the end they actually used the, the you know dante is incredibly low they used the dead eye to kind of like buy his space <laughs> yeah. and keep him alive uh but still you're in such a horrible position like underneath that bridge it's really difficult to push on through so uh m80 specifically on coliseo did a great job just kind of using those positional advantages advantages uh, and securing the map yeah they look really solid like super solid right now um and the arista comp looked fantastic and then switching over to the dive too they still got a yeah. lot of tools in their arsenal a very very flexible squad not uh, a series i thought would go this way i thought it would at least go to a, a four maps yeah, maybe five like luminosity they got something to say i'd imagine especially in that uh, losers bracket run maybe they can still make it though tough competition down there hop over to the desk though guys what did you think about that series a little closer right than a little uh, more one-sided sorry than what we first anticipated <laughs> no, a little closer, Not closer. I mean, the other right? side the other way i feel like i know i feel like i feel like you know although the score is 3-0 i think luminosity had bright moments and i think they did have you know, a lot of great fights as well. I think it was, sure, it was 3-0, but at the end of the day, but, you know, throughout the throughout the match, I think they put up a really good fight and they had some really good moments as well. Yeah, yeah. I think from an individual, like, player skill perspective, they were very competitive. I, I do feel like the Zarya lacking anything that challenges Arisa positionally, right? Like, Zarya does put out a ton of damage, but there wasn't that obvious ally bubble target hero that you tend to kind of want with Orisa, especially with that lower cooldown on ally bubbles. Um, and at the same time, there's nothing to hold down the Orisa when she's shoving through your team. You can't really stand your ground against her. You need to back up. And sometimes that pushes you off crucial corners. They were able to find big grabs, big value off some of those plays. So it wasn't entirely hopeless for me, but I do feel like compositionally, M80 just a little bit Better stronger, come. especially on the Arisa and the Winston. Both of them great responses to Zarya. Yeah, it felt like a lot of times when we were watching Dante, especially there on Coliseo, he just did like a 180 and like shot backwards trying to peel for his team on the Zarya because you could just throw out the Zarya bubbles and kind of hope that your team lives through the, throughout the dive. Um, but in general though, I think that like Vision had a really good game for Luminosity. Yeah, Even though you lost 3-0, there were some like serious standout moments on the side of Luminosity. So you, I think you're right, Danny. It was a 3-0, but in spirit, it more felt like it was a really competitive series, especially here on Midtown. It was a good map between both sides here. Um, I do I'd agree with you. Like you couldn't really accomplish that much um, with the Saria. Obviously, it should make sense, the idea of it. Um, but also on the side of Pelican, you got to give Pelican some, yeah. some credit as well. Uh, with ping issues, of course, playing this series in a way, the amount of impact that Pelican had on the Tracer, finding picks, post bomb picks like this one, for example, just like massive value all the time. And the rotations were really good. Ultraviolet, I think, had a good game on the Kiriko as well. Managed to get to the back line, utilize the Kunai's aggressively, and that helps out the team as well. So uh, overall, we, what we expected from M80, and, and, and it's a bit of a shame that it was more competitive from Luminosity, uh, but they had some bright moments throughout the series. If anything, though, this is great for M80 going forward into the upper bracket, wanting to continue to be a threat and challenge Toronto's dominance so far in the North American region. M80 definitely making a case for themselves here. And as you mentioned, Pelican, I want to highlight that, right? Like, I can understand on high ping, the Tracer can still produce value, still find kills like pulse bombs and things like that. But when it comes to staying alive and controlling the objective well, I'm really surprised that Pelican were still able to do that to this level. He wasn't feeling the ping. Yeah, I mean, the, you, you're right. I think Pelican killed it. But also, we got to give credit to Hawk as well. On that Orisa, he was lethal. Yeah. Yeah, really I mean, good on the Orisa. The rotations we saw coming through, you know, the coordination with your Lucio to like the pull back and forth. Like, okay, the Saria used a couple of bubbles. We'll use this time to turn the tables and push aggressively. And also, you know, I can give some credit to Hawk of the Winston. Give some credit I to mean, Hawk yeah. the right, like the Orisa, I th maybe it's expected for Hawk to be one of the best Orisas in North America. Whenever it comes to those high deathmatch aim skill heroes, I know Hawk is going to perform oh, at, they the, at that the elite level. Javelin right here? Did it, oh, no. I mean, but, but the Winston, Hawk has been in the lab on this hero. I think he has felt 
playing so many metas against elite level competition that in the end, you have to be a great Winston to really be among the elite tanks. This hero always comes back and a player like Hawk, I think who wants to command the full role and not just be only there for the off tank. The Winston practice is showing. Primal he mechanics. Is looking, Ooh. He is Ooh. looking really good. And with the primals, with the jumps, everything about the hero is dialed right here. And that is gonna be super crucial, I think, in over the course of the year. It's almost inevitable that Winston will make an appearance in the meta. This hero is just so high skill. So well played by Hawk, well deserved player of the match. I mean, well deserved win as well for M80. We wanna hear more from M80. So we have a post-match interview with Pelican. Danny, go Let's over walk. there. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm walking. <laughs> All right, Pelican, our DPS player from M80 is here uh, with me for a quick interview and a quick chat. Pelican, big congratulations on getting the win. Uh, please say hi before we get started. 자, 일단 승리 축하드리면서 인사 한번 해주세요, 시원하게. <laughs> Hello. I'm Pelican. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, your English is getting better. 영어가 좀더 늦은 것 같은데? <laughs> No? I mean, I mean, he says he says no, but I know that he's he's been practicing his English. So maybe in the future we'll do an English interview. All right, let's jump right into the interview. So I know last time we talked, you were you know sort of debating if uh, you wanted to continue playing or continue competing. But we're seeing you here now, and it's such a joy to see you, and you've been killing it. So how is it like playing in the o OWCS, uh, competing again? 자 일단 저희가 마지막 얘기를 나눴을 때아 다시 좀 어, 경기를 뛸까 말까 고민을 하셨던 걸로 기억을 하는데 이제 다시 돌아오셔서 또 너무 나도 좋은 성적을 계속 내고 있기 때문에 지금 우리 오버워치 챔피언스에서 이렇게 경기에 뛰는 거에 대해서 좀 어떠신가요? 소감 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 원래는 이번에 뛸 생각이 없었는데 또 이제 좋은 기회를 줘가지고 다시 한번 또 프로하게 돼서 또네 한편으로는 마음이 좀 좋습니다. Yeah. Um, to be honest, when I first, uh, for coming into this year, I didn't really think about competing, but I mean, this, we, I had a good uh, opportunity with M80, uh, so I'm very thankful for this opportunity, and it really feels uh, good to be back playing and also competing as well. And talking about playing, I know that you are still in Korea, you are playing on ping. I'm guessing that it's very difficult, but for you, how difficult is it? 자, 방금 이제 뭐 경기 얘기도 하고 해서 지금 아무래도 지금 아직까지 한국에 계시기 때문에 좀 아무래도 경기를 뛰는 게 조금 더 어렵지 않나 생각을 하는데 좀 얼마나 좀 어떤 어려움들이 있나요? 일단 트레이서가 핑에 또 이제 제일 중요한데 을무사가 제일 많이 나는 게 제일 힘들고 근데 뭐 너무 쉬워가지고 오늘은 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, it's definitely because I'm playing a lot of Tracer and you know having a good ping is very important for important for Tracer. And when you're playing on ping with that with that hero, uh, there's sometimes uh, death that occur that you don't really know how how that happened. Uh, but if, but but today it didn't really matter because it was sort of an easy win. Loving that confidence. Uh, very one last question. Tomorrow is a very important game. You guys are going up against Toronto Defiant. They're another uh, a giant team. So how do you think that's going to be played out? 자, 내일 토론토의 경기가 있는데 아무래도 토론토도 굉장히 잘하는 팀이기 때문에 좀 경기 어떠실 것 같으신가요? 토론토 물론 잘하긴 하는데 어제 약팀들 상대로 이렇게 힘들어하는 거 보니까 저희가 쉽게 이길 것 같아요. Uh, they're definitely a good team, but um, I, I, I've seen their matches. They were struggling with some of those weaker teams. So I think it's going to be an easy win. Pelican, thank you so much. That is it for the interview. Good luck moving forward. 자, 이걸로 인터뷰 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다. 안녕, 세훈아. 안녕, 세훈아. Easy win, huh? Easy win. I mean, it was, it was, right? Like, in the end, there were some close moments, but each map went pretty decisively in the right. favor of M80. I, you know, I feel like I still put respect on the players on, on LG and they did put up a good performance, but I can't blame Pelican for being confident and for really looking ahead to the to the biggest challenges in NA like Toronto Defiant. All right, let's take a look at the updated dra uh, bracket uh, with M80 winning winning the uh, match today. Like I said, with a Pelican, they are going to be facing up against Toronto Defiant. Is it going to be an easy win for M80? Honestly, That's I don't a think so. <laughs> that'll, I think that'll be very close. Honestly, very competitive. I do feel though the meta trending towards Orisa is good for M80. I think yeah. for someone like he's a very flexible player. I'm sure he can handle the Orisa, but Hawk, that's probably got to be one of the heroes where his mechanics are going to be felt the strongest. Yeah. And of course, we still, our second match, now that uh, Luminosity Gaming did get the uh, loss, so they are going to be going up against Pip.
Yeah, and Pip, not to be underestimated, took two maps from Timeless, who themselves uh, played a really close series against Toronto Defiant yesterday. So, you know, you took this loss 3 0 in a very tough series against the M80. You don't want to underestimate Pip going into the next one because that means you'd, you'd be out. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's good. like you said, it's going to be an important one. Uh, you know, we've got an elimination match uh, coming up. We'll give the we'll give Luminosity Gaming a chance to gather themselves and take a shot at Redemption against Pip. So first, in case you guys missed it in, uh, this morning, we got a chance to hear from Aaron Keller on the Overwatch team about the future of the game. Take a look. Oh wait, wait a second. Beautiful. Looks good. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Good. Yeah. Ready for this. Can I just go? Oh. Hello, everyone. This is Aaron from the Overwatch team, and welcome to our first developer update of 2024. We have some news that we're excited to share with all of you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we release heroes, a new way of unlocking mythic skins, as well as some gameplay updates. So let's start with heroes. Last year at BlizzCon, we gave you a look at our next hero, Venture. They're an eccentric and daring adventurer with a unique kit that includes the ability to dig underground. We can't wait for them to join the lineup in season 10, and we want all of you to have the opportunity to play Venture as soon as they are released. Heroes are one of the most exciting additions to the game, and we want all of our players to have immediate access to them when they launch, which is why I'm thrilled to share that venture and all future heroes will be free for all players when they launch. Starting with venture, heroes will no longer be unlocked through the battle pass. This includes all previous Overwatch 2 heroes. In addition to this, we're introducing a new way to unlock mythic skins in Overwatch. We'd like to give everyone more choice in how they unlock and upgrade mythic skins. Our goal is to give you more power over which mythic skin you would like to work towards. And starting in season 10, we will debut our mythic shop. This will enable you to acquire mythic skins from previous seasons you may have missed. So if you've been eyeing that Cyber Demon Genji skin, this is your chance to get it. We'll have more details to share about the mythic shop and how it works as we get a little closer to season 10. Alongside these changes, we will also continue to evolve and add to the core of the game to keep things fresh. The changes we made to our competitive system and some of the core mechanics of Overwatch Combat in Season 9 are all great examples of this, and it's something we want to continue doing. Part of our vision for these big updates to competitive is to give the game a regular heartbeat. Newer updated systems, shaking up PvP, rank resets, and new rewards are all examples of the sorts of updates we'd like to continue doing. How often this happens is something that we're still looking at, as well as listening to all of you about. Additionally, we've already made several sets of balance changes in Season 9 and are committed to continuing to make the game as fair, fun, and competitive as we can. Let's talk about maps. We're going to be releasing several maps in the next few seasons. We have a new push map, Runasapi, coming in Season 11. Uh, Runasapi is set in Peru, and it gives players a glimpse at the Solar Warriors as well as Alari. And it's also gorgeous and a blast to play. We also have a new mode, Clash, with two new maps releasing later this year. And we're excited to announce that we're going to be running a limited-time Clash playtest on Hanaoka at the start of Season 10. When we first launched Overwatch 2, we set out to create at least three new maps every year, with the intention of releasing one every other season. But as we've added more and more maps to the game, we heard from you that you'd like us to put as much time into our live maps as we do into making new ones. Based on this feedback, we'd like to continue to make existing maps as fun as possible. We're going to be reworking Coliseo in Season 11, and even more exciting, Sometime after Season 12, we're looking at creating a season that will be focused on map reworks rather than a new map. This final map list is still being discussed, but you have given us a lot of feedback about Dorado, Circuit Royale, Havana, and Numbani, so we're closely looking at those maps. The most important part of these plans is you. 
The Overwatch community is on track to reach 100 million players next season, and our team is dedicated to developing this game alongside you. Game alongside you. We've been listening closely to your feedback, and ahead of season 10, we'll be back with another developer update to share even more upcoming changes. You'll hear from different developers at Blizzard and Team 4 to share how we're addressing disruptive player behavior, grouping restrictions in competitive, and player anonymity. So keep an eye out and make sure to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for upcoming announcements. Thank you so much for watching, and let's make a great game. Do you want yep. to save the Twitter again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was just the yeah. tail of the airplane. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, here we go. The final ma map list is still being discussed. We've been listening, listening. Yes. Cool. No, Aaron, we should be thanking you. We're getting just so many stuff. My you go. hero? My go. Oh. You hero? I you mad? You I'm just, game mode? I'm just so psyched to see like this huge focus on this PvP game that we all love and that there's so much passion for in the community and to see the dev team be fully refocused on that and to be putting the resources there. It's, it, for me, it warms my heart because that's what I love. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been doing this for the last eight, nine years. What is it, nine years now, Johnny? Have you been doing one? it I wasn't years? in the beta. You were unlike some people, I was not in the beta. Little Jake on the World Little Cup Jake. 2017. Little playing the Jake, hangers where were you in the World Cup? I was analyzing when you oh, were playing right, Santa Monica. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boomers. Yeah. 2016 World Cup, where were you at? I didn't. Was the game even out? Was that beta? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can't remember I what you're doing. I was year analyzing year back then. Oh, boy. Oh, I can't believe I'm still here. I was just a twinkle in my, in my father's eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys done? <laughs> We're done reminiscing. We're never done reminiscing, let's be honest. You know what's but important? Now hey, we can pause. hey, stage one is very important. Stage two, how much more important? Also, is double very important. important. Why? Double important. Double important. Double points, double points, points. Baby. You know, you get, you need, you guys all need as much, as many points as possible to get a chance to go to DreamHack. So everybody, sign up for OWCS stage two. Can't wait to go to Dallas. Go to DreamHack, get these yep. big cash money prizes, right. or come watch these teams, the best teams yep. in the world competing. That's it's actually so exciting, right? Yep. Like we don't get to know who, which region has the best read, the best strategies until they clash in Dallas. That is going to be so. Hard. It's Korea. It's, All it's right, Korea. I'm an NA believer. You know what? NA can. NA is producing real strong teams here. Yeah. Are you going they for will for not NA? flop. I want to they will Fine not flop, list. guys. So you're going NA? Yes. EMEA. Asia! Yeah, 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 Look, I'll, I'll be real. Look, <laughs> Twisted Minds and NC Sports are better than North American teams, so. Well, which North American teams? Well, I meant all of them, but I well, let's wait for the Preds. Let's wait for the I was, Preds. I was making a hot take. All here, right, all right, just... all right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And also, again, here. guys, you guys just saw the graphic, but uh, yeah, buy the tickets for DreamHack. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of different games, but we're going to be there. That's the most important thing. And also, uh, That's Johnny's going to buy uh, coffee for the first uh, thousand people. Million, I heard. Million. Million? No. Was it 20,000 20, or 10,000? tickets 000? sold. 1,000. So you're going to choose <laughs> 1,000, 10,000, or 20,000? You're supplying it, right? <laughs> huh? It's your own beans that you're cooking at home. <laughs> your own Danny's growing that's, beans. That's a, lot, that's, at a, home. that's a lot of beans. You're roasting bro. at home. Yeah. I'm bringing that to the checked luggage. They're gonna Freshly be like, roasted. Do you have anything to declare? Where do your beans come from, Danny? Huh? Yeah, your coffee brand. You're from my up. cats. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink the coffee, guys. Do not drink the coffee. You could have gone so many weird Under directions with that, Danny. You could have gone so many you're directions. Not, do I don't know. I don't know coffee. where coffee beans come from. Well, <laughs> what do you mean? Korea? They're grown on trees. Huh? They're grown on trees. They're like bushes. You, you dry them out. It's, it's on trees. Them. It's not from. Is this the, from trees? Like what? You think they grow from the ground? <laughs> you like pluck as beans from the ground? It's from a tree? Yeah. I think. It's like a bush. It's not <laughs> like a tree. Yeah, it's not a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know either. Yes, I do. Why do you call it a tree? <laughs> oh, that's right. You can start your first language. You know, like, right. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's exactly, a very yeah. a bush is like a very small tree. In Sweden, yeah, right? Say the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> they don't grow coffee beans in Sweden. You should have said Ethiopia. Yeah, Ethiopia? I was gonna say that. Oh yeah, my God. yeah. My coffee's, coffees come from Ethiopian trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, according to Johnny. We're losing it. Uh, Zoe.
Help. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we going? Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. Let's. I guess we talk about the first match. Uh, the second match that we're, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at the yeah. second match. <laughs> LFL. <laughs> no. Well, oh, yeah. LFL versus Pip. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay. Before we move on to the game, uh, mm -hmm. we, let's talk about uh, two teams uh, that had their matches yesterday LFO and Pip. You know, they had, they had some tough battles. Yeah, yeah. played right? off stream. Pip, though, all the, going all the way to map five. In the end, Pip closing them out. LFO did look like a pretty respectable team, but. They were nuked from orbit as the team disbanded after this loss. So Pip can can you know try, that's like one one notch on the axe, one one successful they, team they destroyed. Got a, they got a few circuit points though. Got like a one circuit point each. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. We, you know we we call this a bit of an upset because uh, you know a lot of these guys from Pip uh, haven't been able to see them before. Magic Mateball from the Pro Am last year. Remember? Mateball. The legend. The, the legend. The legend of Magic Mayball live here. But you look at the side next. of LFO and you're like, oh, MCD, Mirror, Seeker, they should have this. And then they just fall flat on their I face. I mean, they hit the full hold and then yeah. the classic Shambali fuller hold. Oh, that's that's actually map. pain. That they, is real. They should painful. have this map to the rework. That's they, saying, I don't know. I don't hate Shambali, honestly. Maybe move the first point cap back a couple of meters. I, I think the map's kind of interesting. The, each point is very unique and different. I'm not a hater of this map, yeah. actually. Sorry, Jake. I, I took you wrong, like the wrong path. Anyway, Damn. Pip, the surprise of the they tournament. They full held from there. That spot is crazy to make a fuller hold. Wow. Big respect to Pip. The mental fortitude, that little push, like not even getting around the corner there, it's brutal to try and defend like that. And yet they did. Strider on the tank. I think this guy used to be a ball one trick, but he's kind of he got it all going <laughs> I on. love Jake, because we've been watching North America, and Jake just references his ranked games for like the past <laughs> five years. It's just like, oh, King. I remember when King was a far out one trick in my games. And look at him now, King, flourishing into a fantastic Genji and Tracer player. I feel oh, like I infected. watched them grow. Oh, I played with Infected when They're I was like... 12 years old. <laughs> when he was a little, little kid. <laughs> I feel like I've watched them grow, though, you know? And I'm excited to see them come to the big stage and now everybody gets to see them shine. You know, I think that's, for me, that's personally what I'm like loving the most about this is like all these new faces and they're not just new faces where in the Overwatch League, you know, so all these rookies come in and rarely do they have a huge impact, right? Like it's it's pretty uncommon. Whereas here with, we're seeing full new teams yeah. coming yeah. in and dominating. I think part of that is with all the changes with the game, um, all the updates people we've been getting, there's a real opportunity for people to, to shake things up and beat established veterans. Like if you aren't still motivated and grinding, you could easily be caught by some of these more motivated, more more focused young players. And that's even why it's more important. You got to sign up, sign up for OWCS qualifier number two. Get here. I want to see more, more young players coming up. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, we got to keep producing these talent, NA. We got to catch up. Korea is like a very far ahead. And also, oh, I heard that OBS Sojourn on YouTube has some really good uh, player POVs mm -hmm. as well. For people want to learn, you want to take your game to the next level. Yep. Very smart. Go to OBS Sojourn YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Watching yep. player POV is very valuable. Get to see what how they approach the game. Maybe learn things you, you didn't know about. Different spots to play the map. Got to check out the Dark POV. All right. The crew. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I've been told that there's a tank top pole. Oh, All right, yeah. so this is what oh. happened. Uh, in the yes. morning, I, I, I'm wearing like a tank top underneath, and then and then Jake's like, "Hey, you should show that uh, when we're on, when we're live." And I was like, "I'll do it only if chat says yes." But guys, just letting you guys know, do you guys really think about this? Come on, do you guys really want to see a 30 year old man? No, 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 you guys take don't. off his you cardigan. Guys, Danny thinks Twitch chat is not gonna vote. To, to, to have a tank top on. Well, now screen. if you say it, they're it's gonna so do it. It's so obvious it's gonna be a yes. This is like, oh, I will bet money this is a yes. I don't, I'm not a gambling guys, man. Before you guys this say is not yes, a gamble. No, the it's poll a is live. Conclusion. Yes, but, but, let me just, let me just double check. Do you think about it really hard before you click that button? Do you guys really want to see a 30 year old Korean guy? You do, <laughs> you do. The answer is yes. Uh, they voted the answer, yes. They voted 94%? yes. 94 percent? See, this is not a surprise, Danny. This is the expectation. Show the guns. All right, gonna, uh, it's, it's gonna be the quick. Uh, all right, so uh, Pip, Pip, <laughs> Pip versus uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we're, we're, okay, we're, we're going to we're Pip going to break first. Pip versus velocity after this. Okay, I'm just gonna do half. I'll do the other Get half. A little uh, taste. I'll do the other half when we come back from the break. Yeah, when we come back from the break, our first uh, first match, our second match is going to happen. So let's take a quick break, and when we get back, I'll show you <laughs> my thing. Take you to the gun <laughs> show, baby. Ooh. <laughs> Can I, can I work this out? Oh, go to break. Go to break. <laughs> Leave us. <laughs> break.
Welcome back everybody, we're starting our match number two, Pip versus Luminosity Gaming. It's gonna be good. Pirates in pajamas. Pirates in pajamas? It's yeah. a good name, check out Pirates. the logo. Pirates. Oh, is it really Pirates in pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't know it was Pirates in pajamas. <laughs> it's, a a big, it's a big win for them though, up against yeah. LFO, to be, to be coming here, still alive in the lower bracket. I didn't expect to see it. It fuels you up. You're an underdog, mm. and you've already mm. overcome a roster that you're right. like, oh, should we be able to beat LFO? Now, you're playing against a Luminosity roster that just lost 0-3 against M80. This is a great opportunity to like surpass all expectations and secure even more sugar points. Yeah, I think eyes are gonna be on Strider. Can he replicate the aggression that Hawk was showing? We did see in that clip from LFO that they were playing that Arista comp, so it it's possible, but well, I guess we'll get to see against LG, can you still replicate that success? Yeah. And of course, they're going up against Luminosity, who suffered a tough loss, but do you think they, they guys, they could uh, uh, make a comeback? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of standout moments still from this roster. You're playing M80, which is one of the best teams in the region. Vision again, I think Vision was a standout in that series. His Sojourn gameplay was extremely good. Right. Then also had the later swap to Cassidy as well, which could prove useful in this matchup if you need to utilize it. I've seen Vision on Ash, for example, in the past. And well, I don't think Ash is that meta at the moment. You know, it's good to know that your Hayscan player is comfortable swapping around depending on what you're currently facing, right? So if we see a matchup which requires some flexibility, this roster is definitely capable of it. And Dante, I think the big question for this series is, are you going to commit to the Saria, or will we see Dante flex up some of his tank picks depending on what they're playing too? Yeah, he definitely can handle the Arisa, but Zarya has to be a comfort hero for him. So, uh, like you said, I guess that's a big question for them. You don't have much time, right, coming into this match. It's, that's the price of taking the L in the upper bracket. You have another chance, but not much time for back to the drawing board where Pip has been able to watch you. Uh, so the question is, can they sort of stop the momentum or stop the bleeding of that loss and, and turn it into some positive momentum? I think map one is very important for the, sort of the emotional standing of the series. Yep. All right, for, I mean, looking at the map picks, we're going to some, we're going to some more first, uh, selected by Luminosity Gaming. What do you guys, what's your takeaway from that? I mean, LG has picked this map before. They seem to like Samoa, just a comfortable map for them. I do feel like this is, I mean, some of the maps are very close range, right? Like on Volcano, I could totally see the Zarya's range uh, making her really powerful. I think it's when there's even these long range engagements and there's hard corners to turn. That's where the Arisa felt the best. And I'm not seeing so much of that on Samoa, so it might be an indication at least on this map, they could stick with what's, what they've been practicing, what they've been training. All right, Pip versus Luminosity Gaming. Let's get right into the game. Jack and Matt, take it away. Thank you, 
Thank you, Danny. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to do some telestrations and just be like this and just over you there. Should do, you should absolutely <laughs> come and do that. You gotta do that, Danny. A hundred. Look how jacked that need, man is. We need a poll. We need another poll. We need a poll where I would want to see Jake with Danny's tank top on show the cat <laughs> off. I I think they should do. Like a, you know, get a like wardrobe swap or like sports. <laughs> they do a jersey swap. You guys should just stand there and do a shirt swap with each other there for for the next segment. I think that would be great. What is this show turned into? I like it honestly. I think we should keep going. <laughs> next My level for the content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's get into the game. Yeah, Pirates in Pajamas versus Luminosity Mad. I mean, Pirates in Pajamas right now, they got knocked down to the lower bracket by <laughs> Timeless. They're on a full revenge That's tour a bit here surprising. too. Um, yeah, oh yeah, wow. All right, match prediction from the chat. Pirates in Pajamas, <laughs> 78 to 20. Two? Oh, it's, it's the other oh, way around. That's apparently. wrong. Okay. Well, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, was going to say, I was like, man, people are turning their back on Luminosity. Yeah, quickly. Uh, like, oh, yeah, we're out. We're out. <laughs> There's like, no uh, way. Nah, I never want to see them again. <laughs> uh, no, that'll be 78% in favor of uh, Luminosity. But Pirates and Pajamas, the, the lesser known names of the uh, players will have in the server. But they've been on a, a quite nice run. Uh, they're running that Arisa comp, which we just saw give Luminosity trouble, where we haven't had too many like major upsets, I would say, uh, in the OWCS uh, thus far. Uh, yeah. Maybe this could be one, uh, you know, on the outside, you know, po possibly an upset. Or, they're just, uh, you know, looks they're beating like them while they're down, Matt. That's all you need one. to think about when you're going into this game. Is yeah. that, hey, you just lost 3-0. Just start, you know, pummeling them. I mean, I think Pirates of Pajamas, they got the tenacity to do it. They're Like I said before, they're on a revenge tour here. Got knocked down by Timeless. They got beaten by students of the game in their group as well. Like, uh, whoever they face or whoever the, the winner of the next match is, they will face if they end up winning here. So they got to make a full lower bracket run and they get some sweet revenge as a cherry on top. But first, their opponent is Luminosity Gaming. And yeah, like you said, name value wise, yeah, Luminosity definitely have the edge here. But from that last game, and the death spoke about it a little bit, Luminosity, it wasn't uh, that definitive, but it was still them going down zero and three. I mean, Pip, they must be feeling really confident in their game right now coming into this you've got to have like confidence of uh of an elephant here and have an elephant they have confidence right uh, yeah, so. I, I mean the the elephants are elephants are pretty large right so i assume that they have you know <laughs> a lot confidence of confidence seeing all the other small small critters running around um yeah it'll be luminosity ended up running the arisa here so they they kind of go we saw them run the Zarya pretty much, a, you know, all throughout the last series outside of like right. Midtown. So now they actually want to kind of like play this mirror. I really like this. I think on this point specifically as well, the Zarya is a little bit harder to pull off because you're not really kind of engaging in close range. You're, you're literally just waiting for your DPS to find picks and help them with the bubbles. And you can't really do much of this either, especially when the point does unlock. Looks like Strider wants to push Dante off of the high ground. However, Luminosity do manage to find the, the cap fairly early on. Dante willing to take that 1v1. Doesn't want to let a uh, death go pips uh, or their way. So they end up just surviving for as long as they can. They get the cap and then they go on their assault. Magic Mate Ball and Vision do end up trading here, but Luminosity still control the point. Taehyung ends up falling down to Squid. There's a little bit of a, a roundabout there playing around that central column, but it's Luminosity coming out on top here with control of the point and the win in that team fight. Yeah, really like messy fight to kick things off. Uh, Luminosity ends up getting control of the point and then just kind of like bullies their way through uh, Pirates in pajamas. That's a long range stun there on a divinity. Gets him quite low. Uh, not not low, low enough to have him get finished off. But uh, let's see how this next fight kicks off. Pirates in pajamas. They're going to have to, you know, cross this large space here. Try and make a play for this high ground. Or, uh, I mean, you can drop low, try and contest. And that's what Strider decides to do. That's a really good pick as well. Oh, yeah, second one. All right, where are the supports? Uh, nowhere to be found. If you're Luminosity right now, Vision's got the overclock, but just getting, uh, well, not quite close to the overclock just yet. But um, if they had that one, maybe they would have turned that one around. But Pip taking care of both supports just like that. I mean, that's an easy flip. Luminosity managed to drag out for a few more percentage points there. So they didn't come out with a, a complete loss. At least it wasn't an instant cap from Pirates in Pajamas. 
you you also though uh you you get the kitsune rush right luminosity ends up using the kitsune rush there so pirates and pajamas they win that fight with that big support ultimate coming out right. from luminosity and now you have you know both of your support ultimates you have you no know, control of the point you're in a spot where you can you know tie it up and then even surpass the percentage game all right pirates they know they have the advantage with the rush Luminosity Suzu on to here. Dante. As, yeah, Luminosity just going for a quick disengage. No use fighting into that. You're almost bound to lose unless you find a pick instantly. Oh, nice bit. Knock Strider onto the low ground. This is bad for Strider, although nice little boot. Little bit of hill from Magic Maple, but no! Vision forces the Ajax. Magic Maple sniped out of the air. That beat, long gone, and so is Chronic. I mean, a little beat from Juby here was going to be better, but they might not have even needed it. Nice kill from Vision, just takes over that fight and an easy cap for Luminosity. Yeah, Pirates and Pajamas takes the lead, but man, what shots there by Vision. Connects uh, with Magic Maple, you know, not able to land that sound barrier right in that animation. Just gets sniped as uh, Vision uh, you know, had a really good series, you know, even in a 3-0 loss in the last one, I thought. Uh, you know, picking, uh, picking up where he left off here early against Pirates and Pajamas. Oh Taejong again coming out with a pulse bomb kill to start off the fight. However, gotta be uh, gotta be quite cautious here if your pirates are still fighting into a Kitsune rush. Pulse bomb for King, looking for the Lucio, Magic Maple. Got Blink smacked around the corner. So at least they trade the Lucios here. Pirates in pajamas still in control though. Just flip. Oh, good kill. Alright, good exit kill. With pirates finding uh, the flip, like you said. They could be able to play up here quite considerably. They might be able to make this last fight too if they really want to go crazy. Although no ults in the bank, Matt. I don't think they want to play that uh, up close and personal. I mean, you're you're relying on like maybe a you know uh, chronic railgun shot here to give you like a player advantage going in. Uh, but really, nobody has much of anything to work with here in our final fight. Uh, I know King's got this pulse bomb, but outside of that, everybody running on empty outside of Divinity now, building up towards oh. this rush could be massive. I mean, that's just an outplay there. Tejong just huge. outplaying King, forcing the recall and just hanging around, waiting for that to expire. And hey, would you look at that? A free kill on the Tracer. 99% taken over to OT. Pip making this one look easy. And Tejong specifically finding two picks straight out of the gate, straight out into some of these fights, these pulse bombs kills second fantastic so far again confidence brimming you'd imagine luminosity feels like they should not be in this position they don't want to be here again matt they don't want to go down 2-0 to start off a series and i mean it's kind of a, a brutal scenario probably worst case like you lose 3-0 like losing the first map here it's like you know how many times this players like dante or you know i mean really anybody on the team lost four maps straight right i mean yeah uh, probably r rarely ever right you just kind of uh you know, get in this pretty brutal cycle and for pip you're like hey you know we we beat lfo probably a lot of people didn't expect that to happen uh you come in here you win map number one you're kind of playing with house money i mean uh it would be a a huge win for them if they're able to do it is uh, Tejung will switch over to the tracer so uh, we're gonna get a good old run back here at our next uh next point high ground control though for pirates Squid doing super low. They receive a, a brief headshot there. Oh, Chuby, that was close. That railgun landed. Maybe that boop and a little bit of extra damage from the Lucio would have uh, resulted in a quick kill. However, Vision and the rest of Luminosity are able to start the cap. Now, with this push in onto the back line from Pirates in Pajamas, just uh, too strong. Both Sojins now down. So the tanks try and force the positioning of the other one. It's Dante getting the better of Strider. As King takes care of Tejong. Nice little cap there from Luminosity. Are some pajamas just unable to uh, get a first kill there, even though they have the high ground. GB escorting already back from spawn. They're going to be a full group by the time Pirates manage to get back themselves. Pretty similar to how the last point pick, uh, started off, though, right? Luminosity gets a you know a, a really fast first fight win, and then uh, Pirates and pajamas battle back. So. See, they want to take control of, over this like high ground area here over on like the left side of the point. See if they can get like the sojourn at a, a advantage up there. Maybe land a big railgun shot and then follow up after that. Found success with the post bombs before. Can he do it again? No, relying on the other DPS. Why not? Chronic lands a nice headshot to Vision. Post bomb from King hits the Orisa, but they managed to get away. That fortified spear spin enough for Stride to get out of dodge. 
Dante not quite so lucky though. Hedgehog again, opening up some of these fights with a pulse kill. Both the DPS from Pyrus in pajamas right now, feeling like they have vision and King's numbers. They're just gapping on DPS, especially these first picks. Luminosity are going to lose this point to Sejong. Just an absolute <laughs> beast on the tracer. My That's God, man, calm kill. down. It's like the the blink with the melee with like the recall and like all like almost like one type of like button press where like all kind of like registers at the same time. I mean, absolutely nasty stuff as Dante's going to step onto the point. Uh, just try and get some control, but I do like this spot that Pirates in Pajamas playing from, right? Can trying to control that high ground. All right, safe a beat from Magic Mabel there. Doesn't want to get sniped again. Nice terror search drags people in. Vision susceptible to that railgun when he's just kind of hanging around the Orisa Terror Surge. Points in control of Pirates in Pajamas right now with Strider locking Dante in a smaller prison. <laughs> this is the gameplay that I want to yeah. see. Just two Orisas looking at each other, just shooting and waving goodbye. Pirates in Pajamas in if, firm control. If they were Magas, they'd still be alive. <laughs> that is so uh, true. They, they'd just be, just, just be just standing at each other. Just raining bullets into each other's skulls, <laughs> but that's going to be Pirates in Pajamas uh, taking the lead, and that's like all set up. I know Strider goes towards the point, uh, does the terror surge, and then actually just drags a player in for Chronic to land a big railgun shot. So, uh, you know, interesting interaction there. But it's really been Pirates and Jumps controlling this high ground that overlooks the point. Uh, that's been the difference in their hole. Okay, Jones Pulse again. I'm ready and waiting for it. Bobby Chronic this time around. Doesn't need a post bomb for that kill. King just getting taken down by Tejong is, is so important for Pip's game plan now. Tejong could just harass the back line and maybe even go for a little spawn cap if he wants to, but with Strider dead, they've lost all their front line. I mean, Tejong ha had a perfect position to maybe get a spawn <laughs> cap or a kill on the back liner, but unfortunately, the rest of your team died. <laughs> Luminosity do end up fighting the flip. Paris and Pajamas up to 90%. They're hunting Tejong right now, and Dante, well, he smells him, but uh, luckily, Tejong gets us out alive. Just barely. Yeah, they probably would like to have him in that fight, uh, considering everything that happened. Oh, but Suzu Manasi get bullied off this high ground again. Oh, oh my God. Tejong again. We'll get a brief listening, though, near the ending of this map. We have a Rissa B on point. Just fight point with a Rissa B. What are you beating? Yeah, show me. Oh, see. Show, 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 show. I'm beating Dante. I'm beating all this Tojo. Only being Soch. Living, really live, really live, really live, really need to live. They've pulsed, they've pulsed, careful. I have in the chronic, chronic. Okay, I'm gonna need left. I'm starting to look for a result. This is storm condition. They have four left. Okay, okay, I beat for Sojo. Full rail left, full rail. If we see slide, we end the Sojourn. Yeah, she's real. Use her, use her. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I have I have for pulse. Tracer, right? Okay. I'm walking left side okay. with the result. Three, okay, two, yeah. one, or Sojourn, Sojourn, Sojourn. Sojourn, 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 Oh, my bad. Sojourn, just couldn't make that stick. Oh, my God. God, and you saw the uh, the cooldown uses there and the, just the calling of the ultimates too. Magic Mabel saying, I'm only gonna sound barry this Sojo, but they ended up going so deep trying to catch Vision, who did end up sliding away, but Dante just stood in front of the rest of the team, hit the fortify, hit the spin, and they just couldn't get to Vision. So Magic Mabel then forced a sound barrier and they just couldn't execute on it. And uh, yeah, no pulse bomb and Tezog not being able to pick up an early kill there was really their downfall at the very end of it. Yeah, I also think they could have like potentially engaged a little bit faster, right? They like back up and let them flip the point and then there's an opportunity where they put down some decent damage or maybe if they speed and then follow up with the sound barrier, uh, they have a window. I, I also think, uh, you know, at least from some of the comms, uh, I'd love to take another listen to it again, but like at another time, but it sounds like they maybe thought that uh, Luminosity had more ults than they actually did. Uh, that, you know, for, for a second, it maybe thought they like, you know, respected them a little bit too much, where on the other side, it was really just, I think the sound barrier from uh, Jubi, and that was it. All right, final round of Samoa now. Uh, I do uh, I do like this map in a way. It does remind me of Oasis, of course, with the uh, giant thing in the middle, and then there's got the little bit where you can run through. Very easy. The, the kind pagola of in the middle, as Mitch calls it. Pagola. 
Yeah, I think really? that's the word he uses. Pagola? Yeah, it's, it, that's what it sounds like, you know, I can't really tell sometimes. Yeah, he doesn't speak normal English, most of the time at least. Or maybe he's too intellectual for us to understand, probably the, the former. Uh, he like Fishing. reads books and stuff. <laughs> It's so true. Chronic going super low. All right, there's the kill. Chronic was so low in the back line there. King getting both the DPS of uh, Paris in pajamas. Nice clean fight. Chronic just uh, having to back all the way up there is kind of rough because your healer is obviously, or the main source you're healing at least, in uh, Divinity and the Kiriko was too far up just trying to heal Strider through all the damage. As soon as the Arista uses all those cooldowns, pretty big head hitbox, don't forget. So a lot of incoming soldier and shots can really make sure Arissa is uh, checked in the front line. That is a good spin. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, Pirates in Pajamas, right? Uh, you get so close to winning that round. I wonder if you're a little bit rattled. That Kasune Rashi in Sound Barrier here, layer for Luminosity. Yeah, they really wanted to save Vision, but cannot stay alive through the rush, through the Sound Barrier. They just couldn't keep him up. They saw the slide. They just inted in the game plan. And we heard from the comms, too, for Pirates in Pajamas is force the slide and then just int onto the Sojourn. Hey, it's been working out for them thus far. King, one HP, one melee shot. Do it, boom. Tedon is doing a good job of keeping King in check and a little bit more even this time around with uh, King picking up the first kill on Tedon, of course. It's uh, pretty similar to kind of like what the desk was talking about, right? Like find a target, uh, you know, and have the Arisa just charge that target down and uh, there's nothing really that player can do. So get the big movement cooldown out of the Sojourn uh, and then collapse right on top of that hero. As this point also feels like it's going to be one that's very difficult to, you know, take back. Just like the one on Oasis where we see just tons of stall. Uh, just lots of cover on the point. It's going to oh. lead to a lot of contest. Vision. Again, forced to use that slide super Ooh, early. Had nice to shots. back all the way up and Chronic landing some nasty shots as well. Yeah. It's a rough fight for Luminosity. Vision's playing super far up as well, Matt. And uh, knowing Pyrus in Pajama's game plan, like they are really just hinting on that character. Well, they're trying to as much as they can. And you can see Chronic willing to kind of step out and like get an off angle too. So when Vision does end up trying to peek back into the fight, trying to make their presence known, uh, Chronic's just got a fully charged rug. I'm ready to go. Yeah, when they push uh, the, the Sojourn now, right, with the Arisa, like the Tracer's coming on the backside as well. So there's absolutely no way that that Sojourn's going to be able to get out with their life as uh, Pirates in Pajamas takes a pretty healthy lead now. Luminosity needs to fight win fast, right? Because you can easily see Pirates in Pajamas getting up to 80 plus percent. Oh, here's that pincer again. Tejong almost finding the one clip onto Suzu. Suzu, Suzu was, was used. Oh, dear. No Suzu for Magic Maid Ball, unfortunately. Terra Surge is decent there. It actually catches Vision. A lot of a health bar kind of eaten away, but Dante is there for the trade. That rush is going to be put to good use, but Dante's just playing on top of it. So Paris in Pajamas can't really get in there and make use of that cooldown and that uh, damage increase, that rate of fire increase. And with Dante just holding down this point, I mean, the Pip, they can just kind of cycle around here. So they are able to gain some more percentage points and Dante is going to be able to lock this one down at least kill Tejong but still a 99% flip here is all that luminosity are going to get awarded uh, yeah I mean that's huge though right uh, if you're pirates in pajamas get it to 99 you know Strider probably switches back not going to kind of keep playing the doom into this uh yeah going to go back to the Arisa so you have about what two fights here if you're pirates in pajamas to maybe make a play he, he's on he's on one today. I tell you what, we did a walk earlier and he's not having it. <laughs> he wants another one, bro. Just take him in the break, man. All good. We won't blame him. All right, Chronic with the Railgun. We'll see how they approach this fight. Of course, they do have uh, the Sound Barrier, too, from Magic Mate Ball. We'll see if the same is kind of true here for Beat, but it looks like they, they probably just want to match Beats here. Juby wants to go uh, aggressive with his Sound Barrier. Almost flipped the map this point as well. Magic Mabel taking a lot of damage, just lining himself this up against like uh, Luminosity. It's going to be last fight with 15% to go, but with Tejong dead, Luminosity want to press this issue. There is the Terror Surge. Chronic has to get out of there. Luckily, a lot of that overhelp absorbing the damage from the Terror Surge. The Aris didn't hold it for that long as Vision and the rest of Luminosity just hound down Strider. Dante just performing Lord's work, just distracting two members of Pip, and there's the point, there's the cap, and Luminosity take the first map. Paris in pajamas just unable to get that one done. Oh, Luminosity really feeling themselves now. They got to get themselves back in this bracket, being knocked down to the lowers earlier on.
Yeah, Hugo wanted to get a good vision of vantage point there. Oh no, he's done. He saw the end of the map, and he, he he's good. Uh, he, he's 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 retreated back to his bed here at this point. But uh, crazy uh, into the map, and also like. Uh, what that fight probably kicked off like 70 percent uh on the point yeah. uh and, and we go all the way to the end i mean so you see there on you know just like how we see on oasis like uh city center like you get like two fights you know with how long you can just kind of stall that out and you lose the tracer early and it's really difficult for pirates and pajamas to bounce back from that although really close map number one uh, i think uh this series you know we, we say feel like uh, you know a lot of these series like oh it's gonna be close and it's a 3-0 but uh, this series looks to be, I think, I think it was just more of like, will this series be competitive, like back and forth? Uh, it looks like that Pirates in Pajamas definitely has the talent to hang with Luminosity. Yeah. We priced this in. We're going the distance, maybe four, maybe five. It's not going to be three Overwatch. Not a guarantee, of course. I can't make those. It's not happening. I always, uh, always get proven wrong in the end. Tejong had a fantastic first round here too, Matt, with uh, the Tracer picks were just spectacular. I think a lot of the time it's either, it was either him or Chronic getting a Railgun kill or a Pulse. Really good execution on the dives as well, but it felt like near the end of that, Luminosity getting a little bit more wise to what the game plan of Pirates in Pajamas was, and a lot of that time was Force Vision to use the slide <laughs> and then just run after them. I mean, this is just silly. That is just ridiculous. I mean, that is us. Arisa, Arisa gameplay moment. You know, yeah, when somebody's like explaining me pro Overwatch, that's the clip that we should use. Uh, <laughs> just but both the Reese is just dumping clips into each other in the corner as everybody else plays. But uh, no, I, I feel like the second round here is this is the one that probably Pirates and Pajamas needed to have, right? You, you know, right. you invest so much here at the end, try and make a play for that Sojourn doesn't really work out. Uh, probably a little bit of a window to go a little bit earlier, but uh, you know they don't have the benefit of knowing exactly what ultimates are on the other side like we do. Uh, and in this last round, it feels like that, uh, you know, luminosity that once they kind of like got that first pick off at the end, uh, there was no way they were going to lose it. Yeah, that uh, that play from Dante as well, just running to the back lining, hitting the terror surge, even if he gives up his life in that instance, he's distracting like two people at like a minimum almost there. And then you saw the rest uh, of luminosity like, oh, OK, we're just going to bundle on top of Strider who doesn't have CDs left. And then where's your point presence? Where's your front line? Where's your big engagement right. tool? Uh, and they ended up winning out that round. Pretty similar, uh, similar stats across the board here, Matt, on Samur. Again, no real shocks. It was very back and forth. I mean, we're really going to start seeing uh, the difference makers here a little bit later on in these different map types. It's always very chaotic control, it feels like. I wouldn't say it's coin toss, but it's as close as to coin toss as you can get uh, when it comes but to game modes. Yeah, the, I mean, the stats here, I mean, this is the closest you're going to get, right? Uh, I know where in a game of Overwatch, it feels like the stats are typically so lopsided, you know, somebody 3 0s the other or, you know, whatever, and we see the stats. Also, such a team oriented game even with the you know right. uh, newest update that uh you know one team blows the other out you're not going to see a crazy performance from anybody on the other side but i think there's some good things uh to take if you were pirates in pajamas from that map number one you can definitely hang seems like you know in the terms of the damage dealer battle uh, you know you're you're you get winning a lot of the time it feels like uh, i know at least you know from the first map uh, and you force them to play the Orisa, which seems like it's something you're pretty comfortable with. So uh, some good signs for Pirates in Pajamas, even though they lose map number one. Yeah, down to Clown, down to Clown with the Orisa. And it feels like a battle of the DPS for me currently. Um, uh, Chronic and Vision on the Sojourns, and then King and Tejong on the Tracers. These Tracers have been so, so sick. And it was backwards and forward. I mean, Tejong had a fantastic round number one, and then King was kind of slapping back yeah. as well. It's been really good to see. And I, like, come on, like, Tracer and Sojourn in the meta, like, what more can you really ask for? A little bit of Widowmaker too. I mean, we're seeing that sprinkled in. I mean, I'm a happy man. Also, want to see a little bit of Tor, which we've seen on Oasis. Like, it's uh, the DPS players are uh, eating right now. Sojourn feels like uh, creeping into always pretty good territory with Tracer. Uh, it just feels like uh, the ability to escape, the ability to burst damage, you know, consistent damage with like the kind of like SMG assault rifle uh, feels like can do just about everything. Uh, it's kind of, you know, when, when you look at like heroes like Soldier 76, like, and then you look at a hero like Soldier and just compare their kits, you can tell which one was made on release and which <laughs> one was made yeah, like so recently. So true. Uh, <laughs> Bro's got legs yeah, versus which her one was rocket like, feet or rocket uh, shoes, right. I should say. Can like boost jump into <laughs> outer space. Yeah. So like, you know, uh, 
kind of makes some of the other damage dealers like in that category like a little bit obsolete uh and then you combine that with tracer right just two damage dealers with uh, i know good consistent damage good ability to burst survivability like there's not a lot of reasons to veer away uh right. from those two heroes uh, at the moment luminosity on defense right uh we talk about you know the tracer and the soldier seems pretty uh staple across the board uh they'll actually have dante play the zarya so we'll get another shot at the zarya as pirates in pajamas this isn't going to be a sigma pick it's just that to start to throw the shield and then it's going to be the orisa so uh luminosity wants to go back to the zarya again uh you know after we, we saw them use it against m80 didn't exactly work there let's see how it works here against pirates in pajamas yeah, worth keeping in mind as well, though. Hawk versus Strider. Is, uh, quite, I don't know how uh, much you call that gap, but I mean, Hawk, one of the very best, one of the best to ever do it in North America, that is for sure. On the Orisa. Strider, uh, unfortunately, going down to Juvie. It's a quick reset. I saw a rotation through the, the small little uh, laundromat, I think that is. I think it's a laundromat. Um, and ideally, you just go into that mega health pack room, right? And then just peek your little head out. You're laughing, but I think that's a launch map, Matt. Matt, I think it's a, uh, it's gotta be, I think. There's tumble dries in there, I think. It, it, oh, it's gotta be. I mean, there's no <laughs> I mean, way. Like, can't, what else would it be? be? I, don't else, but, I mean, can't I don't be know. anything else but a laundry mat. There's no <laughs> what? way. What? What is it? Like a 7 Eleven or something? No, it's it's got washing machines in it, bro. Uh oh. <laughs> So any 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 building with a with a washing machine is a laundry mat? No, I didn't say that. There's multiple mats. Do you live do you live in a laundry mat? No, I don't. I've got one in my apartment. I've I've a dryer. I have a washer. There's All just right, a building. So for, in a for room you, it categorizes as a it categorizes as a laundry mat. Can, can you count? Do you have eyes? Put on your glasses, Matt. Come on, bro. There's like multiple. Okay, you, it's taking stuff out of context here. Come on, come on. Two minutes and thirty seconds to go, please. Let's get back to the game. That was a bit of a rough start from Pirates in Pajamas. Why are you saying please like you want somebody to manually no, set I would, the clock? No, I want you to uh, uh, please, uh, <laughs> how about please shut your trap, Matt, is what I'm saying. Uh, Strider uses every cooldown to get here towards that fire truck, and he is now in a very difficult position oh. as uh, just kind of gets like bullied towards the side here. And uh, that, That's what you saw when we had uh, the M80 series, like Hawk not have to do, right? He didn't feel like he needed to use those cooldowns to cross that gap. Right. Then the Orisa can use the cooldowns to, you know, get into the back line or, you know, get on top of a player. And that's when it becomes dangerous. Uh, in this situation, one Strider uses those cooldowns just to get to that point. Uh, then Dante just runs him. He's like, hey, I have two bubbles, and the Orisa has no defensives. Like, let's just charge uh, at her, and you see the Orisa just kind of crumble. Lumosti got to know they're ahead on ult charge in this point as well. So going early for Dante here might be name of the game. Catching that soldier would be absolute perfection. Spear's being already used. This is go time for Dante if he really wants to do it. Little bubble there on Vision, who's taking a fair bit of damage on that high ground, but still having a good angle to go for the cross. Looks like Chronic Wines is trying to get an angle there as well, but it's just uh, just not happening. Sam Barra comes out for Luminosity, a pulse bomb onto Strider. But Vision is just happy to just duel Chronic in the back line, who didn't end up crossing with the rest of his team. Dante in a little bit of trouble, same with Vision ends up dashing away. Nice little boop. Dante throws out the grab in the meantime, though, to make sure Strider can't continue his rampage. Sam Barra is going to make sure the Arista stays alive, but an extreme really messy fight here with Vision still alive in the train car too. Strider and the rest of Pirates in Pajamas are having to back up as Dante is going to come back in just a moment, but Pip want to make sure this is an even fight or, well, close to even as it can be, I'd imagine. Pirates now on the point, double DPS ult, but Luminosity still have a chance to come back in with this rush. Yeah, they're waiting for the rush here, you know, potentially getting into a good spot. And look at this, it's going to be the spear spin oh, just Strider. to try and stay alive here for Strider. He gets pushed all the way out. There's just no way. And Divinity dead to our oh, king up in the high ground. He was just waiting for him. Ten seconds to go. This is just a full hold from Luminosity. And maybe just a quick 2-0 as well. I mean, Tedong, there's nothing there for you, unfortunately. King tries to go for the <laughs> tries to go for the nice pulse. Didn't end up landing. Gave him the bag, and I would too. A full Damn. hold for Luminosity Gaming. Whips out the moves as well. Love to see it. He hits the dance at the end. That's tough. That's right there. The, the, that's the kill really into the verified Overwatch League player spray into the dance is, <laughs> you know, that's the, 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 the most like 
uh, you know, a Fortnite win uh, end <laughs> we've seen in a while saying? here to an Overwatch, <laughs> Overwatch type game. You know, Fortnite, you gotta like get that like BM there at the end of a game, right? That's, That's so like, true, you know, whenever you die, like somebody starts busting out the gritty, they're, you know, they're, <laughs> you know is, shooting confetti Overwatch out of their head. Getting the uh, gritty. Sure. Yeah, right? Give Trace for the gritty. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the. That would be sick. Wait a second. He's cooking. He's cooking. Uh, so uh, pirates in pajamas, they don't even get a tick, right? Uh -huh. They're just never able to close the gap to the fire truck and to the point, like, without everybody dropping, like, 50% HP. And when your you know, only option to live is to go inside of a really small room and the other team is playing Tracer and Zarya and they can just run in there, uh, you're not going to live uh, very often. So uh, it does not work out in Pirates and Pajamas favor. They look pretty good in map number one here at the start. In map number two, I believe this is their selection as well. Yeah. Uh, it, it, not, not off to a great start. They're going to play Sigma on defense. I mean, this is a, such a defensive comp uh, built around just like tons of damage, right? Uh, tons of poke damage. Sigma, Baptiste, and Zen going to make it very difficult for Dante to get in position. And then hopefully Ooh. for them, they have the Echo Are they just uh, gonna go get rid of it. But yep, they're going to switch right away. Oh, Diva. Winston, yeah, Diva. yep, 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 yep. Yeah, this is a good yeah, one. So you full on dive here. Yep. So this is a good decision here from Luminosity. Uh, instead of just trying to get that Arisa into position, like let's just dive and use hypermobility. You're also with the luxury of only needing one tick, right? So it's not like, you know, you, you need this comp to work out the entire time. You literally just need to get that first tick on the point and you're good. Do they know visions on the train car as well? That is the big question, because that backline is going to be pretty vulnerable. Yeah, Vision's already in the backline. Divinity in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Rock lands, but Vision hits the recall just in time. One tick, one tick, one tick. Well, yep, one tick was all, yep, all right, one tick. There it is, Luminosity. Yeah, they just push, well, they just push them all the way back. That was it. It was over. That was a speed run, surely, right? For that yeah, part. they probably would have, uh, you know, the, the dive was intended to get to the back line, get a kill, and then probably go back to the point, not just like not dive just and then have the Lucio the just I sit on the point. Yep. Yeah. Well, it happens. It happens. That's uh, look, you need one tick. You're falling back. I mean, yeah, that's a, a brutal way to lose that one. And uh, in a series where the uh, Pirates and Pajamas looked like they could take map number one, uh, they were not in map number two at all. I mean, that was a blowout. Uh, yeah, that was one. Of, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Next map. There it is. That's what you got to look for. Next map. Yep, the reverse Ignore sweep. One. Ignore that one. Reverse sweep starts now. Let's have a look at some of the highlights uh, from that last map. There were there were a few, yep. not as many as uh, we'd obviously hope and Pirates in Pajamas would hope. Um, yeah, that really was just a rough one, especially catching this many people on the cross as well. It, it's very hard. Um, when you are crossing you uh, with the Orisa, you just want to get onto the mega health pack and then basically flip the slides on them, but they were just unable to do so. And then the snowball well, advantage of the ultimate Luminosity he just came in clutch you need to get to that point with the arisa with having like the spear spin and the fortify up right, right? using spear spin to like get a close to the fire truck and then only having fortify i mean that is like a clear signal for luminosity that they can go right so when they see those cooldowns out uh they know they can get right in is uh here we go Bam. everybody moves uh that way and oh. you don't have speed right so there's no way to like speed on the point i believe nice. it's a boot as uh that is a uh, you know 69 kd there from uh luminosity nice. uh pretty 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 good pretty good no matt come on now you're supposed to say it's nice what is it nice it's nice it's nice it's yeah nice. it's nice 0.1 kda for paris and i mean come on like who's really surprised it was that much of a blowout that's on not town? nice that's yeah that's yeah. the opposite of nice yeah that's correct yeah i mean look map number three reverse sweep yep. starts right now i mean pip wants some revenge right they did get knocked down here by timeless and uh students of the game are facing timeless a little bit later on um and they That'll also be beat game. them at uh in the group stages so they want revenge at some point but they actually have to get there first but right now it's looking like a shutout for luminosity who on paper would be the stronger team here but map number one was very back and forth and it felt like it was going to go the distance but if luminosity can kind of uh, keep this up i don't think pirates want any of the smoke there's just no way uh, yeah i mean map 
number one looked like it was going to be you know set up for a really close series especially you know uh i mean if you were going to beat a team like luminosity this would be the time to do it right right uh directly coming off of a 3-0 loss uh they're playing like kind of a zarya comp and you're playing the arisa comp which we just saw like hawk and uh co really take advantage of uh in that series uh and you figure like hey this is pro you know if you're going to beat a team at this level at this moment like this is kind of be where you would want it to happen uh and right now luminosity is just not having any of that just uh you know a really strong map number two all right esperanza is where they can change things up if they want to but i think uh Riss is just the name of the game here for pirates in pajamas i'd expect uh Luminosity to just still run the Zara. It's been working out extremely well. Didn't work out, obviously, earlier on in this series um, against M80. But uh, I do think with uh, with how the series ended up going, it was a little bit closer than what it was on paper, but still uh, going down. Luminosity can make the salty run back if uh, if M80 managed to make it through against their match against Toronto Defiant a little bit later. This bracket is just so stacked. I mean, very top heavy in this region, it feels like. Uh, Jake, I know Jake was speaking about it on the desk a little bit earlier on, about how a lot of the talent, and especially some of this up and coming uh, North American talent as well, they've been in the gulag basically uh, against some of the best players in the world yeah. when the Overwatch League was around. I mean, some of these Tracer players were playing against proper in ranked. Like, there's no better practice than that, right? Going up against some of the craziest people to ever touch the game and that's why you're seeing so many high level teams here uh in the north america uh region uh, and there's also like time for teams to even make changes right you see some yeah, of these players absolutely. that are playing on like a uh, pirates and pajamas or players who are on lfo and like had really good performances right like they end up making a team together right the best pieces of them or you know one player just like performs at a, a crazy high level a team like timeless right like makes you know a finals run right and then you're looking at like hey like chopper and rocket right like you know these type of players like uh, where where can they go in the future and what can they do like whether it be as a team or kind of uh you know advancing their careers in a certain way so like i think there's a lot of opportunity for players to grow i also think uh you know, when you have uh, tons of teams who have played at the highest level and like a tons of players in this region who play at the Overwatch League level and like know what to practice and how to practice and things like that, it's going to take a little bit for everybody else to catch up. So I think uh, as the year goes on, these games will get even closer. Oh, 100%. And yeah, later down the line too, after this year as well, it's going to be getting even closer. Esperanza coming up though, just loading into the map now. Luminosity's map pick too. So Ban of Colosseo for pirates in pajamas so Vasa, if we make it there um whoop still esperanza don't worry it's all good yeah luminosity uh gonna come out the gate swinging <laughs> i would imagine yeah that was the wrong name it's all good though we're chilling yeah that would have been uh, a map one Li Zhang with a map two nepal which uh, i know if you paid attention to uh the the uh group stages when we ran the map uh, veto that is now possible uh <laughs> so that is true yes although it would be funny if um, we did have, I know because Korea and uh, some of the uh, Asia region teams right now have a slightly different format where they're picking the map types too. Um, it, it would be funny if teams just continually pick hybrid or like continually pick escort, oh, you yes. know what I mean? Pro, pro play becomes King's Row 24 seven. Yes, just, you know, hey, Let's just, go. Hybrid 24 To find out who's the better team, let's play King's Row six <laughs> times in a row. Okay, you can't pick the same map, uh, but you can pick, you, you know, you can, come on, come on. It would be funny if you could pick... Why not? You know, let him pick the same map. Pick Hybrid over and over again, I think it would be hilarious. I like Hybrid. Hybrid's a good map, uh, game type. Just saying. All right, roll. Uh, so they come out with Zarya here against the Arisa. That's really been kind of like uh, the story about Luminosity's day, right? Dante looked pretty good on the Zarya when they can keep him up. Uh, it looked very good uh, against these Arisa comps. Uh, I think it's, you know, at least what we're seeing this far, right? Is that like, uh, I know obviously Pirates and Pajamas putting up a pretty good fight in map number one, map number two, a blowout. But I think it was really how M80 M M was playing it, and like specifically Hawk was kind of playing that, uh, you know, matchup you know, with the you know, holding on to his cooldowns and just being, you know, great at Arisa. That was probably a big difference in that series. Yeah, definitely being good at hero definitely helps for the win. I think you've taken a Jake's coaching session there, Matt, with uh, those kind of comments. 
All right, King. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm using the Jake, the Jake coaching thing to make it to top 500. My goal, I, I told Jake, my goal is to be higher ranked than reinforced. So I think I only need to get to like diamond. But, May, I mean, uh, flat at most, brother. <laughs> nice win there yeah. for Luminosity. Good job from King as well. Starting that fight off, just uh, diffing Tejong as the bridge is now in control for them. However, with Luminosity's comp, you want to play a little bit up here, especially with the Zara, get some free charge, and just help your soldier too. If you can find an initial pick here, it's almost guaranteed for a, a checkpoint cap, and you can see Vision receiving a lot of support from the rest of his team. It's the slide, straight up onto high ground, fully charged railgun, or it was, uh, until no one peeked. Well, the, the hardest thing is pirates in pajamas taking like this sh ship damage coming in. This will be rush here from Squid. Oh. Uh, I know an answer oh. here from Divinity, but totally fine fighting in it. Uh, they just kind of like take some damage pirates in pajamas like before they even come in. And they're not even forcing like Dante to use any of the bubbles or anything in, right. in that regard, right? So once they actually like then decide like, hey, we're kind of low, like we can't just sit here and get poked down, we have to go. They're they're going, they're using all their cooldowns, but then Dante has both these bubbles to keep everybody, you know, uh, pretty healthy in terms of denying some of the damage, then also converting it into big damage for himself. So that'll be checkpoint here for Luminosity uh, ra rather easily here as uh, Strider will now go over to the Ramatra here to try and battle this. Tejon trying to check King on the flank here. King making it a little bit difficult though, actually forcing Tejong's recall. Sound barrier, Graviton surge. Oh, Chronic's in trouble. Four person grab. Yeah, Chronic, no chance. And then with Tejong, I mean, Dante was right in front of him. He whiffed the pulse, and that will be a team wipe for Luminosity. I mean, this is back to back to back fight wins, and they're getting it round almost around this final corner. It feels like swaps as well for uh, Pirates in Pajamas. They went the RAM, they invested so many ults into this one, and Luminosity could just play up. They've got a rush, a super early one at that. 40% ult charge over Divinity right now is Squid. So Luminosity are good for this fight too. Yeah, and the Zarya is pretty nasty inside of that rush. Is it looks like uh, trying to take some high ground here? Suzu already Four used. Pirates and is that no, Suzu's Suzu? already gone. Yeah, already. Oh, really early. Mm. Suzu is here for Divinity. Just too scared of King, just getting a one clip in the back line and a chronic suffers from a, a chronic case of pulse bomb in the back. Uh, Squid King coming up with kills. I mean, uh, Matt, this is a little bit of a slaughter. Six and a half minutes to go and they're on the final corner. And you didn't even have to use that rush if you were Luminosity. Oh, yeah. uh, Tejong gonna go over to the Echo here. Uh, try and see if they can get a target down, maybe half HP, burn him down, just to try and get some type of player advantage. But uh, th this has been brutal so far here. Uh, four pirates in pajamas, and which was a, uh, you know, a jaw certified close series is uh, looking to end. Uh, I said I could not exactly in that fashion. I said I couldn't give that guarantee. Okay, I prefaced it. I had the little asterisk if you read the terms and conditions. Rush uh, from Squid does push him forward. Stridus is taking infinite damage though, but luckily they've got a rush of their own so they can sustain through it with the uh, rapid healing coming out from Divinity. A uh, overclock met with Magic Maple's sound barrier, so no one's going to instantly drop. But without that, now Luminosity can just press four or uh, three ults and win, right? Got a beat. They've got a grab in five. They're just going to rush them down. Magic Maple uh, in trouble in disguise, manages to get away, but Chronic falls, and there's the grab to end oh. it. All post bomb on top, the bigger bang detonates Pirates in pajamas. A full cap on the horizon for Luminosity should just be a clean 3 0. Uh, this is Pirates in pajamas, maybe touching a doom on the Kiri, but I don't think there's enough healing in the world to save you now. Luminosity cap the point, finish the game with a 3 0, and that was a lightning fast series. That was an ugly last map. I mean, that was, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for pirates in pajamas in a way in that, uh, you know, we, we probably, we, we see them put up a better performance than that, but man, they just got dumpstered there in the final map by Luminosity. Uh, really, you know, doing everything right, running that Zarya comp to perfection. And uh, it didn't seem like pirates in pajamas really had an answer for it. No, nah, that, that first map was close. Don't get me wrong, control. A little bit closer, went all three rounds, right? But yeah, those last two, getting full hold, uh, full held on Midtown, and then not winning yeah. a single fight on Esperanza. 
just it, that that couldn't have been one uh, more one-sided. Lumen obviously want to make their Soi run back. They want to get through this lower bracket now. Their next opponent will be the winner of our next game. That's timeless and students of the game. Um, another fantastic right. series coming up, and uh, two teams that a lot of people may be underrating a little bit. Maybe timeless, uh, timeless fans True. out there got a lot of hope for this next series. You know, Luminosity, they're looking strong right now, uh, but can they continue that momentum? Guys on the desk, what do you think? How'd you find that series? Pretty quick final two maps. Very quick. I mean, yeah. Yeah. great that stuff from Luminous Gaming. Yeah, that Classic was a push speed run to close it out. Yeah. Quick. I mean, honestly, like after you're getting their first loss, I was like, oh, maybe is that going to affect them? Not at all. They came in ready. They were like, hey, let's get this thing done. Let's get this dub and move on. Yeah, credit to Luminosity. But at the same time, I'm kind of sad that we didn't get to see Pip put their best yeah. foot forward because at the end of the day, they had a good tournament. They took a couple maps from Timeless, which, you know, uh, Timeless is really good. And then also you beat LFO in the lower bracket. So I was really excited to see Pip put their best foot forward and try to, you know, take some maps there from Luminosity. So it's a bit of a shame that especially Midtown mm -hmm. was just so one-sided and yeah. it didn't even touch the points. Yeah, that first uh, map was, so. was very close, very hotly contested. Um, still, we got to see definitely good plays from both sides. I thought, hey, I thought there, were, there were moments where, where Pip was gonna run away with that first map. Um, but LG bringing out the Arisa looking good. I will say Strider hit a body block on this map. That was that, that was cool Matt 69 level. I'm gonna call that one right <laughs> out. That is, a, that is a rare high tier body block play at this level of the game. Very, very sick. So there were, were bright spots from Pip, but you got to admit LG just, they had so much after the fact, after map one, it was, it was really just, a, it was a one-sided affair. I mean, it wasn't really competitive from there on out. Yeah. Yep. I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean, now you're looking at Luminosity and what they can do in the rest mm -hmm. of the bracket here. They're going to face either the winner of Timeless and Students of the Game. So they can build on this. We saw them, you know, they're able to flex, flex over to the uh, D.Va compositions, you know, when Strider pulled out the Sigma composition. So they can play some different compositions here and there, but, uh, you know, they, they, they'll want to improve against their 0-3 uh, loss against them, maybe. Yeah, I, I think this sort of makes me think like maybe M80 is a much heavier hitter than we thought. You know, we sort of put them in the top three. Maybe maybe they're one of the very best teams because they did kind of demolish Luminosity, not not as clearly as this match was, but still it was it was pretty favored from M80. So, I mean, LG's still looking amazing, still looking like they want to make a run back here with King, player of the match. Well-deserved, great performance on Tracer, 67 and 6. Woo! That is a beatdown. This guy did not go down too often in the series. And also, we have to talk about, you know, that the, the play that he did uh, where... Oh, the... The, 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 the pulse bomb that that the spray yeah. in the pulse bomb yeah. body. That's... You know map 3. That, he so gotta, literally you gotta credit him combo? with map 3. You gotta credit him with map 3. He put the wombo combo on him, and then yeah. map 3, it was like, there's no more mental left. And if, it, it, it happened so fast. I was like, was that 2? Was that a was that a tea bag to a spray, or was that another thing? And Jake was like, no, that was a pulse bomb as well. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? Yeah. Every, everyone, all hail the king, and we're talking about king because we love king, and we have him for the post-match interview. Please welcome King uh, from Luminosity. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. big congratulations on getting the win. Uh, Jay, can you, do you want to start the uh, interview? Yeah, so I'm just really curious about what it's like, you know, being on a collegiate program that's now partnering with Luminosity and, and what that experience been for you like as a competitive professional player. It's been a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of work trying to balance like school and like trying to get better in scrims, but uh, it's a, definitely an experience I didn't expect this year. But yeah, it's a lot of fun right now. All right, congrats, Ken. I got two questions for you. So the first one, we got to ask, of course, you took a 3-0 loss to M80, but then, you know, quickly had to adapt. You're playing against Pip. What was the, how did you reflect on the loss against M80 and how did you prepare going into the match here against Pip? I think it was pretty night and day. I think we felt very scared versus M80 and then versus Pip. We we're like, okay, let's wake up, play our game, just walk in there. And it was like pretty night and day. So I feel like if we just play our game more, like it'll be a lot easier for us and look yeah. better. Yeah, it looked real clean. Yeah. Now, I've been, I've been talking to some players in the North American region. And especially recently, there's been multiple players who's been saying that you are the best Genji in the region. I was just curious about your thoughts on that. What, what are some other Genjis you respect? But are you the best Genji? I know you didn't play Genji right now, but like, are you the best Genji in the region? I think I'm definitely one of the best. I'll say it's probably tit for tat for like me and Sugarfree, I'll say. Like, I'm not really too sure, but I'm definitely up there for sure. 
Yeah, we, I, I agree as well. One final question. Your next match is going to be against uh, either Timeless uh, or uh, Students of the Game. Uh, King, who would you rather face for your next match? I'd probably face Students of the Game. I want to play versus PG again, but for who wins, I'm actually not sure, but definitely Students of the Game. All right. I think that pretty much wraps up the interview. King, thank you so much for your time. And again, big congratulations on getting the win today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, King. Thank you. Great guy. I, I love his confidence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's confident, but, but I, I love that, like, the way the whole program is going, that whole team coming together. Yeah. I want to see them have some success. I want to see them making, making a deep run of the lower bracket. And honestly, even though they might have to go up against Timeless or students of the game, I feel like those are winnable matches for them. Even though Timeless did play Toronto close, I feel like, for me, this region is just looking more and more closely matched as time goes on. I have more and more confusing results it's not easy to put like a stack ranking of all these top teams and that's because i think they're all tightly matched and it's all about style and about confidence about you know any given day these matches could go differently and so i, I think we really do have a contested bracket for who's going to go all the way in north america i mean uh i mean king wanted to face uh students of the game but that is going to be our final match and it's gonna be i don't know we're gonna have to wait and see and watch who's gonna win and go up against the uh, luminous gaming it's gonna uh, be an uphill gaming. battle I'm yeah Timeless <laughs> looked real good yesterday. True, true. Timeless has been great, but, but hold on. I mean, if, if Pip can can take Timeless to a map five, and then yeah. they get absolutely clapped by Luminosity, you know, the transitive properties are, are seriously I knew you were going to say it. I knew you were going to say it. All right. That's what I'm we saying. Say the analysis is not easy, yeah. which, means, which means I think there's a lot more closely matched teams than it would seem based on some of these results. I mean, we're going to be finding those uh, finding those questions, answers to, this, to those questions right now. Uh, we've got our last final match of the day with Students of the Game versus Timeless next. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everybody. We are on our final match of the day. Timeless versus students of the game. This is definitely, I think it's, it's going to be a close one as well. Timeless, of course, yesterday played it really close. But unfortunately, you got lost. But hey, today, maybe today you get the win. They couldn't close it out. It really it felt so like Timeless close. was going to win it. But then yeah. we went over to Circuit Real on map five. And for the most part, it did feel like Toronto Defiant were in control when it came to Circuit. You know, you get a deflect kill and stuff to like cap points. But it felt like Timeless. They had a chance. They yeah. couldn't close it out against Toronto. Yeah. It was well, a good showing. I mean, they are going up against the students of the game. So let's check out their roster first. Jake, what do you have to say to them? I mean, I think these guys, tons and tons of strong, strong players on this team. Individually, I think mechanically, they're all top tier. Infected was a real standout on the Orissa. Um, they did take a really rough loss earlier to M80, but you know, after their more recent performances, that does look like an aberration, or it's just the fact that maybe M80 has been the, the sleeping giant all along in the region. Um, and I think other opponents might not fare so well against students of the game. I think this one is going to be difficult to call ahead of time. Um, it will, I think, be a lot about this Orissa mirror, as the, the meta seems to be solidifying in favor of this Orissa Tracer Sojourn composition, with a bit of variation, though, on these DPS especially. And on the other side of things, we got Timeless, yep. who are looking stacked across the board. But mm. there are a few individuals who stand out specifically. I think that Chopper has been really good on the long range hit scan. You know, when we're talking about these people like, uh, for example, Vision, Hydron Seeker, I think that Chopper belongs in that conversation. I also pulled out some Genji. Um, but there are, you know, Riker, we're seeing Riker in the lineup here. Yesterday we saw Icy for some maps, right? So they, they sub in and out they all sub the in time. A lot. Yeah, and Sojin as well has some great uh, Sojin moments. But there are two people who I think stood out, particularly yesterday. One of them was Rocket on the Tracer, uh, but also another one was Opener on the Lucio. And so I just want to show you quickly how they combined okay. to find a couple of picks. I'm just walking. Can, walk you can't go, go on, bro. Do your but thing. I wanted to show uh, one moment that stood out to me yesterday about how they really approached a team fight really smartly. So just to set the stage here, we're in Hollywood Point A. So you can see, you know, we're playing the balcony here. We got a, we got a great line of sight if we're playing the Sojourn from this cafe. So uh, they're playing the D.Va composition with the Sojourn. So they're just trying to protect their Sojourn as much as possible. Now, Toronto, they are playing a Saria, which we don't see a ton of except for Dante earlier today. The Saria is so scary to like be close to because the Saria can just pressure you immediately. So what they're going to do is they're actually going to swap here, move away from the Saria, which is very close to the Cafe. You can see here through the wall, the Saria is very close. So, Chop, um, Sojourn on the Saria, oh, Sojourn on the Sojourn <laughs> is going to move away from the Saria. So we can play this one out and we can see how they're quickly shifting positioning based on where the Saria is to try to get good line of sight and dodge this Saria who's pushing Cafe. Now, we can go ahead and in a little bit, we'll pause here as the Diva comes up and we can see here that opener, look at this, look at this speedy little guy. Look at him go. He's going down here. Where is Blood going? Where is he going? <laughs> Where is the Lucio going? But it's actually because while this push happened from the side of Toronto Defiant. Yeah, you can see someone sugar free. They're playing over here. But if we look in the other corner over here, we can actually see that the supports are kind of stuck over here. And so opener and rocket has find an opening and we can play this one out. It's a tracer and a Lucio dive. And this is what I think opener does really well, combining with rocket finding openings like this cj comes in as well on the kiriko and they find a pick onto rapal in a crucial overtime here in hollywood and so this is what i would really look out for we know that sunjun chopper do a great job you know playing these flex heroes playing uh, the, the genji and the soldier and stuff like that but rocket and opener they combine really well to find picks when they see an opening in the enemy positioning. So look out for that. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge duo. I think with opener, the veteran experience on Lucio knows really well when to find those timings, when to enable the main group and when to go to the flank. And then Rocket, that individual firepower coming from this up and coming player is huge. Oh, so this is the start. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense. We're gonna see Icy come in on the start. This mm. does to me suggest a potential Arissa look, which on control is I think especially relevant. Chopper had most flexibility, I would say, across the line where Rocket was always flanking, Sonjin was always playing uh, the main backline DPS. Where Chopper, it's harder to predict. I think he's played the Genji, he played the Sojourn, uh, leaves them a little bit more options. And with diverse points on control, sometimes that can be really valuable, playing different points in, in very different styles. I mean, I think what, Timeless is a great team. I mean, and students of the game as well. Uh, we're going to Samoa first, selected by Timeless. Jake and Johnny, uh, you know, we just saw both of the lineups and with the map pick uh, by Timeless going to Samoa, what can we get out from that? 
I think Samoa to me is pretty straightforward. I'm more interested in, in the bands. We see students of the game banning Ilios, not wanting to take the dive map. And the ban on Nepal, I think honestly, this is just teams banning what they saw. Like students of the game picked Nepal yesterday, and so Timeless want to ban it out. Just throwing a wrench into their uh, opponent's comp there, and then feeling a little bit better about Samoa versus Li Jing Tower. Could be, could be a little bit of complexity, but nothing major. It seems like the meta's pretty stable right now. All right, well, I know uh, Jake really loves doing press, so let's do it quickly. Jake, who do you got? Nope, fast, fast, I'm just fast, gonna fast, not fast, say anything and not it's say anything. Go. No, yeah, how about you? No, okay. Me. None of these guys want to do it. Sucks. Hey, coin flip. Casters, Four how about you guys? Well. Yeah, I got time as 3 2. Bro. There you go. <laughs> time is 3 2. Matt, what do you got? Uh, I would say timeless as well. It's like a bit sad because I don't want to see either of these teams really go because they have so much like good young talent on them. Uh, but I would say, uh, and maybe we're just kind of like, maybe timeless had the game of their life yesterday against Toronto and like. Uh, they kind of come back to earth a little bit today, but I, I would say I would favor them in a closed series. Yeah, it very much feels that way. But like Jake said, the transit of properties in NA is so strange and devious and complex. Like they had a very close game against Paris in pajamas. You just got zero, well, three zero by Luminosity, like quite uh, considerably. Yeah. And then they had a map five also against Toronto, who are probably the best team in North America right now. It's insane. It's all over the place, but that makes for fun overwatch, I think. Timeless and uh, students of the game, loading it for map number one here our last series of the day and of na we are going over to samoa matt and yeah i see and timeless as a roster too been very willing to use a lot of their substitutions on the bench reich has been coming in for some of these more dive comps that they want to pick up uh playing the winston to quite a good effect against a very good dive team in toronto defiant the other day yeah, nah, I think uh, the the map pick of Samoa, I, I don't know how much like the map pick really like impacts things like, right. uh, especially for control. Like I think control, everybody's kind of like just trying to play like mirror, same type of stuff, right? Uh, not to, you know, kind of fall behind. Uh, Rocket probably gets the TP out of spawn. Then we'll see, uh, same with scissors. Then we'll see a tracer. So we'll get an even matchup. Yeah, tracer, Soj. Yeah, this is the meta that was envisioned. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Trying to speed on the back line, unawares. But yeah, as soon as the game, knowing that Times are probably running this comp, had a, a small suspicion, I'd imagine. Oh, Scissors almost ends up going down there. A couple of just normal shots by Chopper there to the head. Rotations on the back line. That's the name of the game. Good shot onto Rack. Rack ends up surviving somehow. A little bit more of a miracle there. Same with Rocket, also going pretty low. My word, these Sojans. Already putting in some mean work as the point unlocks. Icy trying to juggle it, but it looks like as soon as the game, yeah, they're going to cap first. Yeah, they do cap, but I, I think it's just like high ground side. Uh, that's where you saw in the last series, right? Uh, really kind of pay off for the Sojourn up there. And actually, it's a rotation from Timeless, so they actually go to the point. Now they give up this side of the map here. Two students of the game in the point. God. Icy was in serious trouble there, and then in fact he was just screaming for help, trying to back up. A lot of the time, just the Tracers trying to chunk the Arista low, get that armor off the Arista, and it's so much easier to kill them, plus the DPS passive gets pretty nasty. Oh, oh okay. A little 180 from Scissors survives, kills Rocket. Okay, this is go time for students the game now, Matt. Yeah, looks like they're gonna kind of like push on forward here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get like a huge advantage, right? Like maybe you flip the point. The tracer should be back in the fight rather fast. Kitsune rush two, opener dead. Okay, wow, what a turnaround. Yeah, Rocket just overextending just by a couple of miles. Although saying that, all right, Rocket gets a, a random kill at the end of that fight. Infected down, but it's a, a bit more of a clean fight there from students of the game. So a quick taxi from Rack should remedy that. Yeah, it's like just pushing them back further enough like, you know, Rocket ended up getting back into the fight there uh, at the end, but it was just pushing them back far enough that the Kitsune Rush, you know, the Disruptor shot on the point just didn't allow them to get back on it. This is going to be the Kitsune Rush from CJ. Yeah, just guarantee uh, as soon the, as the game, they just yeah, yeah, they just back up a little bit, guarantees the cap. Uh, for a second there, uh, before that kill goes down, you'd think maybe students of the game, they disengage and then they sound barrier back in. I uh, know, but after that kill on the scissors, a spear at long range from Icy, not going to be doing that. Yeah, no way. Scissors trying to get out of there as well. Just trying to run away. Should be back in just a moment. 
As soon as the game now, trying to find their opportunity to flip. Oh, PGE just shut down by a kunai across the map. He pulled the overclock as well, just wasn't expecting the damage from long range. CJ with a nice kill, sound barrier from rank attack, a later one this time. Terra Surge comes in, Icy does not fear the Orisa, but the rest of the team definitely should have done. A couple of trade kills there for the Terra Surge, but is it enough? Students of the game have already killed CJ with a nicely placed pulse bomb from Scissors. 66% and counting for Timeless. Opener manages to get out alive, sneaking away to that mega health pack, and this is a flip-flop of a map. <laughs> yeah, it's really rare. Uh, I know see a few more kills come in here for students of the game, but uh, what, this is like our third or fourth point flip? <laughs> like, uh, you know, and nobody's above like 80%, right? Like, it's really odd uh, to see like this little percentage. Like, it just seems like every single fight the point ends up flipping where students of the game in oh. control now. Continuing rush there from Cal is that's going to back up timeless. Oh, if they get the cap there, that would have been uh, horrendous from students of the game. That good Tune Rush not putting to good use, but all good. PG at least snags one kill away onto Rocket. A little less uh, flank pressure now. And without Rocket's Pulse Bomb, it's going to be hard to take down the Orisa and even take down the backline of Force Suzu. Chopper trying to dash away. No heals to be found, though, as Infected manages to get Chopper on the exit. The slide wasn't enough. The speedy Orisa just chasing him down. And uh, well, Matt, there's going to be another flip as our students of the game win that fight. But Timeless, they get 94%. Yeah, they see the slide gone, infected. Uh, they just marches on forward, ends up getting the kill on a chopper, and that's so important. This, though, I, I feel like should be heavily favored for Timeless. Uh, even with all this trading back and forth, double support alt here towards the end with nothing on the side of students of the game to deal with that. Uh, it would be probably a pretty big fumble to lose this. Yeah, this rush popped instantly from CJ as soon as they approached that point. Pulse bomb for Rocket. They've just got an overwhelming ult advantage right now. The stick on the Orisa didn't even need it. Just fell over to the sheer overwhelming amount of damage there from Chopper and the rest of the gang. Timeless now putting themselves on the point. The students of the game try and come back. Carl, they're so close to this rush. And same with Rack Attack, close to the beat. They just need to survive, Matt. Timeless pulled the sound barrier and they managed to find the kill onto scissors i see holding down the fort now as soon as the game needs to find another touch rack attack just so, does so just in time is those support ultimates are so close but rack ends up going down cal as soon as they get the rush they lay it down but that's it it's not enough timeless they end up snagging the map away or the round away from students of the game those ultimates they just needed to be online the back line for students of the game they were so close rack went down what three percent towards a beat that could have been the difference maker but it was timeless in the end that flip flop of the game ended up uh, going their way yeah they use that kisune rush uh, from timeless just run right at infected take him out uh, and they end up holding on to the beat, you know, for PGE to have that overclock. They know how good he is on the soldier and that uh, if you don't have that beat, maybe end up taking out a player or two and then things start to fall apart. So you hold on to that sound barrier for that big soldier and ult. Uh, and, uh, big props to students of the game to even keep that going for as long as they did. Players struggling that point for a very long time as Symmetra TPs and then the switch to Tracer for both sides. So another mirror matchup. Yeah, it feels like we're going to see this especially on control. Of course, Timers can definitely just sub in Riker when they want to as well, but when Icy's in, Orisa is the order of the day. And Scissors just skulking around the point. Same with Rocket on the sidelines, taking very different approaches here as the point unlocks. Does mean Scissors is gonna get pressure on the point as Rocket now realizes that and has to match Scissors in the neutral. All forces the recall is going to get the mini two. So as the recall advantage, Infected is just down on the point though. There's just no heals for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if he got like looped down to the point or something along those lines because uh, you know, just jumped down and nobody was within line of sight. So nobody able to give him any type of healing whatsoever. Uh, you know, PGE does pick up one, but without your Orisa, it's going to be very difficult to like flip the point. Maybe the Tracer can kind of like dance on it, contest a little bit. So, uh, it does look like Scissors will be on the point, just kind of contesting. Now you have Infected back in the fight, but both sides going to be back at 100%. Oh, Rack kills opener. That's a good start, at least. And CJ super low, too. That back line from Timeless just crumbling. Same with Rocket. All right, we're in for another one. Here we go. Here's the flip. I'm ready for Timeless to get the flip instantly as soon as they, they win this next fight. So, yeah, I mean, uh, both of the, like, 
you know, obviously Timeless takes Toronto the distance uh, the other day when we were watching. I mean, yeah. uh, students of the game uh, look just as good uh, here today. So two of the, you know, better young teams uh, you know, in NA where, you know, remember when I was talking about earlier, you get a little bit more structure for some of these teams who, you know, haven't had, you know, the you know, not everybody's had the Overwatch League experience, right? Uh, you know, who knows the ceilings of these two types of teams? Yeah. I think uh, Jake called it perfectly. The ceiling of Rocket and Chopper definitely hasn't been met just yet. There's both rushes, one low ground, one high. And as soon as the game do rip that beat, they got the Katuni Rush to play in as well. Rocket trying to chew through that over health bar on PGE, who's uh, giving them the runaround at the moment. Nice little boot from Rack Attack 2 to help with the kiting. As soon as the game still in control at that point, that Terra Surge on the floor does hit CJ and Opener and Icy in the front line, but it did end up getting Suzu, so no damage actually landed. Nice little boot on Infected, does jump back down to the floor as Chopper is in his sights, but can't quite find the kill. And now he has to turn his back. The Terra Surge does land, decent amount of damage, but jumping on board with PGE, who's just lining people up and knocking them down with this overclock. Ends up Icy actually picking up that kill. An extremely messy fight with Timeless ending up capping about halfway through. 35% of building now. A scrappy affair, to say the very least. Yeah, as PG kind of throws that overclock in there at the end, it's, uh, you know, the one comes out from Chopper. It's like, oh, why not? Let me see if I can just turn the tides in this. He ends up getting one kill, uh, gets the kill on Chopper, but not able to find the other one as uh, Rocket was putting lots of pressure on him where uh, Pulse Bomb here for Scissor. Uh, you know, you land this on the support, you flip the point back rather quickly, and that's kind of been the story of at least this first map. Nobody able to kind of, like, win consecutive fights. Pulse bomb for Rocket. Oh, looking for somebody. Rack's already used that boop. Oh, what a stick from Rocket. Oh, that is sick. Oh, my God. Saw the boop. Didn't he have to worry about that? Jump straight in, gets a kill. This is going to even it up, though, with a pulse bomb of their own. Spears being from Infected to try and get away in a snipe from PGE. It was like a magic revealing trick. As soon as Effective moved out of the way, PG was there, ready with the railgun. A lot of cooldown juice from Icy there as he tries to take to the high ground to push Infected off. Timers are in control of the point this whole time, Matt, as well. As a beat comes in just in time to save Icy, but he's still so low. No healing from CJ can be found as soon as the game, and now trying to find the flip eventually. But timing, uh, Timeless are trying to make this his last fight. 96% now as they Dude. get the flip. PG is a uh, monster. PGE and Rocket. Just going back and forth, they've been uh, sick so far uh, in map number one, where it feels like the uh, you know the tracer for Tybless always coming up with a big play, and then on the other side, PG. Whenever you see why they're saving the sound barrier when he's got the overclock, it feels like every single time he's got a railgun, uh, ends up picking up a kill. Yeah, someone's getting lasered across the map. All right, rush on the top. Cal, 15 HP. Had to use the Suzu and the TP away. Is this an into students of the game though in these final few moments? Can we go in? Can we go in? Can we go in? I'm go in? Can we 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 go Chaser, 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 Chaser. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Oh, oh my god. Nice. They're all dead. Oh, that was a close one. <laughs> what? You can call that ISO? You can call that ISO? <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> that was pretty close at the end when Rocket lands a double <laughs> with a pulse. <laughs> that was very close. What a piece now in uh, Samoa. Bro, my god. Uh, Rocket. Also, like, sit. Scissors also hits a crazy pulse bomb on yeah. a chopper, and it's CJ with like a like a cross map Suzu uh, able to seize him during that. I mean, uh, and and just when students of the game thought it was over, right? Uh, Rocket ends up with a double pulse, and then all of a sudden it's like, ah! Uh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait! Dies, it's not over! It's like, not over! Uh, okay, it's over! It's over! <laughs> it's, uh, man, this is a. Uh, this has felt like a very long map number one, just because both, like, nobody's able to hold any of these points. Uh, they just keep getting flipped back and forth. So these rounds just lasting uh, so much longer than like a typical round of control would last. And uh, right here, Jack, I think first fight is going to be enormous. Probably, the first fight probably decides the map here with how you can just, you know, you should be able to win a second fight here or at least continue to kind of hold the point for an extended period. So uh, both teams need to focus up. Quick rotation here for students of the game. So they should try and flip it on timeless. I see in a little bit of trouble though. Look at Icy's positioning right now, but 
It's actually Scissors just doing a bit of goalkeeping, although unfortunately he's let a couple slip through into the net. Uh, Rack Attack and Cal under an immense amount of pressure from Rocket. First cap goes to Timeless. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, positioning right there for Icy. I mean, he was getting just pelted in the side by PGE, but uh, uh, you know what uh, is even better than, uh, you know, if you, do, you don't have great positioning, you know what will save you? You know, having your tracer just get into the back line, just <laughs> kill two players instantly. Uh, that uh, in the history of Overwatch, that has solved a lot of problems for teams. Having a tracer who can just go into the back line, uh, just find a kill at ease. Is Rock able to do just that in that first fight? Yeah, he's nearing a pulse bomb too. A little bit further ahead than Scissors in terms of ult charge, about 30% or so. Scissors is trying to make Rocket's life a little bit harder though, as he uh, stops him from getting onto the back line. Very much a defensive tracer style right now from Scissors. I hear the recall, and so it did Scissors. I wonder if he's going to go for the chase. Well, Timeless are going to get Dover upon. In fact, Open is actually the first one to go down. Pulse bomb, Suzu, PG saved once again. It's been good Suzu's across the board, both from CJ and Cal, as uh, both rushes have been used on the point. PG comes up with yet another kill with that railgun. No need for the overclock when you just got a, a neutral railgun like PGE's. We watch a fight where Rocket for Timeless will end up picking up two, and then the next fight, PGE just railguns down like three, <laughs> and then the next fight, Rocket just, now this fight, he'll just go kill two supports, uh, and then the next fight after, if we get it, we'll see uh, Bro, it's, PGE pick up some more it's kills. Actually it's actually crazy. the 1v1, like TXCXX, if anybody knows that uh, code for custom games, yeah. <laughs> just 1v1, that's all it is. I like to see that content, actually, that'd be kind of fun. All right, Timeless, what you got on your uh, little attack here onto this point? They've already got 70% though, Matt, on the board, so they're in good standing at least. That's why that first fight's so big, right? Uh, you win first fight here, even with the second one, you can just extend for so long as the 30% here, four students of the game and oh, counting. That's going to be speed. sound barrier for both sides. It's the better one, though, for Timeless. Yeah, later B infected, using that Terra Surge in the front lines as Chopper just rips him in two with that railgun. Oh, PG, can he hit the tracer? Oh, goes boobs away, I'm not sure. Students of the game should be able to take this point a little bit further. No, PG doesn't want to int onto the point just yet. Just want to go for the quick reset, but Timeless closing in on a victory here on this first map. Yeah, oh, that sound spear. barrier for Timeless just came so much later. Is that's going to be a, a spear on the chopper? It's going to get that, uh, you know, dash out. So maybe we'll see if there's going to be a little bit of follow-up. Looks like Scissor's trying to make a play. That's a pulse bomb, maybe Suzu. Chopper was super low there too, had to back off for just a brief moment. And now so do the rest of the students of the game, just fearing for their lives as that Kasuda rush has been ripped. What a pulse bomb, Suzu perfectly timed again by Cal, and they come up with a kill to Rocket. Carry down now for Timeless, a 4v5 on the point. Infective trying to press the issue, forcing out Icy's cooldowns, but then just turns his vision straight towards Chopper. A perfect isolation kill, nothing for Icy there could have been done to save Chopper's life. Soon to the game, they're going to get the flip once again, and Timeless at 99% now. <laughs> we, we literally, like, nobody can buy a second fight in a row. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody wins a fight and then just loses the next one. Is uh, If somebody was able to put together two consecutive fight wins, they would have won the map already uh, with how this one's been. But both of these teams just... Uh, the way when you have like the sojourn tracer combinations and like they're so you know, deadly and can kind of take over a game and you have players as talented as the ones uh, in the lobby right now you know when when rocket's able to pick up a kill or pge scissors you know chopper like uh, it's going to turn the sides rather quickly pg up on that high ground you see has that charge you know laser it's in a great spot I like Cal trying to enter flow state right now as he does pull that rush and PG comes up with another big kill. CJ dead is bad news for Timeless and these late deaths are going to be even worse too. Students of the game up to 90%. I mean, this might just be the shutout here. Matt, they've got four ults left, bro. Like they get, Timeless can't even get back in. Opener dies with the sound barrier. Are they going to even be able to touch? I mean, with Chopper down, surely not. This is just it. There are ults still left on the table here. Timeless do manage to get one final touch to cause OT, but this is disaster right now for Timeless. A sound barrier does hit four as they do bundle in onto the point, but students of the game have got a beat of their own. A terror surge is good for damage on Icy, instantly focused out. Students of the game, they do end up losing Cat, uh, CJ, but does it even matter? Cal dead, CJ gone, PGE, the trades are all over the place. With both uh, Kiriko's dead, the damage is pretty much permanent, but Rocket is still in. No, How is no, he still no. alive? They finally take <laughs> okay. him out. His sisters finds the kill, like, what is that ending? <laughs> 
Uh, why is it always this map too? Samoa is taken oh. by students off the game. The most back and forth control point we've ever seen. And the whole map, I think could, uh, the same could be said for the whole map. That was absurd. I, and I mean, right there at the end, right? Rocket like lands that pulse bomb. You're like, there's no way. Like we have another player coming off spawn. Like maybe that one keeps going, but uh, students of the game hold on in the end. Uh, wild back and forth map number one. Uh, they, but uh, they were the team that ended up winning two fights in a row. Uh, everybody else just pretty much kind of extended you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They win those two fights back to back at the end. It was massive. Hey, and that's what counts to the end, Matt. Just winning two fights back to back and you get the dub. Like, that was just uh, I, I imagine the stats, <laughs> the stats are just so even, I, I'd imagine. You yeah, know, just, and the damage uh, is probably uh, crazy don't too. don't have them in front of them. Damage yeah. and healing and everything else because uh, there's just there was so much back and forth like this is a very long control map when all three rounds it was just like we win one fight you win the next we win four fight you win the next so yeah the damage and healing numbers must be just ridiculous and rocket as well with these pulse bombs dude so clutch in the very far, uh, final few moments of every single round it feels like always landing those sticks regardless of uh, them losing the round or not like i mean come on bro like these ending fights are uh, just ridiculous yeah, I mean, uh, a P PG was doing, you know, crazy things on the Sojourn. It felt like every single time he had an overclock or he had, you know, a fully damaged, uh, you know, charged up railgun shot, he was able to land it as uh, they they did uh, as good as a job as you could probably do as, you know, with rockets in your back line of surviving. <laughs> uh, but, you know, towards the end, it was just... Uh, you know, those two fights back to back where, you know, students of the game actually had some ultimates going in that second fight, had a pretty big advantage. I mean, that oh, stick there is just silly. I mean, disgusting. Stick. He almost kills the tracer on the, the back half, too. So, right. uh, you actually, so the KD is actually way higher for students of the game, okay. uh, it, which is, which is quite interesting. I also think it's probably, you know, uh, timeless just kind of throwing their bodies more, you know, at, at the opposing team where, I mean, look like in terms of like damage fairly close, like, you know, damage mid. I mean, you're kind of close to even across the boards outside that KD. Yeah, I still look at that damage, Dell, like 100K plus overall for both sides. Like, pretty disgusting stuff uh, to start us off in this series. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a little bit closer one than the last one. We're going to have to wait and see, though. We're going to jump to a quick break, give the teams a couple of minutes. We'll be right back. Victory is at hand. Ashes flashes. Interesting. Very interesting. Check this out. Thinks a cupid I shall play. What are you looking at? Keep moving forward. Best of luck to you all.
Our opponents may doubt us, they may underestimate us, but they do not know the power of a United team. Driven by a common goal, we are not merely students, we are Overwatch players, and we know what it takes to achieve victory. That was an excerpt from Scissors, his speech to the team uh, just before this very series uh, took place. So yeah, pretty rousing speech. That was only a small section of it too, but that whole essay, it was pretty sick actually. Yeah, pro probably some, uh, you know, uh, let's goes with another word let's thrown go. in there uh, after that you know uh it's it's the the common uh it's just the 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 esport you know you're in the middle of a game and it's a let's go you get a kill let's go you're on the comeback let's go it just it, it's it's just the best uh you know most universal line you can use the hype up uh as we go into midtown uh I, I, so you do have a uh, Riker coming in here for Timeless, so that's a sub, uh, didn't get the cover, but they will be on offense first to kick things off. Uh, we saw Riker in our series the other day, uh, you know, uh, a decent amount. We kind of saw, you know, them kind of going back and forth between Icy and Rikers. Uh, this will be Riker coming in here for Hybrid, uh, looking to play the Orisa, so not going to play anything different, same things. Yeah, same things here, but yeah, Riker in for... I see, yeah. Interesting stuff. All right. Maybe we want to give we him a little bit of versatility. We also saw Timeless do this the other day, too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saw Timeless do this with uh, Chopper and Sunjin, right? Where they, you know, they, they had both of them play the Soldier and just kind of cycling them in and out. Yeah, got a fresh face. Ended up working out pretty well for them when Riker subbed in, Matt. So uh, we'll see if they can uh, do the same thing that happened in the Toronto Defiant game. High ground control. And a clean cross, mind you, as well, as they're going to now drop onto the point. Hopefully, just flood it and make sure Infected pays for his positioning. Rack attack, though, making it a little bit more difficult, though, on the uh, Lucio, just booting people away. Yeah, I was like, I was like, why are they giving up that high ground? But Rack attack, you know, is able to kind of boop one off to the side. Just kind of putting down some damage. Not really great sight lines for the Sojourn here, right? Like, just kind of sitting inside of this doorway. Uh, just denying this space now as Infected gets quite low. That's all his cooldowns as well. Oh, Infected's one real one that time around. I see a rush in the uh, small room here. Making it a little bit hard for... <laughs> oh my god. They're making it a little Whoa. bit hard for students of the game to actually lock down Chopper. The movement speed and the fire, the rate of fire increase is just ridiculous. Good luck hitting uh, someone in that small room. Timeless. Ooh. Hello, Rack. Goodbye, Rack. Dead before I even hit the pavement. Five minutes uh, in the time. Yeah, there I feel for like they just give up too much space. They just gave up too much space on the defensive side of things, right? To so just let them get up into that high ground, you know, rather fast and then not really like kind of make them pay for it, right? Where if, you know, Riker's going across with the rest of Timeless and like he has to use a cooldown to do it, like you have all your stuff available if you're infected, like maybe that's where you make the fight, right? That's kind of like in the, you know, M80 Luminosity series where we saw that kind of uh, come into effect. High ground control, at least for students of the game here. Almost a full five ultimates in their bank two with Rack a little bit further away. The most time is looking, still looking pretty good. I mean, getting under the low ground here would be rather nice, but a kill on just CJ? Uh, of course it's PG. Who else would it be? Random Barrel got across the map, ends up taking care of the Kiriko. So you just get that kill. You now you back up. You still kind of control this high ground, right? So some uh pr pretty easy fight win there for students of the game they don't have to invest anything uh, that, that's why sojourn's on the team right uh so now you see the spear spin now infected can go and you can actually make a play for this on the payload <laughs> everybody kind of lining up for the collapse no Riker with the denial there with the spear spin now come the sound barrier that was almost a uh, ajax there but uh infected spear a little bit too late terra surge dragon everybody in the small room and whole chopper and cj Ripped limb from a limb is infected. Almost baiting them in. It felt like they're timeless. Just get wiped off the face of the map as soon as the game. They get under the hardest point on the second point here. Well, they stop them there, sorry. As uh, timeless have to reset. Only two minutes gone, though. And the payloads moved to a considerable distance, at least. Yeah, it's a it's a, a pretty good comeback there, though, from students of the game, right? They kind of, like, try and chase really fast with the overclock, try and make a play. Uh, and Timeless does a nice job of kiting it. Out. Look at that. That's this a lot of cooldowns. Knocked down low. It yeah, a like lot of cooldowns. Only drag back on top. That was a cheeky post bomb there from Rocket, trying to attack people as they were dragged in. 
by the Terror Surge, but Infected already dead. Used everything in his kit to try and stay alive going back up the stairs, Matt. So time is able to just roll over them. Soon well, to the game, gonna have to regroup his five. They should get a touch though. Scissors up on the high touch. ground here. Probably gets a touch, but there's gonna be the Kitsune rush on the opposite side. So, I mean, trying to have the contest here going into the rush, doing a nice job so cheating. far. Way yeah, too much and you lose the tank. Yeah, too much healing, too much damage output. I mean, you just lose that if you don't have a rush of your own. Nice, uh, nice uh, use of the TP there from the scissors. Just going back to the old spawn and go into the new one. So now, I mean, students of the game, this is a pretty difficult situation to be in, right? You're not going to be able to kind of like just walk up, take high ground control. So you're not going to be able to get PGE set up in a great spot. Uh, and you're going to be about even in terms of beats. You're not going to have any type of like advantage going to this next fight to try and stop that payload where there's still a lot of time here for Timeless, right? You know, maybe you end up winning this fight, you get it around that second corner, you get that home stretch. Uh, you're in a great spot to finish the map. Fate again, bullied right now. No spin, no fort fight. Recognize that, to back all the way up. In fact, it's so low. One railgun headshot, and surely that's his doom. Luckily, Cal is there to heal them all the way back up. And now PG looks for an angle with that overclock. He spots Chopper high in the sky, easy as you like. Perfect prediction of the trajectory there. And even chasing away CJ, <laughs> the Suzu. Yeah, can't save you, unfortunately. And PGE with a 4K in that fight. I mean, uh, the, when he has the overclock, it feels like, uh, obviously he still has to like aim nail those shots down, right? It's not like attack visor, but it almost feels like it, right? He's able to just connect with a player to every single time. Really kind of keeping students of the game in this one on the defensive side of things is uh, it has not been, you know, pretty for them thus far, but still 220 on the clock. You get a fight win here, you know, you're down to, you know, down to about like a you know minute, a little bit more than a minute. And then, you know, last fight territory, you know, maybe two fights there in that situation. So students of the game has the ability to actually prevent this from being a full cap, which uh, you know, with the way Timeless has been running down the map would be uh, pretty it's impressive. Let's go time for Chopper instantly answered with a sound barrier still uh, clicks on pg's heads and now a latest sound barrier for time as they do move on forward responded by in turn by cal using that rush and that is the terror shows dragging everybody back in straight into the line of sight of pg once again just a backwards and forwards fight just determined by ultimates there and how late you can use them and that Terror Surge, I really like that, Matt. Cal laying down the rush, infected, then dragging everybody back in who was trying to escape from the LOS. Yeah, we've seen that a few times uh, today where the Terror Surge has been used to just kind of corral people. And if you have a Sojourn, just fire a railgun shot at your Orisa and there's going to oh. be some targets there. As a chopper takes out Rag Attack. I mean, that is a brutal start here for students of the game. Really bad. No speed boost too. You're going to have to back up oh. way earlier than you really want to as well. And now Timeless are in a good spot to use their rush to finish out this round. Scissor's trying to be a bit annoying in the back lines. Hasn't got the pulse bomb, so can't get an initial kill, but can surely build up to it in just a mere moment. There's the rush. They're going to try and end it right here, right now. As soon as the game approaching their ultimates, they are going to need to touch. 1.2 meters to go, as now it is time for Riker to maybe give uh, Infected a little bit of his own medicine with his own ultimates. That Terror Surge doing a little bit of damage there to Infected, but he's still got the Spear Spin to stay alive as PG tries to line up some kills. His overclock went a little bit wide, and that will be students of the game going down. And the very final hurdle is Timeless end up capping with 32 seconds to go. Yeah, and I think the worst part about Rack Attack falling earlier in that fight previously is like you can't you can't take a fight at that corner and try and like bait out the Kitsune rush because you don't have the speed to disengage. So you're forced to like back all the way up. That allows that cart to get around that final corner. Uh, and then great, you have Rack Attack back, but there's nowhere to really disengage to. You kind of have to play uh, within that Kitsune rush that's coming from the opposite side. I know the timeless side of things. So puts Infected in a really tough spot uh, and he is not able to kind of uh, stay alive for long. And as soon as he falls, nobody in position to get a touch that'll be timeless finishing with 32 seconds so uh all things considered i think if you're students of the game you gotta be pretty pleased with how that defense went super pleased yeah i've been considering how uh first point went yeah you're, you're feeling pretty good you're feeling pretty good any kind of time here especially on midtown you're, you're feeling nice about it 
30 seconds, eh, it's a bit extra. Not over a minute, which kind of sucks, but it can be a tough map to finish, especially how defensible uh, the last spawn is. And with the angles that the defenders can play, it's more of a straight line, but they got way more cover to kind of play with. So it's always nice when you're a hit scan or long range hit scan, or Widow, Ash or Sojourn or whatever, you can, you can play around those small little corridors. Um, but 30 seconds, not too bad. All right, students, the game, what you've got for us? Rack, I can imagine, just a quick right click. Bit of free ult charge or attempted to. Yeah, there you go. Straight over to Lucio. Same sort of stuff here. We'll see how clean students the game are on their attack and how, how quickly they can progress onto this point. Yeah, the biggest thing is, like, let's watch from, you know, uh, this POV of how infected Cross is this gap, right? You know, to see the spear spin, see fortify. Disruptor shot thrown in the choke, gonna make it uh, difficult to kind of pass on through. So uh, you see, you know, he's using way more of just kind of like the natural cover of the map. It actually kind of pushes a little bit towards uh, Timeless there, and uh, that's gonna have, you know, Chopper taking out PGE first, as this fight is very split. Yeah, a chopper just dropped as well from height and <laughs> hit BG in the in the head. Rest in peace. Oh, scissors. Wow, that was close. All good though. I mean, scissors having this positioning is going to be quite nice. It means someone from Times is always going to have to check him because they can't let him get on the point and start pressuring. So it splits the focus somewhat, but it's kind of where students of the game want to be anyway, as they do end up getting to the point. Still have four to fight. As infected, so going to be able to back out into the mega health pack room. Ooh. So they take this position as an opener finds Sisters. Yeah. I mean, that is a uh, huge, right? We talked about how he was lurking behind enemy lines. Uh, it's just, you know, the flank are really kind of like opening things up as uh, Infected and Cut, kind of like push out of the room now, but back towards that fire truck. So uh, this is going to be a full reset. Yes, yes, yes. Stagger, 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 stagger. Perfect, perfect. No, I mean, honestly, your thinking is near ult anyway. You don't mind giving him an extra, like, 10, 15%. But those 30-plus seconds almost now, they're going to have to regroup, get in position once more. That was a nasty stagger there from Timeless. Really well played. Yeah, and I mean, sure, Infect is going to build up towards that Terra Surge, but at the same time as he's putting down damage, you're just healing it up on your side, so you're just getting, you know, both support ults, right. uh, really, uh, out of that. So uh, a trade that is uh, extremely favorable for Timeless in terms of the clock and ultimate, as it'll be both Kitsune rushes used straight away. Oh, Infected is so deep! And CJ is just able to heal everybody up, and now they've got high ground advantage too. Pulse Bomb lands on both the wrists, and Rocket comes up oh. with another <laughs> double Pulse Bomb. Uh, Dude does not miss. You are being rude. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, both pulse bombs actually end up on the Arisas there. Uh, it's just that uh, those scissors uh, gets, I believe, Riker pretty low with the pulse bomb, and then PGE finishes it off. But uh, Rocket, I mean, that is a pulse bomb that then, as Infect is walking away, it takes out another one. So uh, both teams ending up holding on to their sound barriers to probably counteract both these overclocks coming in. Oh, that was a little bit of an echo action there. Same with the Lucio sound barriers. Both uh, all four arms popped here almost exactly the same time as each other. All good. Infected super low, though, on the cross again, Matt. Really rough uh, time for students of the game right now. They cannot cross. It, it feels almost impossible. Oh. This is why you challenge this position, right? Uh, on the opposite side, we didn't see students of the game challenge this. They allowed them to just cross, and they were able to, to kind of take this point easy. When you challenge this position, you see what help. you can do. It's uh, infected so low. If help me, infected. Oh, Rocket here in the recall. No scissors is pretty low, but scissors has backup. Rocket still being annoying, though. That's the best thing you can be as a tracer, right? Just make it hard for these rotations to happen. Scissors joins the rest of the team. Here's the two tick mark. Okay, as time is trying to make their entrance again. Starting off with a rush. Rocket in the back. He's still got the pulse bow in hand. Lands the stick, but he dies to his own pulse. Oh, sticks the Arisa. A decent target. But oh, by his own hubris, ends up going down. Timeless now in a 4v4. Scissors ends up falling too. A bit more of an even fight now, but there's just sheer firepower on the point as Cal laid down the road and two minutes and 30 seconds to go now for students of the game as they cap point a i mean hey honestly rocket don't worry about it mate you've had so many clips so far we'll let that one slide yeah the pulse bomb is good uh he just recalls <laughs> directly into infected standing you know pretty much on top of his body so he ends up just blowing himself up uh with his and uh, infected takes a little bit of damage here is uh pg 
trying to set up and well, the amount of damage that pg put down that last play right we saw basically both overclocks come out at the same time he's back at 90 percent i mean uh, you know comes up with like three final blows there during that uh, i know fight to take the point as it might be a little bit surprising that he already has it oh is he dicing with it he is both sojins have a uh, fully charged railgun there oh that was a really weird position there from rack did get sucked up into that terror surge but didn't end up uh, going down Riker on the other hand just yeah this sound barrier is just a little bit too good and pg with, with some additional damage on top of that one and and he doesn't even need to use the overclock right i mean he still holds on to that overclock so you come into the next fight uh obviously no sound barrier here for timeless that's a you know huge win for students of the game uh you have pg set up here on the high ground with that overclock and with the way he's been shooting you figure it gives you at least the player advantage oh yeah oh, well, that that's a, pretty good it's a spear that actually connects at him from range and then chopper follows it up with a shot they're trying to go again here but students of the game are gonna have a bit of a hard time doing so some of these kills are getting pretty staggered too, although although saying that, Scissors does manage to get out. A kill onto CJ is nice, but a very, very quick teleport. Even with the Lucio speed, you're going to get back. Last final fight here for students of the game. Two DPS ults. I mean, Scissors has to go nuclear here on the back line. Yeah, it looks like he's just kind of lurking, maybe trying to get a touch here. Uh, it looks like he got stunned, at least from the top UI, so had to use the recall as he actually yeah, did get hit with a spear. So going to try and set this up again. In fact, it did use the Terror Surge there. I uh, feel like maybe just trying to draw out an ultimate, but they're going to try and build up Cal's Kitsune Rush. Answer what CJ has on the opposite side. Truff is for Scissors 2, needs to get value with the Pulse Bomb, which means Infected has to get onto the points. Although you don't mind being there right now if you're uh, Infected. Oh, Scissors is already down. Where's the Pulse? No one to be found anymore. PG in a little bit of trouble as Cal and CJ both pull the Kutsune Rush. And now PG ascends to the skies and tries to take a decent angle onto Timeless. But, I mean, Timeless' spawns are just so close. Even though, even if they end up going down, it might not even matter. But with Infected falling here, even the trade onto open areas to hell. Mary attempt from students the game now. Scissors comes back with a pulse bomb and takes down Riker. It's evening up a little bit closer now. It's timeless. They're going to fall as PG takes down CJ by the skin of their teeth. They managed to make it work. And a minute and 30 seconds to go. You're only going to get a couple of fights here if that, Matt. No way you're finishing with time here. It's going to be uh, an overtime or bust. It is that uh, sound barrier that comes in from Rack Attack that ends up keeping the damage dealers alive even after losing Infected. Uh, and that is the difference there. As one player gets quite low. That's Chopper. Is uh, not able to find the shot to finish him off. As that opener gets quite low as well. So some cooldowns use here. It's, uh, students of the game even match this time. Basically needs to just get two flawless fights really fast. So just a, a DPS game right now. It's felt like that since map number one. Rocket in a decent position. Just trying to get as much damage as he can down on to the enemy Arissa. But it's Riker that falls first at PGE's hands. Oh, that was close to a double kill for uh, since the uh, game. Opener. That's not good. They got to go needs fast. to live here. I mean, you, you back out and don't invest the sound barrier to keep Riker because you feel like you can get a good value out of it here at the end. I mean, this has to be a good beat. Well, there's the sound barrier to match that overclock. Matt as opener tries to find a, a nice little boop into the line of sight to help Chopper rock up. Rocker set up for a kill. Terra Surge on the point. There's the pulse from Scissors. Takes down Chopper. Terra Surge is good for some damage on Rack, but that's just about it. And Infected has so many cooldowns, though. It just runs through Timeless. Scissors picks up his third of the fight. Make that four. A minute to go for students of the game. Getting the cap is all that they needed, and they achieved in that. 1 minute and 30, uh, 32 for Timeless here. A close affair on Midtown. Yeah, and I think if you're students of the game, like on your on your defense, you cannot allow them to just cross for free. Uh, that was really kind of the difference, you know, between these two teams on their first point defense. Uh, and really with a minute, a minute 32, you probably only expect to see first point, right? Uh, you do not expect this to go uh, much further than that here on Midtown. So 
students of the game they clutch up they give themselves a chance and i think the scary part with like this meta right is like how much damage your arisa could take in terms of a burst right things kind of just topple over uh we are now on defense uh, you're really looking at how timeless place this do do they allow them to cross and then just kind of dwindle the clock and you know really pressure them from both sides or do they continue to hold this high ground position here and make a very difficult on infected to stay alive yeah, no changes in the compositions here. No, no real shock, but yeah, it does all come down to the defense. Oh, it'd be crazy I mean, to change at this point. Yeah, exactly. I do. I mean, the clutch factor from Rocket, we've seen it even in control, always landing clutch pulse bombs at the very end of fights. One of the most clutch traces we've seen in North America. And one of the hottest prospects as well. No little Widow Peak. They didn't see anybody, so just a straight over to the tracer. And now their minute commences. Uh, look from the high ground there. I mean, a minute you have what two fights at best? Not a lot of time for students of the game to work with here. Sisus is kind of taking this off angle, infected. Spear spin up there on the infected high ground, just trying to knock players back. Nice little dueling on the point. Rocket does force the recall of Scissors. A little bit more support, though, for Scissors as Rocket is more on an island here, especially when he pushes past uh, this fire won. engine. Riker is pretty low. They Same with Chopper. This. Chopper's 1 HP in the train. You've got to start pressuring point as well. This is a really bad spot for Timeless to be in. They're all huddled up here, and yeah, it was only a matter of time before Chopper went down as this is into students of the game for this last few moments. I'm under rest. 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 I'm on no spin. Yeah. Well, you're you're the push the security. Push the security. I'm on the right side. I'm on the right side. I'm on the right side. I'm zoning. 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 I'm everything they have not used the yeah, okay. nice pick scissors let's go this is really clapping at the very end there that was a uh, really nice holding down yeah, that's the not point. what he said what do he say no nah, he said that bro he said that he said that <laughs> you only get one bro oh. i'm not using my one this early <laughs> yeah. I, I I never used my one, so. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it was two years ago, bro. Okay, just leave it. Just leave it. Three years ago, actually. Uh, I mean, look at this, though. I mean, we talk about how difficult this is to take. This is going to be Kitsune Rush from the high ground. Rack Attack has the opportunity here to use this beat to kind of counter it. I mean, students of the game is not out of, like, moving this even further. That Pulse Bomb did zero damage. PG just trying to clear out the back lines right now. Takes that high ground. He's got a decent line on to Chopper there, who's carrying behind that taxi, but with Infected dead, there's no point presence at all for students of the game. They're just merely trickling on it and having to deal with Riker in the Gulag. There you go. That's where the payloads will stop. Just on that lip there of going into the underground passage. Decent, though. I mean, look, you cap in that point with a minute, you take that. Yeah, and I mean, what what allowed them to get that first point was uh, they get Riker low, they all back up like into the subway car, uh, and then they actually get uh, Infected Lance a spear on a chopper and gets him really low. Spear spin comes out like straight away uh, from Riker, and they just kind of like delay a little bit students of the game. They maybe like hold for like two seconds, three seconds, uh, and then now you're running right in. There's no suzu you there's no suzu on the other side there's no spear spin uh you have the you know the healing of the kariko just kind of split between the orisa and the sojourn uh and you're able to find those picks uh i also want to say uh, it's a huge play from scissors because everybody is fighting up there on the subway and they are an ot uh so if he dies uh it's they don't over. cap the point yes right yeah it, it's kind of over that's why he's like calming to the rest of the team like somebody for, for somebody the love, just get over me. here and help me yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, you know he's fighting two on the point just trying to live uh <laughs> where, where if he dies i mean it is over yeah i learned that from from, from jake he was just like just scream help uh, the healers have to pay attention to you at some point which is true i i mainly support i'm very familiar with that even when they're missing one hp the traces need help i'm not always going to be there okay i got my own stuff to deal with 
but uh, no, Scissors definitely needed help, and help he got, and they managed to uh, take the point. One minute and 20 seconds to go here on the rotation for Timeless. Very different approach here, just taking the back alley streets first. Waiting for that amp speed to try and cross. Nice disruption shot, though. A lot of damage inflicted in the front line. Open and taking a lot, too. He's actually the first to enter the mega health back room. Doesn't want to let anybody in, but has already used that boot. Nice little uh, fortify there for Infected. Actually cuts off the rest of the team there. As Chopper and CJ just without their tank and without any support. But still, of course, who's in the kill? Fitness Rocket. Rocket still kills three. I'm sorry. Rocket kills four. What? I mean, they use a great disruptor shot there from PG to split some players off, and they they actually are in a great <gasps> spot. And it absolutely does not matter uh, as Rocket just goes through anyway. Kills four, 30 seconds here. So you have a little bit of a delay with like this gate opening. Uh, no, that happens. Uh, so we're still in final fight territory. Like even with students of the game losing that in that fashion, uh, still with an opportunity to just win one fight and have high ground advantage. Uh, to win map number two. He might just be the best player to ever live. Prof would have something to say about that, to be fair, but geez, Rocket is putting in the work right now. 83% hey, towards that pulse, too. I mean, taking uh, the flank route wouldn't be so bad. Can't C9 now. Infected is going to be there to check. Oh, and he dips scissors as well on the flank. One person down, pulse bomb in hand. Rocket, the clutch master 9000, might be able to just get in there. A little pulse, a Suzu, but the damage actually went through. Infected gets completely chunked out. It's got the spear spam, but he's in desperate need of healing. But Cal can't quite give enough. Hakal tries to trade it up in the back line, but it doesn't matter. When you've got Rocket on your team, anything is possible as Timeless take the map. Uh, I mean, he, he just goes crazy in like OT, right? Uh, four kills uh, to get that first checkpoint. And then after that, uh, I know a big tracer duel on the side with scissors. He had already used recall. And uh, I mean, he just takes him out at that point. And once, takes him out. Once Matt, he's he over there, clapped like, those he, cheeks, yeah. bro. Like well, he was well, in there. He forces his there. recall, gets in, just starts like Wendy's just out of the back, just going at him. Bro, this well, guy is he's a in there, though. And he's unchecked on that side. I mean, you're just, it's over, right? I mean, Infected is just getting drilled from the side by the Tracer and uh, it, it is just a, a really tough situation. Yeah. I mean, students of the game even just battled back to get it to OT to make it that close. Uh, gave themselves a chance to win it, but I mean, Rocket just too good in the end. He's just too good. He's too strong. Someone please nerf him. Personally, just nerf his character because that is just absurd. Crazy. I mean, even um, even on that uh, first push to the point, right, where Infected blocked off the rest of the team, they split the team in half and uh, Rocket still came up with kills. I thought that was a fantastic buy by Infected there, stopping a lot of that Hiroko healing coming through and like helping uh, Opener. But I mean, Rocket just takes the game into his own hands once again. I mean, this map was full of highlight reels for, for a lot of players and an extremely close one too. A very close affair thus far with both teams finishing with time in the, oh, sorry, only time is finishing with time in the bank, uh, but it was a minute for students of the game. God, you, you just gotta find a way to shut out Rocket right now because the guy is on a, on a heater. I, I mean, I just don't, I just don't know if there's a way. Uh, we we no. saw kind of the same things against the Toronto Defiant, uh, right? I, right? I mean, uh, it's not, uh, I, I don't think this is a, you know, uh, an isolated incident to this game. I think this is going to be a reoccurring incident uh, <laughs> in NA throughout the year as uh, a rocket. I mean, this is why everybody was so, like, excited about both of these teams, right? Uh, you know, timeless and students of the game. Uh, both of these teams have so much young NA talent. Uh, I know something we've, you know, seen, whether it be like Pro-Am or Overwatch League before, but uh, you know, now really, I think, kind of taking their games to another level here. Uh, you know in the OWCS and uh, look we saw the other day how close timeless Toronto Defiant was like students of the game making the, a case that they can contend with a team like that as well yeah they're messing with the best right now and they aren't afraid pretty even stats across the board to be honest with you pretty close game so you're expecting that nice little 69k damage for timeless 72 for uh, students of the game yeah, same healing. The healing done, damage mitigation is pretty close, and uh, this kind of just paints it. We are going to Coliseo next, Matt. Same comps. I don't think there's any way we see anything different. I'm curious if Timeless now, are they going to sub once again? Because they, they've been doing it throughout the series. They're, even once during the Toronto game, they subbed out Rocket. So 
it's going to be a, a, a bit of an well, interesting one going into this next map. They, they subbed out Rocket because they wanted to bring Chopper in, uh, you know, with uh, with Sojourn to play the right. Genji, right? To kind of, uh, you know, do that. And then also they kind of like had Icy and Riker. So uh, they swap in Icy here uh for Riker we've seen both of them just play the Orisa here uh today thus far so uh maybe there's a you know another tank option that like hey if we need to go to this we want you know this player in the game so uh Icy will get some run here yeah I'm uh curious if it's gonna be the Orisa but um or it could be something a little bit more slow like the Sig but yeah you're gonna play Orisa differently to your uh counterpart on the bench so you know there's always uh, something to kind of change up and as soon as the game clearly thrown off maybe a little bit of uh during midtown after all these substitutions so we'll see if that can kind of continue no substitutions of course for students of the game just stick with the same old five yeah no you know they should really start mandating when you submit a hero for your you know card here you have to play them at least once right oh, um, sure, the hog. <laughs> sure they would submit Sure, they would submit something different if they had to play Ilari Lifeweaver at one point uh, together. <laughs> that would probably be no, uh, probably. no, no. Yeah, you get, you'd get that one out of the way in the Swiss stage. Oh, you'd, the Ilari <laughs> game, get yeah, that that's one out fair. In, the the the, the Ilari Lifeweaver. Although we did see, uh, I believe we saw uh, Ragtag play the Lifeweaver now uh, in the past. Yeah, we have. That. Uh, he was the the the, the one non coward who played Lifeweaver. The one non coward. Uh, it, do you know what was really funny? It was actually he was making that work. He was actually making it work towards the end yeah. of uh, the Overwatch League last year. There was, was like a moment where people thought it was a thing. They're yeah. like, wait, is this going to be like uh, like something that happens? Like people are going to play Life Weaver, And then everybody was like, no, no, it's not. Uh, you know, maybe maybe they just use it a little <laughs> wait bit. A uh, and then it's not that good. <laughs> Chill. I want to see Alari uh, in the meta. I think that'd be very fun. I think Alari's uh, really... Really, a really sick hero, but the healing pylon. Man, just relying on the healing pylon kind of sucks for the heals, but, you know, maybe later down the line, Alari gets uh, not reworked, but. What about like, Life Weaver? Nah. Big Tree. What about all the Weaver mains out there? Uh, big just tree, for Rack. You know what? Just for pole. Rack. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be fun to see some, uh, you know, Life Weaver in play. The way they should change Life Weaver is his gun. Go. His gun, like the needles. Uh, it should work like the Needler from Halo, where after you hit like three shots, it just, the player just explodes. <laughs> it just detonates uh, and does splash damage. That there would you be go. a sick that experimental. You know, sometimes they do the experimental cues. They should 100% do that. Yeah. So it's like the Needler from Halo. That would be sick. Hmm. Like a few shots and he just like, you know, bursts in some damage or yeah. something. There you go. Some free ideas. Hey, next experimental cards. Free ideas. Where is that? Uh, there you go. Throw that all, in, yeah. all the life weaver, all three life weaver mains can hit my PayPal. Uh, I know, <laughs> trying to trying to help you guys out. <laughs> Racks one of them, bro. You ain't hitting your PayPal, that's for sure. Timeless versus uh, soon as the nah, game. Nah, nah. Looks like we're gonna load in Coliseo. Our push map uh, is up next. Look. This can go either way, Matt. And I know I said the first series, uh, the Luminosity series would be a close game, but you, this will you've be. You've said that every series. You've said every series, That's this could true. go either way. That's and not true. They they have not looked that way. This one though, you got a case. It's 1-1. One, one. We've seen somebody win a map, uh, you know, against yeah. an opponent today, not just kind of clean sweep. So uh, uh, this one does feel like it's going to last a little bit. Uh, <laughs> even Midtown, right? Yippee. Uh, Midtown feels like uh, it feels like you know uh, that one could have gone either way. You know, map number one could have gone either way. Uh, Coliseo, uh, I feel like we're going to be looking at Chopper and PGE right on the Sojourns, like controlling where that bot uh, spawns. You know, who can hit those you know railgun shots to really open up the rest of the team. I'm still waiting for a Ryan skin like that. Just like a gladiator. Oh, that like kind of looks like oh. Sigma. Like with the shoulder pad, it's like uh, segmented slightly. But yeah, it's Ryan with like a giant. But like you think that looks like Sigma? No, just the shoulder pad. Just the shoulder pad. It looks like Sigma is like segmented. But I want Ryan with a giant sword, like a claymore. I think that'd be kind of wicked. Do they have that Diablo skin where he's got a big sword? Isn't that just a big axe? I feel like Ryan's got like three or four like sword skins. Are you sure? When was the last time you played Ryan? You know, you, you know what they need? They need a skin where they just turn Ryan's hammer into just a big fish. That like would a, be just wicked. He just swings a massive fish. That'll be sick. Wait, wait a second. He's cooking again. 
Wait, Matt, are you coming up with some nice ideas today, actually? Yeah, Matt, yeah I'm on fire today. Uh, you know, my, my player card would have the blue flames around it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Damn, that's crazy. References are going, uh, going well as well for you, Matt. Good job. Good job. All right. Uh, you know, so somebody's got to, you know, keep keep uh, the, the Mitch Leslie uh, flame on, you know, the, 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 the light. Okay, okay. you going, missed with right? that one. You were cooking and then you missed with that one, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. Mitch would uh, Mitch wouldn't be impressed. No, no, no. He would be. He'd be very impressed. Uh, he's he's even texted me and said he's been very impressed. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I don't. I need to see uh, actual evidence of that because I don't think that's uh, correct at all. Classic mid-fight Colosseo, no, by the way. He texted me about some card thing and I I pretended I knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Um, just as a, a small throwback, Matt, when me and you casted together, do you remember the uh, a kill not happening for like two and a half minutes? And then you called it perfectly? Uh, yes. Yes. That's happening right now in front of our eyes. <laughs> it's been one and a half minutes waiting for a soldier to find a headshot. Well, because this map, this map, like, it, it's so, like, it's so punishing when you lose the first fight because you're pushing into that high ground. Yes. That nobody wants to, like, even risk losing the first fight. So you kind of get into this, like, Oh, we'll move the bot up. And then, oh look, they're gonna like walk backwards and like move the bot the other way, right? Like the eternal. Uh, we're now students of the game. Looks like There's they the pushed up a little bit. And traces you know, are oh, down. Oh, here you go. Both okay. traces gone. I was one minute and fifty-six seconds for those of you that were keeping count. Suzu's coming in, and uh, yeah, very fast gets Suni rushes all the damage that was taken early on. Both DPS dead for students of the game. Of course, this is uh, gonna join them in just a moment. Early beat here from opener. Rack attacks not far away though with one percent to go he's gonna need to use it soon is infected eventually gets saved by that over health the scissors rejoins the party and slays cj so you know what you don't see as many of those like three you know minute just kind of like stalls here is uh this is gonna be like, what <laughs> a, is happening uh, a terror surge there it was like a it's like an icy fadeaway terror surge that they catched uh, n nobody there but the reason you see the fights go like not as long is because if you remember, you know, at those times, uh, the Sojourn like wasn't really that good. So a lot of teams were playing Hanzo and Hanzo had the ability for like one shotting. Uh, so nobody poked out. Uh, it was just kind of like both Hanzos just like kind of dueling each other on the side until one of them killed each other. And then we mm. started to see a push. That's but the cool. Sojourns need to kind of play a little bit more active to actually get the one shots, right? So that's where you see teams play a little bit more offensive. What a spear. Yeah, this is a little bit rough here. PG not with the best angles in the world. As everybody had to kind of po uh, peek him. I nice saw double kill from CJ in the end as the bot moves yet again on the other side. Quite rough though for students of the game. Rack attack is spawning right now, so he will be able to uh, at oh, least escort Cal and PG, but I mean, the setup on the high ground for Chopper has to be dislodged. We're like almost four minutes into this one. Yeah, it's pretty uh, sick. And it fe feels like we, we haven't really kind of got much here. So it'll be timeless taking the lead. Uh, Chopper trying to kind of hold this high ground here, right? Uh, you know, that's kind of the spot where now it's difficult, right? You don't want to be on this low ground kind of fighting into, you know, potentially the Sojourn up on the high where Chopper will end up falling at the hands of PGE. As Rocket was in the back line putting pressure on the supports, they just uh, couldn't give him enough time. Nice early heals there thrown out by Cal. Oh, that was nice. It was uh, one of the most satisfying things with uh, Kiriko landing headshots like that. Good stuff. All right, flipped around now. Students in the game in control of the bots. And yeah, I, I believe Aaron Keller said they were looking at Colosseo, so that's always a good thing. Maybe the mid fights won't be as long uh, later down the line. Yeah, maybe if you shorten that area up, get rid of the glass, Remove and make it a little bit shorter there, a little bit shorter of a run. The glass. Someone had to say it. I wanted it to be you. All right, both uh, teams have double support ultimate now. Pulse bombs in the hands of Rocket and Scissors. Scissors vibing on the sidelines. They do know, they are aware. So he's going to have to back off. Who is in charge? Who is in charge? I mean, with how long Ooh. these fights go, I mean, oh, that's a huge kill. I say, with how long these fights go, right? Like, you know, you're going to get like three minutes on the clock and basically be like a tie game. Yeah, quite easily. Both against Sunni Rush is used basically on top of each other. 
Chopper. Needs to help the rest of his team. Good sound barrier from Open. Oh, the pulse bomb right on top of him, though. Both, oh, they're both Terra surging on top. What was that? What did I just <laughs> witness? All right, Rocket's back. Lancer Bolt's on rack. That was uh, absurd. Both of them look like they were going to take off into the into space with that much uh, spinning power. All right, Infected moving the bots. And there we go. The overclock should seal the deal with PG picking up two. But Matt, unfortunately, they can't push that far because the spawns are a little bit too close and the fight wasn't decisive. They get the lead, though. That's true. They get the lead. I mean, considering about how long these fights go, right? Uh, getting the lead, you know, they don't actually kind of like give up that corner. They're kind of like still kind of playing with some pressure around it. So uh, it's still, it's only going to be one fight for Timeless to basically take the lead back, right? Three meters separates these teams. It's just going to be a drawn out one. Here we go. The long mid fight. Shouldn't be too much longer though. Especially with this overclock from Chopper. Mainly just hitting those body shots on Infected, but the damage is there. The damage is there. No healing can save you from that, unfortunately. Cal takes a body shot. They managed to teleport away just in time. It's now the bot and uh, the timeless should be able to get lead. Yes, there you go. No touches. As uh, Cal just takes, all right, takes oh, matters into their own hands. Double headshot, double kill. Open a rocket down. Now Chopper wants, uh, wants something, summit, but Cal teleports away. Yeah, but that's huge. It's gonna like deny any more progress there. Four timeless, so Cal goes massive. They end up picking up two huge kills. Kind of pushes them back a little bit here towards mid map as a uh, Three minutes on the clock. Kitsune rushes for both sides, pulse bombs as well. As if you're ideally, you want to kind of like maybe save this Kitsune rush, like where you get closer around that corner, but you get a few players low. Now it's time to go. Bombs ticket. Does land on Infected, but Infected shrugs it off and gets a kill onto Chopper. Oh, there is Surge. Rocket ran straight into that one. Good stick from Scissors. Doesn't succumb to his own pulse bomb, though, as he hits the recoil just in time. Another fight won by students of the game. This is, man, I'm getting flashbacks to, uh, what, control? One, you win one fight, we win the next. You win one fight, we win the next. But the further this bot goes, Matt, and the how f how clear, oh, that was a clean kill on Rocket. Well, how far these uh, I mean, that bots is are pushing. Enormous. They, they might be able to get the lead, but they can't get much more, I wouldn't imagine, as the entirety of Timeless now just descending on it. So they back up here, students of the game. They get the lead, they back up. Looks like they're gonna try and go fight back here for mid-map as uh, PGE does have this overclock to use as uh, Chopper, not with that overclock just yet. All right, Scissors always playing sneaky beaky, like. CGA's the target, there's the beat. Now Scissors has to play a little bit more safe, just chunking away at that overhealth. Here's the recall as he receives the sound barrier. Not the best timing in the world, but you can still sustain through a lot of incoming damage now. Problem is, Rocket is doing just about as much as Scissors is right now. Scissors comes out with one card to Icy, but it's Infected. That turns this course of the fight, killing Chopper. CJ in trouble, a nice spear landing from Infected. And yes, it, it's that time again. It's students of the game's time to win a team fight and for them to push the bot. A minute to go here, Matt. 47 meters to 46 maybe an extra meter or two spawns are coming in quickly though for timeless yeah we've talked a lot about the damage dealers on both sides but you know infected being able to cycle those orisa cooldowns and then both supports the students of the game being able to keep him up through a lot of that damage i mean he is the focal point that they are really kind of trying to punish it's huge there for students of the game is below a minute slightly but they have a big ult advantage Kitsune rush used Suzu bomb in. thrown out by scissors yeah the suzu was gone but no stick but there'll be a stick for a rocket there as infected was in terror surge and immediately as soon as he came out terror surge that uh, extra sustainability you get from it just fades away and that pulse bomb does maximum damage as time is to end up winning that fight 30 seconds to go matt and there's only 0.95 meters in this yeah, and is, is the bot going to be fast enough to get to the barrier and just give them the lead, right? Like, it's not a huge You can edge stall. Margin. You can edge stall. 100%. Yeah, from where that is, you can actually just sit on top where Infected is and contest. So, it looks like they're going to back up just a little bit. Is now Icy going to get on and get touch? Have to perma-touch now, of course, in OT. 
And he's got to shoot Icy. Oh, that's a good spear. Stu's already used from CJ. Scissors and PGs. It's their time to strike now. Look for the opening and execute on it. Scissors checking Rocket. Goes to the mini. Heals himself back up as the beat comes through for Timeless. Rack attack 10% away. The lead in Timeless' sights as PGs down. Little damage that they have now as Scissors the only one up. But this sound barrier should see them through this fight. Later B almost always wins as the terror surge comes in and kills Cal. But Scissors still miraculously getting kills with these pulse bows, but no! The point can't be touched, and that will be it. Timeless with match point now. Two to one as they take Colosseo. Yeah, it's had, uh, the kill on to PG early on from Chopper. I mean, so even with the later beat, right, you just don't have that extra damage from the Sojourn in the fight to really kind of push you over the line. So uh, these teams are so evenly matched. Uh, you no, know, right there. What well, we're decided by probably less than a meter, I think. You know, in terms of like the score of where we see this push decide these teams uh, on Coliseo. Not a lot of action. Uh, you know, the action's just kind of uh, you know pr pretty sporadic throughout it. Is a lot of teams just kind of playing for positioning on Coliseo, uh, but still it comes down to the very very near end. Yeah, I mean, that was as close as it could really be on that map, like point. It was under a meter, right? Yeah. And every single time, it's like, we win one fight, you win the next. We win one fight, you win the next. And almost took two minutes to find the first kill. But that's just how Coliseo ends up playing out. If you end up winning that preceding fight, especially as you're like halfway through the game and you push it under the bridge, that's when the balance really tips in your favor even if you don't get the checkpoint as soon as you get it under the bridge where they can't perma stall it can be tough to come back from there but um yeah i mean both tracers doing a fantastic job once again and man it is so hard to stay alive as icy and infected there were some nice terror surges here matt but it just left them open more often than not just to get pumped full of damage yeah, and uh, you know, you see like some of the you know highlights from this, right? A lot of nice plays from Cal uh, in a you know a losing effort uh, through this, right? Oh, yeah. They're able to come up with uh, like some huge kills time and time again. Uh, really, I mean, just you know, when these fights kick off, uh, you know, the players just kind of you know kind of go in all different directions. It feels like uh, you know, there's a double kill from Rocket, and then on the other side, he's like, you know, Scissors picking up a kill, and then. All of a sudden, two kills come out from Affected out of nowhere. Uh, here's kind of the final fight, right? The late sound barrier here. But if you see at the top of the screen, right, PGE still in the death screen. So uh, even with, you know, the pulse bomb there at the end, it's still just not enough damage uh, to be able to kind of live on through that. So taking a look at some of the stats. Uh, see, I mean, look at this. I mean, damage, what? 2K difference, damage mitigated 1K and then 1K there in terms of the That's healing. So I mean... That this series, uh, you know, I, I just kind of like throw KD out the window in Overwatch, not really like, kind of like COD, but in terms of all the other stats, I mean, these two teams throughout this series have basically been, you know, a, a mirror image of each other. Yeah, it's neck and neck. Like, and this is an elimination match, of course, as well. We are in the lower bracket, so loser here will go out, and the winner will advance. Of course, Luminosity will be their opponents, and the ones that maybe they don't want to meet, but hey, uh, it's going to be a tough road no matter what, being in the loser's bracket. And Matt, we're going over to New Junk City now. Uh, it's uh, students the game's choice. I, I don't think either of these teams is like an easy out for, you know, uh, uh, like an, an M80 Toronto, obviously, sure. with how close the timeless game is, or like a Luminosity, right? I mean, both of these teams look like they can uh, it most certainly hang uh, at that level of play. So. Uh, New Junk City be interesting. Don't believe we have, you know, uh, any subs coming in from this one. So uh, it'll be the, yeah, it'll be same exact rosters, uh, I know, as we jump in here. So uh, the only team that really makes any subs is Timeless out of these two. So uh, Timeless decides to just rock with that same lineup. Need another pep talk, I think. From students of the game, from Scissors. Map number four. We're in a little bit of a, a sticky situation, but we are going to go to a quick break. Just give the teams a breather, a five minute, and uh, we'll be right back after this. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam.
Map number four, Matt. New Junk City. Here we go. We're going to load in in just a second here. And I'm going to be honest with you, since the game in Timeless, this is one of the closest games we've had over the last couple of days, it feels like. Just back and forth all over the place. Losers bracket two. It's going to be scrappy, but uh, I didn't expect it to be this scrappy. And it's good to see everybody's having uh, lights out and standout performances as well, which is really cool. A lot of highlight reels being made. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody I feel like has had moments, you know, throughout this series. Uh, you know, sometimes when you have a really close series in Overwatch, it feels like maybe, you know, the everybody's kind of playing at even. And then, you know, there's just two players just doing crazy stuff in the server and everybody's kind of like just there for the ride. But uh, this one is everybody has had some crazy moments. I see as well for Timeless in the tank role. No DPS swaps here at all. Not seeing Sunjun or anything. Who was he ended up seeing on uh, New Junk City the other day, I believe? Students of the game still rocking the same five. Arissa Comps is going to be the same throughout this uh, entire rest of the series. And here we go, mid flashpoint. See how quick this fight <laughs> starts out, Matt. It's going to be a little quicker than Coliseo, I can guarantee you. I, I mean, uh, if, if it's not faster than Coliseo, somebody's DC'd <laughs> from the game. Uh, Surely that would make it quick, is then you just run him down. Just be dishonorable. Uh, both teams, though, like, don't want to exactly engage with each other because they just don't want to give free damage to the soldiers to, like, build up a rail, right? Yeah. As uh, I know, PG85 uh, to his. They don't really have a, a great sense of choppers, but both teams want to just have, like, their tracers kind of play point uh, and then have, allow the soldiers to try and farm up. Uh, Suzu there from Cal saving Rack's life. Point goes over to Timeless. I see in trouble. Yeah, you saw. I knew they made a mistake there. Blowing all the cooldowns. Just looking at the floor, trying to spin, trying to move that head hit box as fast as they possibly can. Try and avoid all that damage. As soon as the game with a very quick flip. 16% only gained for Timeless. Big reset for uh, them now as well. Although they don't have to back up too far. Playing it a little bit risky, especially against a Lucio. But a lot of movement cooldowns are invested there. Maybe a few too many as Chopper almost gets descended upon after using that power slide, speaking of which. Icy gets basically down to the, I mean, Icy's like below 40% HP before they even get on the point. Jeez, yeah, I mean, they were trying to uh, wrap to help the rest of their team too. Good final kill there as well. That will uh, cost them an extra 10% or so. It's still touchable for Timeless, especially with the Pulse Bomb. I saw that Pulse Bomb from Scissors did end up landing on the floor, but still managed to find a kill. So now, what, Timeless, maybe one more fight here on this point. Double support ults in the mix. Probably just going to have about everything. It looks like they go low ground, but you see just uh, even Chopper coming out takes a ton of damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very much an arena, a coliseum, all the spectators watching. They're not throwing tomatoes, they're throwing bullets and shrapnel at you, unfortunately. Although, as soon as the game, let the point go. 99% now, and time is building up towards theirs. 27% and counting. Infector goes in with a Terra Surge in trouble, though. Chopper almost got booped out of LOS, but a couple of pixels to spare. He manages to snipe Infected. A free cap halfway through that point. That is not one you want to see uh, if you are uh, students of the game there. You don't want to give up that no. early. No, not at all. I mean, pretty difficult shot for Chopper to hit. Just basically look straight down and take out Infected, but Timeless kind of like bullies them off of the high ground, takes them away from the point. And now you're in kind of like final fight territory for students of the game. Don't exactly have, uh, you know, a support alt here to get here. Chopper is going to use this overclock quite early. Oh. Beautiful Suzu from CJ. Saving opener's life there from the Pulse Bomb from Scissors. Are they going to be able to push back in? I think there's one person down there. Yep, it is Scissors. They do get the touch. They cause OT. And now from the high ground, PG just trying to collect some heads. CJ making it a little bit more difficult, though, getting up in his face, but a quick slide to a different angle. And now Icy, nowhere to be found. We're shooting back, but couldn't quite get the kill. There's the flip for students of the game. Pixel perfect precision there. Nice rotation from, from them too. Thomas had ults. They could have run that down, but you know, they end up giving it over and soon as the game end up capping first. Yeah, I mean, a uh, huge, like we talk about like the sojourn and the amount of damage you can kind of like put down, right? And you know, the kills. 
uh but you saw there like a, a few shots from pg on the different players and scissors like following up is just as good as the sojourn being able to just kind of click those heads so uh, it looks like students of the game try and opt to take some of this high ground here to the side as they probably have an idea that they're at a little bit of ultimate disadvantage yeah both teams are probably just going to saddle up for a Katsune rush, I'd imagine. Fed taking a lot of damage. It's a good position from Rocket here, but doesn't want to mess with the front line now, especially as they've got the rush. But then so do students of the game. Ooh, that's a lot of damage on the ice. He's in trouble, but Kao's in even deeper trouble. A sound barrier to try and see students game through this fight as Kal ends up falling over. The time is just handily taking it to him. Losing Cal that early, you just cannot let that happen. It can be tough sometimes, especially when you are against such a menace like Rockets. And even CJ as well, just flinging the kunais across the map. It could be a real death sentence. Are these students of the game get 30% though, Matt? Yeah, I mean, the 30% the though is going to be negated pretty quick, right? The flashpoints tick up so fast that... Uh, you know, you're going to be about even or maybe even in the lead for Timeless when the next fight kicks off as uh, Infected and Co. It's going to take like a little bit of a different angle, right? Usually we just see both teams just slam their faces in the choke there, but, uh, you know, Ops goes by the high ground, backs Timeless up a bit. Oh, good spear. Oh, was that uh, environmental? Was that off the map or was that just a pin to the wall? I'm not entirely sure. There's the terror surge. Wow. Opener is making Scissor's life a living hell. Trying to get into the back line, but Opener perma boop in the way. Nice kill onto Icy as well as uh, Rocket with the post bomb. Could try and even it up, but decides against it. One fight now for Timer. 72% and then some. And little stagger on Opener there. Cost him a little bit, but uh, as yeah, well, especially on Flashpoint. Massive. It's nothing massive, but still an extra couple of percent. Yeah, it's students of the game, they take that high ground and a few players get weak straight away. I think it's like CJ and Chopper both take like tons of damage. They have to use the Suzu just sitting around like a corner uh, and their effort never able to really kind of regain from that as uh, it, it's really interesting students of the game, right? Taking that position on the opposite side, you usually see people take this high ground very close to the point, but on that opposite side, playing from that is going to be PGE using the overclock here at the start. I mean, Chopper got rolled there. He got pushed away and then uh, had to use the slide and then there was nowhere to run from PGU. Now is the high ground. Pulse bomb onto Icy. I mean, he probably would have died to this terror surge, to be honest with you. Oh, nice slide kill from PGE. Bro. As students of the game will cap the second point. Wow. This is uh, anything but back and forth right now as students of the game taken two. Some of these shots, though, that like... It's PGE nothing. hits like uh, uh, on a slide with like rocket with how good he is like around him I mean, they are just uh, when you watch it from this POV like it's so easy uh, It looks so easy, but like I mean, man, so you watch it probably from his, like his stream POV and he is like, freaking out And just <laughs> like the crazy stuff, man it's like uh, sometimes watching Sojourns, really like top world-class Sojourns, it feels like watching the trailer where it's just like the Sojourn is just going ballistic and just killing five, you know, but it actually happens in front of our eyes. Since it takes care of Chopper though, both the DPS and students of the game picking up kills to start off this fight. Time is not in good stead. Firmly evicted from this next one. Oh, a little 10 player kill streak too from Scissors, not too bad. Students of the game, this is... Um, this is not close. Well, it kind of is, but the, the, their ability to kind of come back and their ultimate usages as well have just been so clean. I mean, they're shutting down Chopper and Rocket, and it's been hard for Chopper and Rocket to really get into these fights. Rocket getting booped away constantly by Rack, and then Chopper too hard, and it's tough for him to actually find angles in these fights. A 2-0 here, soon as the game, on the route to a map number five. Yeah, they're looking really clean here on Flashpoint, right? And by the time this next fight kicks off, probably 60% on the point as Icy steps up, just tries to have some presence. Sound barrier. Now Chopper's going to have a tough time doing much. However, a later one here from Opener, but still, they can't really find the point, Matt, because there's a Katsune rush. Here's CJ's pulse bomb from Scissors goes a little wide, but almost instantly, as soon as they see Chopper do any kind of, like, any pixel movement, oh, you want to move to the left? No worries, we're going to charge straight at you. Luckily, though, Chopper's death will not go in vain because Rocket fills the kill feed with red. And that'll be time. This is their turn to cap. Uh, but as soon as the game, Matt, they held out long enough. They got one fight in them. 87%. And it's to spare. Yeah, Timeless has to be perfect from here on out. 
Uh, the bad part for Timeless, right, is students of the game, you can, like, speed boost Terror Surge, and then PGE is probably going to have that overclock. You think that's enough to result in a kill, right? We've seen a lot of teams kind of combo these abilities now, and no sound barrier on the opposite side. He's positioning from Icy as well, just holding this corner. He's taking a fair bit of damage though, as PG ascends to the skies and Quilly dragged back down again with that terror surge. Good Suzu on Icy, but Icy's still low. Desperate need of attention. Rocket's already made it hurt though, as uh, he ends up killing Scissors. PG once again dashing forward, trying to find kills, but Rocket is just too slippery, just falls into the lap of Chopper, just get a swift boot to the head. Timeless, they are going to be able to win this fight at the hands of Chopper. And it's students of the game. They can get the touch here, Matt, but will they invest much? It doesn't... Are they even going to get the touch here? I don't think they are. No, they're just going to back off. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you kind of contest that, right? So Timeless uh, able to battle back. They get a point. Next flash point's rather close here, so not a far rotation. So what do they have to work with here? I mean, really probably just kind of like maybe use, maybe you do some damage in the mid. You like Cal, you know, uh, try and build up towards that Kitsune rush. Same thing with CJ on the other side, but you know, Timeless probably going to have an advantage in having that beat. All right, Rocket. Time to go demon mode again with this pulse bomb. Like I mentioned before, one of the clutchest players we've seen on Tracer this tournament so far. Checking scissors forces the recall. Good start. Now point pressured by Timeless. By the tank. And in fact, the whole team is just jumping down. Wants to muddle the mixture a little bit here. There's a rocket still trying to find a, a way into this fight, going pretty low. And scissors forces the recall. Still manages to find the kill on infected. After that, Katsuna Rush is laid on the point. There you go. Reset for students of the game now as they back off. Yeah, I think students of the game just in a really weird spot, like, you know, in terms of where their support ultimates are lining up with, like, Timelesses at the moment, where Timeless, uh, you know, uses that rush, able to get the point, and they're going to get to, what, probably, like, 50, 60 percent, probably looking at one more fight here for students of the game on this point before we go to, uh, you know, a, a final flashpoint. Woohoo, that was close. This ends. He's almost got rolled there. Nice angle from Chopper here, but he has to be careful. Almost instantly, you can hear that Katsuni rush being pulled as Chopper was trying to line people up for a railgun. Oh, what a shot! Just plasma. That's all left of uh, Scissor's brain. I still flip there from students of the game as well. Can they find these uh, pickups? Chopper is trying desperately to stay alive here. That sound barrier is going to be good for four for Timeless. Same for students of the game. And Infected, all his supports on the high ground, was very much on his lonesome on low. Cow just dropping onto the point. They're just trying to stall out for as long as possible while Chopper and Rocket clean house. They're pretty fortunate they had that flip, though, right? I mean, students of the game, you don't have that flip. We are on our final flash point where... Uh, the flip gives them maybe another attempt here uh, you know, with 80% and counting here for Timeless. So students of the game, another fight here, potentially overclock Pulse Bomb. Did he force Re to work with? I don't think he, maybe he did. No, he didn't. Okay, there's the Re from Scissors. Pulse Bomb in hand. It's time for Scissors to maybe come up clutch. Oh, PGE, these shots do not miss. Body shot into Lucio too as they do run away. Infectious already killed two. PG sniping opener. And that'll be students of the game finding a very quick flip there. Mats, three ultimates in the bank almost with Cal nearing that Kitsune rush. Timeless is their last chance here as they are closing in on a map number five. Our students of the game. Timeless just want to end this here right now and bring us to a fifth point on Flashpoint. And the biggest thing is just winning that fight with the overclock, right? Uh, I know it gives you just a whole suite of ultimates here to use towards the end. But you know you can finish the game off here. I mean, Rocket's nothing but clutch, so look at this pulse bomb in hand. Could turn it rush, force the recall. Okay, now he's in trouble though. 52 HP, just trying to get some heals. Does manage to find some of the offers. And that pulse bomb goes a little bit wide as well. Not today, Rockets. Terra Surge from both Arissas. Who's going to come out on top though? Icy with a spear spin. The Kutuni rush as well. It's going to help him stay alive. Icy with the kill onto Cal. Chopper 2 just dominating from the skies. And Timeless, we're going to go to a point number five here as the time ticks over. Flashpoint going all the way. And I wouldn't have it any other way either.
Oh, I mean, this series uh, from really start to finish, right? I mean, Midtown went to OT. The first control map went all the way of the distance. Uh, they're on push decided by like less than a meter. Now Flashpoint going to our absolute last point as uh, you literally could not get a closer series between two teams. It'll be both Tracers here battling on the point see if you can get control first. Rocket forces the recoil pretty early on, but it's an, an infected versus Icy Duel at this very moment in time. Chopper trying to jump over. Perfect spear spin there from Infected, but still takes some back shots from Rocket and Chopper as he ends up falling over. And Mega Health Pack not used at all there. As you can see, all these sand barriers healing everybody up. Nice pulse bomb onto PGE, and Rocket just bursts him through that over health. Point has been unlocked too, and Rocket's still vying and just causing so much of the attention to be drawn towards him and Chopper just lasers people down. Students of the game end up falling over, and again, time is take that first cap. Man, as uh, that pulse bomb comes up huge, both teams end up using their uh, sound barriers there during that fight, even with the tanks low, as you still have both Sojourns and Tracers alive. Both of these teams feel like if their damage dealers are alive, they are very much in the fight, regardless of what else is happening. So, the students of the game moving their way onto the point. 35% you see you can just kind of play around this middle pillar though you can kind of just contest for so long it's going to force students Whoa. of the game to go okay all right opener gets a uh, stray kill onto pg and they're going to make this fight quick that they're going to try and end this now 60 percent for timeless and counting students of the game need to find a reset here and fast yeah they're going to have one oh, more fight late. really at this is that late kill is scissors bad. here towards the end you're going to be able to get back in the fight rather quickly though it's uh, it is the tracer so you're still regardless in last fight territory just now somebody's going to have to be the one that gets a touch look like maybe rack was going around the outside can they touch can they touch they don't touch they can't get there in time timeless they just push them off they can't get there it and like timeless had to be, he had to be booped they have to have been. New Junk City is theirs. It looks so obtainable for students of the game. It looked like they had the touch, but Timeless end up taking New Junk City out of nowhere. A three and one, but the score wouldn't dictate how close that series was. It could have gone to a map number five, but it was just cut short there. Timeless advance, luminosity is in their sights now. As students of the game, they got knocked out in the losers. Yeah, I mean, just a tremendous series, though, I think, from both teams, right? Like, even in a loss, students of the game, I think they have proved, you know, with how we saw Timeless play against uh, the Toronto Defiant uh, the other day, that they belong in that upper echelon, because this one literally goes down to the wire. The final flashpoint, overtime, in overtime of Midtown. The final control point, I mean, in less than a meter and push, just a crazy series. That was an absurd series. I mean, just going back to that Coliseum as well. The control, it yeah. was like, oh, it goes one way, the other, one way, one, the other. My God. I mean, Des, you can break this one down and wrap out the rest of the day. Timeless W there. That series was uh, unreal. It was unreal. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little, it was a little disappointing to see that C9 at the end because it was like such a close fight. Every every map was such a close fight. Everything was so good. But at the end, it was just it was like oh, it was so, it's gonna be good. It, it looks like they were gonna touch. They were so <laughs> close yeah. to getting that. Touch. I think it was just a boop. It was just a boop. I think. I think yeah. Rack Attack was like trying to go around the outside yeah. and it had to be displaced, like trying to get onto the point. Spear uh, or boop. Just or spin. Just a bit whatever. unlucky. Yeah, there's so Bit much unlucky. pressure on there. Is with that late kill by Rocket on the scissors. You know, normally you'd want the tracer with the more reliable touch in the yeah. overtime, but you know he's not able to be there. Someone else filling the gap. Uh, if we're here we can take a yeah, look at it, see, see it. what actually happened okay. for the final moments. Uh, but the way the, the way the series was played, I'm pretty confident this wasn't, you know, just an error. It wasn't so C9, okay. Look at this experience from opener. Oh, oh that oh, is okay. so Ooh. tight. Ooh. Was that a javelin too? It seemed like a no, double just, boot. Just boot. Just, just boot. Just boot. Yeah, just boot. Yeah, no, 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 That's so. That's a hard. That was like the last inch before he would get out of the range where he'd still yeah. be booked onto the point. <laughs> opener catches that Crazy. like one millisecond later, he doesn't get it. But in the end, Timeless, what an incredible series. Rocket, yeah. that's a superstar performance from Rocket. I think he's staking his claim as looking like one of the best tracers in North America. 
and and I, and not of the rookie class. Not, not not there's no qualifier on it. He's one of the best tracers in North America right now, uh, on that elite tier with players like Sugar Free. Yeah, and I think this is why like tomorrow's match, I'm like even more excited. Like I mean, Timeless had a great showing today. They're going they're going to be up against Luminosity as well. That's going to be a very tight match, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if anyone can stand up to just the raw power that Timeless has shown. I mean, so many of the teams in NA have been incredibly uh, competitive, but I think strategy-wise, the meta is just shaping up in this incredibly uh, a good way for Timeless, right? You've got Tracer, Sojourn, able to be pretty much locked in on the DPS. Uh, and then CJ as well, want to give him an honorable mention. CJ on the Kiriko yeah. found so many openers, so many late picks. I mean, Rocket was hitting, these pulses are absurd. Like, he's doing things that are like these are like 1% plays and he's hitting them like 50% of the time. It's unreal to see that performance. And I gotta put respect though on, on Scissors and um, on PGE because Rocket, this was not like a, some easy pushover match where he can just duel the enemy DPS all day. I mean, they were shooting back the whole series long. Rocket just kept the pressure on, kept the team play going. And uh, man, what an incredible series. What endurance and duration from these teams. This is the type of Overwatch I would expect to see at the elite international level, but I honestly wasn't expecting to get a competition like this yeah. so early on in OWCS. It just shows you the, the raw talent in North America as well. Uh, it's something we've heard argued in the offseason is that North America really benefited from the fact that there were so many top tier Overwatch League teams in the region the last couple of years, right? Because that gives you more, uh, more practice time with such really excellent teams. You know, you just look at some of the North American team last year in the Overwatch League, right? Well, I mean, these young guns, they've been able to practice against some of those teams. And, you know, if they were around that level already, uh, they've leveled up because of that, right? And I think you're seeing the result here with so many great teams in OWCS North America, whether it's Timeless here, for example, even look at some, a team like Luminosity, for example, uh, many shining individuals. But I do think we need to take some time to also talk about students of the game here because they do get eliminated here. Yeah. Um, taking the loss here in the lower bracket. But Not this from is my a, heart. Not from my heart. Yeah, a five-man roster that really inspired us. Uh, and as you said, PGE Sisters had such great mechanics throughout. Infected, we've been hyping up Infected because Infected is one of the best young tank players in the region, right? That has been, been Ryan, uh, up and coming for so long now, right? Uh, Rocket, like you said, Jake, earned himself player of the match here uh, with some stand-up performances. One of the best races in the region. Um, but yeah, great win for Timeless, but uh, also shout out to students of the game. Yeah, yeah I mean, you definitely got to put respect on every player in the server here. Yeah, and I think getting Rocket getting the play, player of the match, I think is definitely God, deserved. I think like, I think bro. there was multiple, like throughout the whole series, it was just Rocket just like, you could tell that he didn't want to lose this. Like, he wanted to move on, he wanted to go more. And I think it really showed throughout the whole match, his Tracer play was just top notch. But it's as, like, like you said as well, that, it, well, I said this, that in the meta, it's really important to have a damage you and you're seeing mm -hmm. the results of like what a great tracer player can do for you and we saw in timeless match yesterday even when you're playing a team like toronto defiant who many consider to be the favorites rocket going head to head with merit sometimes on the tracer it gives timeless like a win condition mm -hmm. in so many of these fights so can't talk enough about how important it is for timeless that rocket keeps showing up in these tracer duels and keeps you know taking space for the rest of his team keep yeah. getting the flank angle angles for the rest of the team and also then just getting the picks as well yeah definitely a very talented player it's time for a post-match interview we're gonna have a post-match interview with the player of the match and it's none other than rocket rocket big congratulations on getting the win how are you feeling Ah, oh, dude, just feeling relieved, man. I mean, that was that was a tough match. Like, you know, I, I was talking to the team, you know, before the set as like a briefing, and I was like, there's no really any like match in this tourney that's free. You know, uh, in tournaments before, you know, there's some teams that you kind of just by, especially in the lower bracket. But, dude, even in, in like you know the upper bracket, lower bracket, everything, like these matches are tough, dude. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you mind sort of expanding a little bit more on that? You, just, you said that this match was uh, a bit a bit of a tough match for you. What made it tough for you, and how did you overcome that? Um, I think what made it tough is just that, like, you know, um, I think a lot of their game plan going is was just to shut me down. Um, like, it was very, very clear with, you know, how hard they were marking me. Um, and I think, you know, just overall, I just, you know, the team persevered and we just adapted to it. I think, um, you know, our, our in-game adaptability is some of the best in the tourney, so. 
Yeah, I, I guess I wanted to ask, you know, for, for your place in, in the scene right now, as, you know, I would say maybe in the past would have called you an up-and-coming player, but I think your performances in the tournament kind of are putting you in that top echelon. Uh, how does it feel? Like, what are the goals now for you and for the Timeless squad? Is your vision kind of expanding beyond the region? Are you starting to, to think ahead to what, what might be might, might be possible at something like DreamHack? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I think our, uh, our goal is to, you know, be an international level team. Um, it's going to take a lot of work to get there, and I think we have the players and, you know, the work ethic to, to do so. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's definitely our end goal. And, you know, I think we've uh, shown a really, really good showing so far, uh, individually and as a team. So, um, yeah, no, that we, we, we hope for nothing but, you know, first. It was a great win today, and of course you're facing Luminosity next. But I do want to chat about the match yesterday against the Toronto Defiant. Obviously, Toronto Defiant to many as hailed as this like top dog in the scene because they have an investment and the players they picked up on that roster. Can you talk us through what you learned from yesterday's match? How did it feel taking that loss and like what did you discuss after the loss leading into uh, today's match? Um, I think everyone kind of just, you know, we, we realized how that was a really close match and that team was very, very talented. Um, and we weren't surprised that we played to that level. We were kind of just like, you know, reassured, I'd say. Um, you know, we were just like, okay, we scrims, scrims are legit. You know, we can we can play up to them. We can play up to everyone as long as we uh, we keep our cool and you know play our game and don't make mistakes on our end. Uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be in grand finals. You know. All right. Uh, I mean, that's it for the interview. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm really excited to see you perform again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Rocket. All right, Rocket, great guy. I mean, yeah. I'm like That's a star in the making right there. I, I've got to say, for the for Luminosity tomorrow, I, I'd be sweating a little bit thinking about yeah. going yeah, up against I Timeless would. after watching that. I'll series, say it right now, I predict Timeless. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm feeling like I'm leaning towards. Us. I still think LG can can put up a big fight. I think give him a day to workshop more on the Arisa comp uh, to talk things over. I think that could be a very very close competitive series uh, with players like Vision and King potentially able to stand toe to toe as well. Um, I also want to call out, though, as much as we're focusing on Rocket, I want to call out Chopra as well as having a great performance today. Yeah. You know, he was subbed in and out for Sanjun, and, you know, I saw him tweeting about, oh, like, he's having a tough time in his maps. But to see the team commit 100%, have him in the whole series long, consistent performances, finding big frags, going very, very balanced toe-to-toe -to -toe with PGE for me, and, and yeah. coming out ahead in some cases, for me, that's huge, actually, for the team, because, yes, you can have one superstar player, Rocket can be playing incredibly well, but as he mentioned, Rocket, like, the, you need that whole team effort. Overwatch is a team game, especially now after the Season 9 changes. One player just cannot do it alone or, or even close to that, right? You always need the full court press coming in from everybody. And so I think it's huge to have Chopper regain his confidence in a match like this where I think he should be feeling really good about his performance and should be confident going up against anybody in the region now. Yeah, well now, I mean, Timeless is even looking scarier with this win. So let's take a look at the bracket uh, after all the matches being played today. We're looking at the lower bracket first. Yes, it is going to be Luminosity Gaming versus Timeless. Like we've been talking about, this is going to be a very close match. And let's take a look at the upper bracket because that one is going to oh be a man. banger as well. This is the well. question Toronto that's been in everyone's mind, yeah. right? Yes. Everyone has been asking who's the top dog in NA. I think the conversation has leaned towards Toronto, but based on performances alone, what we've seen on this broadcast, you you can't be thinking this is going to be a one-sided affair. I mean, for me, I think M80 looks like a very serious threat. I thought it would be we need to get we I need think to get Pelican off ping, you know, that maybe then M80 reaches their full potential. If they could win this now with players on ping and they have even higher to climb, they could be the standard bearer for North America. Yeah, I mean, and also, I talked to, what, someone that they, uh, yesterday, I talked to Pelican. Mm. Both of them are very confident that they can win. So, mm. who's going to be right? You gotta be. I mean, these gotta guys are pros, right? They yeah. know that there's only one way to be. No matter what the odds are against you, you come in with the 100% confidence, right? And, like, total faith in yourself. And for those guys individually, I mean, can you blame them, right? They've had massively winning records historically. They've been in the top of the scene for pretty much as long as they've been here. Yeah. As long as we've had them competing, they've been at the top yeah. and when that's your career you know you got to go in confident right that, it's just logical yeah i'm just i'm just i'm just excited for tomorrow all right uh, let's wrap up today uh with some na amazing plays because we had some amazing plays that we saw throughout the whole day what are we getting this blossom from pelican look at this oh patience, yeah patience. and oh that's no one's looking at him just cleans them up such a satisfying feeling on reaper i will say i love the reaper guy his special move is very amazing one thing i did like and i mean so just oh this was a this sick was one. So, this was so this was so sick this is this is this oh is much better, yeah. my god yeah, this is what you're talking about jail. the body ball, right? put him in jail <laughs> that is illegal yeah, and the next one a grab situation 
Dante. It's from Dante. Dante okay. with the grab. Where's it going with this? Oh, oh that's, that's a clean a grab. grab. That's a big grab. That that's is a big clean grab. Clean with the pulse bomb to wrap it up. A combo as, <laughs> as old as Overwatch worth itself. Yeah. And last but not least, we have. Oh, that can't minutes. happen. That, that just yeah. can't happen. You just they, you just can't die in, to a Widowmaker in spawn <laughs> like that. Come on, it's 2024, guys. <laughs> What's what happening? Vision oh, had double? such a sick game this series, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Such an exciting up. talent. 100%. Exciting, exciting talent from NA. Vision is great. I mean, he really is, like you're saying, like, that's one of those guys who is now in the conversation on this elite hit scan tier. In the past, we would have said maybe it's Seeker and Hydron, and that maybe is the top tier, and maybe we have to go with tier down Vision to is find in there. more. But now I'm thinking about Vision. I'm thinking about Chopper. I'm thinking about Sonjin. There's so many more names on the tip of my tongue now, and that just makes me excited. I don't know who's going to take this whole thing, and, you know, who's going to be, be taking the NA flag to, to DreamHack, but I think we've got a lot of, of great candidates. I mean, we have two more days, and tomorrow and we're like inching closer and closer, and tomorrow we're gonna get a little closer to that answer, and this is our schedule for tomorrow, EMEA right. and NA. Which match uh, are you guys most hyped for? Ooh, most hyped for? I think Source think... of Mind ends could be really good too. That, I think, yeah, I think sure. both of the early, both first matches are really exciting. I think I think Toronto M80 for me is the personal most exciting. I think, yeah, I think it has to be. I think that's the one where there's been a lot of back and forth about who's yeah. really the top dog. You know, Twisted Minds and Ents, I think, also is just as interesting, but they're, they're more unknown quantities to me. Whereas Toronto and M80 is like, there's so much theory crafting we can do, and we just have to play the match to see. Yeah. All right, well, guys, any, any last words before we, uh, before we say our final goodbye for today? Last words? I'll see you tomorrow, baby. That's all I got to say. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> Hot dog. Hot dog. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee grows coffee. on trees. How do you say anyway, coffee? Coffee grows oh, on trees. Coffee. <laughs> coffee. 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 It's it. Coffee. Anyways, guys, we're, we're just going. I, I don't know what we're talking about. But <laughs> we have, we have uh, so much more Overwatch coming your way tomorrow. So stick around uh, because we're going to be raiding Moxie. So say he hello to uh, Moxie. Watching for us, Korea everybody. Box. Yes, watching Korea. Enjoy box. them. So enjoy them. And we'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Annyeong. Annyeong. Hi, Moxie. Go. And Masa manages to reach him in time. And could build up a response. And it's Kai! They overclock the 3K in the Terra Search from Vestola as Kai hunts down his ace to give Ents the win. It gets you out of walls, gets you out of trouble, and lose you himself so slippery. And then you've got cleanse as well if somebody does get caught. Um, so a lot of options to deal with the May. Thanks, Danny. I really <laughs> uh, I have no slide. Kills in one. Get the cap. Maga. Okay, okay. P1. Maga 1, Maga 1. P1. Maga, 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 Maga. P1. Maga, 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 Maga. Ah! My king! It's okay, I died off the end. What a game! If only I had the power to buff the nerf heroes out. <laughs> I would wield it with the don't utmost give him respect power. and No, don't, don't give no, him no. I think Jake, I think Jake has enough power already. Junkrat will have three tires. <laughs> Could go for the flank, and uh, this is it. That bubble, what? It splashed onto Cronus and originally hit the Winston bubble, and Shockwave is on a tear. Team Peps know they can't reset. They gotta be in Dojo. They're fighting with everything they can, but they have nothing to work with and nobody to work with. Push the front lines, trying to make space for the rest of the team. And then when a dive comes in, you, you go back, you peel for the rest of your team, and you put pressure on them up close. That, this is advanced. This is some serious. All right, guys. Yeah, for, the, yeah, for, the for the actual, actual that like, don't know about Yo, Overwatch, that's pretty advanced. The actual <laughs> beginners, actual <laughs> beginners, listen to me. You play Orisa, find a low mobility hero on the enemy team, and ruin their life in terms of ults. Yeah, the Simcom just wants to sit on the point, man. So all they want to do is sit on the point with the wall. Oh, the ult. Oh, speaking of ults, though, where did Pelican come from? Straight from above, straight on top of their heads. Hello, I'm Pelican. Yeah. He, he's on He's on one today. I tell you what, we did a walk earlier and he's not having it. <laughs> he wants another one, bro. Just take him in the break, man. All good. Got a beat. They've got a grab in five. They're just gonna rush them down. Magic Maple uh, in trouble in this guy. He manages to get away, but Chronic falls, and there's the grab to end oh. it all. Post bomb on top. The bigger bang detonates. Pirates in pajamas. Go, <laughs> 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 
Regardless, in last fight territory, just now somebody's gonna have to be the one that gets a touch. Well, then maybe Rack was going around the outside. Can they dodge? Can they dodge? They don't touch! They can't get there in time! Timeless! They just push them off! They can't get there! 